Hello everyone, Argsy here. Welcome back to Chilliwack, British Columbia and another episode of the Canadian Cattle Farmer. We've moved forward a little bit further here. We are into April and that means we are into full swing with planting. We've got the versatile hooked up here to the uh, smaller planter, of course the Borgo smaller planter, the CD875. And behind that we've got the new hole in the T8 hooked up to the John Deere planter. Now we're going to go and get some corn planted with this and we're going to use the tractor in the front here to go and plant some oats. Now I was umming and ahhing about what to plant last time and we have been having a little look at the calendar and the planting schedules and income and everything like that and have chosen to go with oats and I'll explain a little bit more why. So having a look here at oats and showing price fluctuations, our peak price is in December. Now if we were to put soybeans in we would have to wait another six months from there to get any income off these fields and uh, I think we really need to start seeing some money rolling into the farm because we're spending more than we can earn at the moment and uh, these animals really are quite hungry so the plan is to head on in there and get some oats planted we see we're in the window there we can harvest those in july or august and the bonus is we can get some straw now we haven't been using too much straw in our tmr mixes but we have been using it to pad things out a little bit which is good because we are chewing through the maize silage we have in storage as well as the grass silage we've had to buy so fortunately our grass has germinated and we do have that growing so we'll be able to supply our own silage soon and you can see here corn we're just into the planting window for that and of course we're gonna have to wait a while before we get any more maize ready to harvest to get some maize silage put in we do still have a lot uh, going through the production in the fermenting silo so we do have enough it's just not fermenting quite as quick as we need so we need, need to get that in and uh, topped up as well i did consider sorghum but uh, we don't get any um, any straw off that so that was the reason we've gone with the oats however the other exciting news We've started producing milk. So the Holsteins here, it's almost 17,000 litres of milk, and this lot here, almost 19,000 litres of milk. It's all up, 35,000 litres. And we have a look here in time saving stock check, and you can see we've got 27 gram worth of milk sitting there, or 26 if we sold it at today's prices. So we're going to have to figure out a way to sell that. We don't have a tr tanker or trailer or anything at this stage to get that delivered down to Chilliwack Dairy. So we're going to have to figure out what to go and buy to get that done. But today's main job is to head on over. We're going to put corn here in field 135, and these two fields here are going to become our oats. And we do still have field 195 down here to do something with. Um, I'm almost thinking we might need to put something in there for some feed as well. So possibly, possibly head down and put some corn in there as well. But we have obviously got the versatile hooked up as well, so we're going to try and make use of both these tractors. We're going to head the versatile over first, get that set up on some coarse play, planting some oats, and then we're going to follow behind the corn all set up here in the New Holland and going get started on that. Uh, one other thing we are going to have to buy at some stage, we do still need a diesel uh, tank on site um, at the moment. If any diesel need, we need to head down into town and get that filled up somewhere else. So we do need to get that sorted out as well. But again, we're down to just under $7,000. So we don't have a huge amount to spend. Anyhow, that's enough jibber jabbering. Let's go and get some seed and fertilizer into the planters and go and get started on some seeding. So just as we're getting the seed here, and of course we do have to buy this as well, so that's also chewing through our money. Another $3,000 just about gone. You can look over and see in the back the grass which has germinated and is growing, so that's good to see. It should be all up to standard, I think. It's got all the lime on it it needs, it's got all the fertilizer it needs. So we should just be able to leave it there to grow, and uh, we'll be able to get in and get that chopped very soon for some silage. Again, figure out the best way to do it. I'm leaning towards leaning towards putting it into bales and getting it wrapped and everything like that. But we might use the bagger. I did mention that last time as an option. But let's head on down here, down the road, and go and get into this big field and get started with planting some oats. All right, we're over here. We've got oats selected in the planter. So we're getting the right crop planted, which is a good start. We'll just pop in here. I have already set up the course play course. So we'll just go and take a look at that very quickly. And there you go, 133 three and 134 all covered. It cuts out here appropriately for going around that little bit of a ditch. And uh, we'll just go up and down. We've set it on lands, of course, uh, four headland passes and then lands. So we don't have to try and turn too tightly with this back on itself. But I think we should be able to just press start. So we'll start off on first waypoint, press go there. And hopefully everything's going to be going pretty smoothly. And there we go. That's going. I was worried that this might be a little bit wide. Uh, the tractor might be a bit wide for this planter, but actually it doesn't look too bad sitting there behind it. We needed a uh, 240 horsepower to pull it, and both the Versatile and the New Holland are our only tractors over 200 horse. The John Deere and the Kubota are both a little bit underpowered for doing this task, so we have had to resort to our big workhorse here to get this one done. The amount we are up and going, oats going into the field. 
and uh, we'll get this one planted. A few weeds in there in the areas we didn't plough of course so we are going to have some weed management to take care of further down the track but uh, that is something to worry about a little bit later on. But let's just let this one carry on. We'll uh, come and hang out with it for a little bit very soon but I'm going to go over and get the New Holland set up and come and start on planting the corn in the field next door here. Alright first things first, let's try and get this in under here and get the seed opened. We should be able to get that filled up, perfect. Pull forward a little bit more. Now I can't remember if this is fertiliser or herbicide. I think it might be herbicide in this. Doesn't actually have anything in it at the moment. So let's just see if we can put some, uh, put a little bit of fertiliser in it that we can use for the planter. There we go, 1000 litres of liquid fertiliser in there now. So we should be able to jump back up here into the tractor. Hopefully find ourselves in the right position to get that filled up. Sometimes a little bit tricky to find the correct trigger, but we'll just try and back up against it and see if we can fill it that way. There we go, that's filling. It looks like we had to have the covers open, which makes sense. As we get that closed off, 757 litres of fertiliser. So we'll see how far we can get through this field with the seed and fertiliser we've got, and uh, whether we have to come over and buy any more. But of course, I was mindful of the fact we might want to buy some herbicide in the future as well, so we might need to use that tank and repurpose it for something else. We're just going to pull in straight here over the road, not too far to go to get over into this field and get started, and we'll get everything unfolded and get underway. Looking forward to getting some corn in. This is the first time we've planted corn ourselves, of course. Uh, the last corn we had came pre planted with the uh, farm, with the fields we bought. But there we go, those wings all folded down. Nice and wide this planter, she covers the land pretty quickly. I did have a look, the other tractor is going to take an hour and 40 minutes to plant the oats in the field over there, so uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that goes. But there we are, we've got corn selected, that turned on, lowered down. There we are, we're good to go, you can see the uh, fertiliser being applied on the back there. We've got our automatic application rate and everything like that all turned on and uh, everything seems to be running as is expected including getting that nice uh, strip planting effect there from the planter so I think we'll set ourselves up a GPS course as we run along this edge of the field do a couple of head and passes and then get into the planting proper and we'll jump into a little bit of a montage so we'll catch up with you probably when we've got this field a little bit closer to being finished or completely done before we get too far though I have just noticed our fuel indicator is flashing down in the bottom corner there, which uh, doesn't instill me with much confidence. So we will go and take a look, we might shoot down and get that filled up before we go too much further. Uh, we won't bother showing you doing that, we're just going to head on down to one of the uh, fuel pill, pill points on the map and go get some more fuel purchased. So we'll do that and uh, get around the other end of the field, and do that and then we'll catch you when we're uh, finished in here.
Well, we've just about got the last of the corn planted here in the field, running down the very last pass. Everything's gone very well, apart from the fact it started raining now. I probably should have stopped. I do realise you would avoid planting in the rain, otherwise everything gets all glugged up and sticky soil and everything stuck around wheels and everything like that. But uh, we've just ploughed on through this and carried on. So what I've been thinking as we've been going, I reckon we're going to head down to the other field over with the uh, over in the distance, over that way. I think it's 195. And we're going to go over and put some corn over in there as well. I think we need to give ourselves as much corn as we can to be able to make sure we make enough silage to keep ourselves going for another 12 months. Uh, a little bit worried we're not going to have enough, particularly if we want to increase the number of animals we have with the feedlot. Uh, as for the other planter, the oats over there, they must be getting very close to running out of seed. So we'll get back over to the farm. We will grab the seed tender and bring over some seed and maybe some fertilizer for them so they can keep going. And then we'll get topped up and head on down to that field. I also need to put some lime on it, so we might get the spreader out and uh, do that at the same time. There we go, that is that field. Minus this little bit right here, always a frustrating little section you miss or something on the corner. We'll just put that down and do that. There we go, and that's done. So we'll get that turned off, fold it up, head on back over to the yard, grab that tender and come back over and see the tractor down there. Got the seed tender on the back, head on over here to the tractor. I'm going to get it filled up with seed. Now for whatever reason, I'm having issues with this little seed tender, I did remember it as I pulled it out. Uh, we can't get both hoppers to fill. We've managed to get seed into one, I would have put some fertilizer in the other, but uh, we couldn't get it to fill up, so I'm not sure what that issue is, uh, whether we can fix it or anything like that, but we're just going to have to make do with what we've got. So we'll get pulled in over here, we'll see if we can find the uh, openings, get into the hopper and get this all topped up. Of course the workers folded everything up, very efficient of them, so uh, let's just see, I do know where the uh, seed goes in the back one, I think, it does get high enough, but I think to get close enough we might have to be around the end. So we got, we're getting some more oats in, we don't actually need any more fertiliser, we've only used about a quarter of the tank, which is good, but we've certainly managed to get through all of the seed. Now, I was trying to say before, uh, we did have to borrow some more money, we had run out, and uh, that stopped the worker, of course we have to pay wages. And also, we needed to buy some more uh, product here, so we have to borrow another 10 grand on the loan. We've just about chewed through all of that doing this, but let's just pop in here, get this on nearest waypoint, which it is, press play, and they should carry on with getting the oats planted. There we are, so we'll leave them going. I think, just looking across the field, we're going to need more seed. We're going to have to borrow a little bit more money yet, so uh, just something to be mindful of. But let's leave them going here, and we are going to go and head on over and uh, plant some more corn. So before we go and plant any corn down here in this field, we're going to give it the best chance possible to have a high yield. So we will shoot down and just put some lime on it. Uh, we've had to borrow some more money again, another 10 grand into the loan. We're almost actually at a million dollars, which, uh, well, if it wasn't for the fact I had almost half a million dollars worth of soybeans sitting in the bins, uh, would be a little bit daunting. But we do have a decent amount of money sitting there, ready to be realised as well as we're starting to earn some money off the milk, which is uh, which is good. So I'm not too concerned just yet about how far our debt is going. Uh, I'd like to get it cleared though, because we do want to be able to build that feedlot at some stage. So we're going to head down, we'll shoot down and get this done as quick as we can. Jump into a little bit of a time lapse racing around, spring some lime. Shouldn't take too long, and uh, then we'll get back and be into some more planting. All right, here we are. We'll get this all turned on and we'll get into the field. Hopefully we've got enough lime to do it all in one pass. I think we should. I'm pretty sure just remembering back to some of the other fields how much it took. We'll just uh, get a focus actually. We'll get through this part here. We'll focus on getting the main part here of the field done. And uh, if we don't get it all done, that'll just be that little bit out there in front near the road, which uh, won't quite have enough lime on it, but I reckon we should. Just looking how quickly we're using it up, we should be good to go. So we'll just jump into a very quick time lapse, get this done, and uh, we'll see you back at the yard very soon. Yeah. 
I said I wouldn't go back for another load, but uh, we were so far short, I figured it was worthwhile going back, and we've actually used up, we've got 50% more, we've used up 35 for that, so it was a decent amount, there we are, all done, so let's head on back down to the yard, go grab the New Holland, we'll come back over, and make a start on planting some corn here. So back down here with the planter, we're just going to get pulled in here, I didn't actually check that we could direct drill. I'm pretty sure we can direct drill with this planter. Uh, we might find out in just a second. We actually need to come down and do some tillage first. But I'm feeling confident we can. I'm sure there was a section of the last field we went across that hadn't quite been cultivated properly and we managed to plant into it. Let's find out. This unfolded. There we are. Turn it on. Hold that down. Looks like we're getting a texture change. Yes we are. And we're using up seeds. So that's a positive that we're going to get this planted. So ideally we'd probably get rid of this little angle part, this is not going to be much fun for course play when we come to uh, harvest this with the silage harvester, forage harvester, uh, so we'll just have to think about that at the time, but for now we're just going to crack straight into the planting, uh, I'm going to jump into a little bit of a time lapse now and we'll see you when we finish. So unfortunately we ran out of fertilizer. I thought we were actually going to be okay with fertilizer and it would be seed we ran out of, but uh, other way around on this field. Must be down to the soil conditions. It was certainly seed we ran out of before fertilizer in the other one. So uh, yeah, a little bit of a learning there. Um, but we carried on, we decided just to uh, forfeit the bonus that we get from that. Um, but let's just go have a look at precision farming and see if we can see what caused it. And there you go, you can see down here we've definitely got a section of loam right across the very bottom, and if we compare that to the other field, which was completely silty clay, uh, I'm assuming that the loam probably takes more fertilizer than the silty clay did, which is why we ran out uh, going through this side, rather than the other field, uh, and it was not the seed, it was the fertilizer down here which dictated things, but there we go, we'll, uh, we'll take the hit on those few sections, uh, like I said, it's going to be pretty frustrating to come back down here, uh, a pretty frustrating field to harvest, and in fact I'm already considering that uh, we'll use course play, uh, sorry, auto drive to run the forage wagons and uh, we'll drive the forage harvester because that might be a better solution. But anyhow, let's head on back down to the yard, get this parked up, put away. We're not going to need this planter again for some time now and we'll go and see how progress is going on over with the uh, tractor planting the oats. Well, we've joined the worker in course play over here in the field with the oats, and they've only got a couple of passes left to go there. 
uh, we're down to 6% seed, 280 litres, so it's going to be pretty touch and go as to whether they're going to get finished. They haven't used much fertiliser up though, I think we were on 77% when we topped them up with seed last time, so uh, obviously not a huge demand for fertiliser, and you can see that up in the top corner there, mineral fertiliser application, it's only adding uh, about 25 I'd say about 45 kgs per hectare, so not a huge amount at all going on with the crop. So uh, let's just ride along here for a little bit, let them finish, see how far we can get through, whether there is going to be enough seed. In fact, I reckon, is there five passes left there? Five or six passes, if it uses less than 40 litres on a pass, then I think we will get finished. But let's just wait and see how far it goes, in fact I think there's a little bit more than 5 because it goes on the other side of that line let's just see on this pass how much we use, starting off on 250 litres well we've actually used close to 100 litres on that pass 250 down to 155, 95 litres, so we don't even have enough for two more passes, so it's only about one and a half, so we'll head back over to the yard, we'll grab the pickup, the seed tender Throw a little bit more seed in that and bring that over here so the uh, work can get finished off on this field. We grabbed an extra 1100 and 11 litres to be exactly precise. Did that pretty well. We'll just head on down here. I think we can get into the field just on the other side of this ditch. Pretty sure there's no bushes or anything along there. And uh, we'll be able to meet up with the planter when they get to the other end and uh, get them topped up. Give them enough to finish off as they head on down the last couple of passes. Let's just see if we can draw off the uh, auger there close enough to be able to get the seed in. Draw it further. Not quite. I think it might be easier. Oh, no, there we did hit it. Might be easier to back the uh, planter up a little bit and get it in there. No, we've hit it. There we go. Too far now. There it is. Going into the actual hopper. That's good. So that will give them enough to finish off uh, the field. So we'll get that done. That's all finished. Everything folded up put away and uh, we'll get this guy back underway and we'll be able to uh, go and get everything finished for the planting that'll be all our fields planted and uh, growing then they go back underway probably three passes left and uh, they'll be done so we'll uh, get this parked up back over at the yard and we'll be back over to watch them finish and there we are the workers getting the last of the oats finished a little strip here to do and they'll be at the end of the field now we're going to race around, there is a little pieces in the corners, just with the way it turns on the headlands, that we will go and get done, just to keep it nice and tidy. And uh, then we'll be all finished and back over to the yard. Get this put away and uh, we'll have everything planted, which will be great. Well there we are, we've got the big horses put away in the sheds, the cedars and planters both packed away nice and neatly. As the rain seems to be setting in, I thought the forecast showed it clearing, but uh, we are, look like we're stuck with it for now. Uh, perfect episode though it was great to get all that planting done let's just go and take a quick look at the map so we've got 133 134 have oats in them 135 and 195 down here both with corn so that is good uh, we've got our grass growing in there in 47 and 48 clover in 203 and up here next to the animals and then over here you actually notice our alfalfa is ready to harvest so we might look at getting in and mowing that next time and uh, getting that all cut up and done for what we're doing. I can't even remember what I said to do for it now. Whether it was alfalfa hay or alfalfa silage. We'll have to have a look at our maize plus and figure out what is the best uh, outcome for us. So we'll go and suss that out. And now one other thing I was just looking at. If we jump into the time saving stop check. I'm sure we only had 35,000 litres of milk at the start of the episode. In less than two hours we've uh, produced another 4,000 litres of milk. Which has pushed our price up uh, from what was about 26,000 to up to 28,000. Now that is enough to be able to use that money to buy a trailer. So we might do it the reverse way and buy a trailer, take a loan, buy a trailer, sell that milk and then repay that off to get the money out. And we'll go have a look at what trailer we're going to buy and we'll sort that out next time. We don't need it just yet because uh, the trailer has about a 60,000 litre capacity. So we might as well wait till we've got a full tank load of milk to go and sell. We had a couple of options for tankers that I've had a look at through ModHub, uh, but we're probably going to try out the TLX here, 21,820. A few configuration options which might push that price up a little bit higher, but we're not going to get anywhere near the price that the other ones were. And a very healthy, healthy 67,000 litre capacity, so we can haul quite a bit of milk with that to the dairy each and every time that we get it full. So if that's the case, having those cows and all the effort we've put into feeding them has paid off. Uh, but it was nice to have an episode where we haven't focused on that at all. Now as always, hope you have enjoyed that one. I'm looking forward to getting in and 
testing out the alfalfa next time. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Hello everyone, Arxy here. Welcome back to the Canadian Cattle Farmer here on Chilliwack, British Columbia. Now, times are a bit tough. We are down. We're actually in the negatives. We've gone past our credit limit, minus $16 in the bank account. And we could only afford 2,500 litres of fertiliser. Now, the reason we have got 2,500 litres of fertiliser, we're going to head up to a couple of fields that are owned by uh, some other farmers in the neighbourhood. We're going to go and get them fertilised and uh, earn a little bit of money from some contracts just to get us back into the green a little bit. Uh, we've got so much money sitting in commodities and things like that lying around that uh, it's not going to take us too long to get right back on our feet and be in control of our own fortunes. But this will get us over, tide us over, just for another day or two until uh, we can do that. Priority today though is to head on over to the alfalfa field over uh, on the other side of the map, going to get that mowed. Now I have been doing my research into what we're going to be doing with that and uh, we can make alfalfa hay or alfalfa silage. We're going to make hay with that because when we have the clover in the field up here and the one uh, back down the bottom, that will become a silage. So we end up with some alfalfa hay, some clover silage and then some grass silage. Grass silage is the thing we really need though and uh, we're all out of that. The uh, bales we had bought are all gone. So we're going to have to buy a few more of those before our grass is ready to be made into silage back down at the yard. But uh, we've got a decent amount of milk, we've got lots and lots of soybeans to sell. So hopefully we can get that all done once the price is right and uh, go and earn some money. But let's head on down. We've got a field right over in the far corner. Uh, I think it's field 22. Pretty much as far away as possible. But it's the smaller of the two contracts we've taken on. And uh, we'll go and get that one done first, try and get some money for it. So if we need to buy some more fertilizer for the other field then uh, we can do that. But I'm going to stop and check the map. I'm not sure which way we go from here. And uh, then we'll head on and get that done. Like I said, field 22, about as far away from the farm as possible. Right up here in the top right corner, you can see it flashing. So we can go straight ahead. And uh, then there's a road that runs across and links us there. And then we've got to come all the way back down here to field 100, which is the bigger field. Uh, we'll definitely, definitely, I think, need to buy some more fertilizer to be able to get that one done. So we'll head on down there. We'll go and get started in 22, get that all done and dusted and uh, then we'll come down to the other one. So I think this should be field number 22 up here on the left. We will just double check when we get here and uh, make sure it is. But it does look like it's in the right shape and it looks like we're right here on the edge of the map. We're just going to pull in here. Uh, I'm going to double check our application rate, make sure we're not putting the fertilizer on too heavily. Of course no precision farming data down here on these fields. So we'll just take a look at that and then we'll get underway. All right, well, so we set up here 148 kilograms a hectare was what the farmer had asked for us to do. So hopefully that will give us enough to get covered and get everything done. It's like we're a little bit far off the edge. I thought it was spread a little bit wider than it does. There we are. Let's set ourselves up some GPS as we're running along here. Get our little A marker down. Enough for a B marker. Set ourselves going on the course and make sure we have our width right. There we go. Those lines look a bit narrow. We might have to just tweak that and uh, do that when we get down to the other end. So we'll just have a look and so make sure our width is set correctly because that does not feel like we're spreading anywhere near as wide as we should be able to. Right, that looks a lot better. We've now got our auto width set at 104, 105 feet, which is much closer, much more appropriate for our spreading width, I think. So, with that done, let's carry on. I don't know why my auto width wasn't working on the uh, keyboard, but it wasn't. There we go. We'll turn our lines on and have a quick look. And see, we're just actually, we're actually on one of the courses right there. So that's going to work out very well, pretty much for the full width of the field. So, we'll very quickly get this one done. There's no point in uh, time-lapsing it or anything because we'll be over and done with it in no time. So we'll get it finished and uh, then we'll see how we're going. Head back over and get some more fertilizer. Like I said, wasn't worth a time-lapse or anything. We're just doing our fourth pass now, which should just about see us finishing the field off. We'll just wait and uh, get a little bit further down here. Hopefully we'll get the contract complete, pop up in just a minute and we'll be all finished. And we've used about uh, 1,000 litres of fertilizer. We've just about done, there we are, field 22 contract is done. So we'll run down to the end here, that turned off, 
uh, we'll put our wheels back in, I did widen those up because I didn't want to tip over on the end like we have before, but there we are, we are definitely going to have to get some more fertiliser for the other field, the other field must be about three times bigger, so we're going to need about four and a half, maybe five thousand litres at that rate, uh, so we'll claim our payment and we'll head on down, we'll go past the co-op actually, and saves us going back to the farm and yard and getting some fertiliser, we'll pop into the co-op, get topped up there and uh, then head on down to field 100. So there we go, we've got six and a half grand now in our bank account, which makes me just a touch happier than I was when we started off. So that will help us get these last fields done. In fact, I, when I was claiming the contract, I did notice there's a couple more popped up. So we'll just keep an eye out once we've done field 100. We might even pick another one up if there's one down in that part of the area. And we don't have to travel too far because uh, a little bit more income would not go astray. But we do need to make sure we leave ourselves enough time to head on over to the alfalfa field and get that mode. So, uh, we will go and do that, but let's stop in down here at the co-op, we're not too far away now, and uh, go and get some more fertiliser. Here we are, oh, we've just blown all our money on fertiliser, 5,000 litres, so we probably actually need to spend all of that uh, to get this next contract done. So hopefully we haven't gone and wasted all our money, and we're going to go back out the other way. But that, uh, that added up very quick and filled up very quickly. I didn't actually have time to stop, but we were going to aim for 4,500 litres, so 5,000 litres isn't too far off. So you've got to spend some money to make money, right? And uh, that little contract we just did should see us over for getting these bigger ones done. So we head on down. Uh, field 100 is further over the other side. We'll go and find that and get the fertiliser spread on there. So field 100 is just in behind those trees, so I'm guessing with a distinct lack of access in this way, maybe we're meant to access it from another way. Uh, unless we're going to have to go through the trees, I can't actually see a way into the field there. I might just give the, uh, the owner a call and just see if he can give me a pointer on how we're meant to get into the field, because uh, I can't see anything coming down this way. We'll uh, give him a call and then see if we can figure it out. We'll come back down the road a little bit, you see just to head in along the back of the trees, run along the fringe of this field, which uh, I don't think is planted yet. You see just sneak along here and then you'll be into 100 and we'll be able to get started on it, so not ideal. Uh, a little bit of a problem with some of the fields on this map, a little bit hard to find your way to, but here we are, this is 100 here right in front of us. And so we'll be able to uh, just pause, get our flash is turned off, and come in here. Of course we will open our uh, axle width up just a touch, make sure we have that stability on the corners, and there we go, we'll turn that on, we should be good to go. So we'll crack into this one, a little bit bigger field, but not too much bigger. Uh, we'll jump into a little bit of a time lapse while we do this one, and uh, we'll see you once we're all finished. There we are, contract complete here on field 100, still got 2,500 litres of uh, fertiliser which is good, so we only used 3,000 there on that field, so we'll head on down the front, uh, we'll go and get paid for it, and then I think there is probably going to be one more contract we'll go and pick up, uh, which is over by our cows down the bottom of the map, we'll go and do that one, and uh, that should leave us hopefully with about 20 grand, which will be some good operating capital to have, because at the moment we ain't got any, so uh, we'll go and sort that out and we'll see you down at the next field. This here is field 190, which is uh, right next to our cows actually, we've got the field just over this, uh, over the edge there, cow buns with uh, our cows in it on the 100, field 195, so again, nice little field, we've got a 5 grand contract here, so we've claimed the money from the, the previous one, $16,000, and uh, I think we're getting about 5 grand for this one, so like I said, about 20, 21 grand of money that'll be sitting in the account very, very soon, this one's only another little small field, so we'll get this done. And then, I think while we've still got some sun in the sky, and while it's still warm, we will go and grab the swather out, head on over to the field uh, where the alfalfa is, and go and get that mode. That is going to be the next task. So we'll carry on, get this one finished, and uh, be back at the yard in no time. Uh, 
And there we are, contract done. I will go through though and uh, be a good contractor. Try and tidy out these little pieces. I didn't bother setting a GPS course up on here and uh, we got a little bit off. But we'll make sure we've put a good dose on pretty much the whole field and then we'll be done. Get this little piece through here finished off. And uh, still got some fertilizer left, which is uh, good. We might be able to use it ourselves. But there we go. Let's turn that off. We'll jump in and claim that contract. And there we go. 4917. So $21,000. Perfect. Good to have some money back. So, that all folded up. We will uh, get on back down to the yard. We'll get the store opened up and we'll get the swather out here. And it will be all good to go. Head on over to the other field. It should be all good with diesel. 333 litres sitting in there. We haven't done too much in it. Just on an hour. Uh, so, shouldn't take us too long, so head on over and go and get the other uh, alfalfa mun. Now, I am mindful of the width of this header um, as we run it along the roads. So we don't really have another choice. I uh, suppose we could have put it on, taken it off and put it on the gooseneck and run it over with the pickup, but we'll just take it carefully. I'm sure we'll find enough space to just pull off the road a little bit. And if we're responsible and have our warning lights and everything like that flashing, uh, what can possibly go wrong? So. We'll head on over, I thought the header was up, uh, down then, and we uh, actually put it down rather than lifting it up. Head on over, find the alfalfa, and we're going to make a start. Now I'll be intrigued to see whether we can use the conditioner to uh, start to get it dried or not. I'm not sure whether our alfalfa's affected quite the same way, don't worry about this car, quite the same way as uh, grasses with Maze Plus, so that is a little bit of something we'll have to figure out when we get over there. So here we are down at the alfalfa, look at that crop out there, that is looking beautiful. So we're going to head on in here now. I've set this up using Maze Plus, if I just bring up the menu, we've gone without conditioner, now that conditioner down the bottom, that relates to the head here on the swather, so we're without conditioner, but we've set it onto Maze Plus to test the stage of semi-dry, if we go one more, it turns it into hay, otherwise we're back at base game conditioned and semi-dry, so we're going to try that with the idea that one, we'll need to come down and test this once, to turn it into alfalfa hay, and then we have to win row, or we can bail it. So that is the uh, that is the plan. Of course, alfalfa hay, as we said earlier, because the silage, uh, the clover is going to be silage and the grass is going to be silage. Uh, and when you look at maize plus, this is an, actually a required ingredient. It's kind of like a filler. So uh, we'll just have to wait and see how that goes. But let's just uh, head on in here, get the uh, mower turned on, get the header lowered down. There we go. And hopefully things are getting mowed. So we'll just go up to the corner of the shed and we'll go and hop out and see what we're getting behind us. There we go, we'll just pause there for a minute, turn that off. Let's have a look. Obviously isn't going to tell me what it is, but that looks pretty good. It looks uh, semi-dry, doesn't it? We could always turn it on to uh, non-dry and see what happens, but we might have got a little bit of grass mixed in with it there, I think. You can see we've mowed across the edge. We've got the two kind of blending it a little bit. That shouldn't be too bad. So, I think, with that all set up, and ready to go. I think we'll jump into uh, getting this mode and I'm not sure whether we'll get it tethered tonight, probably not. Probably let it dry for a few more hours and come in tomorrow and get it done then, but looks good, doesn't it, looking out across and seeing all those purple flowers. Nice crop. Anyhow, back into the cab and we will carry on. See how well I can go driving in cab for this long. It's uh, a bit of a fast beast this, and it feels even faster in cab when you're actually doing a task. I drove down here the whole way in cab, and it didn't actually feel too bad, but now when you're actually trying to get in here and mow, you feel like you're going a lot faster than you actually are. There we are. Right. Set our cruise control off again, and dodge the power pole. It's like we're getting everything over there on that side. And we're underway, so we're just gonna jump into the field get it all done and get things all ready and set up to make some hay.
that's a whole lot of nice lined up straight windrows even if I do say my, so myself I suppose they're not really windrows or such are they swath rows? I don't know what you want to call it anyhow looking good to get all of this alfalfa mowing and ready to be made into some hay so like I said it is uh, it's 20 to 5 so I think we'll uh, call it quits there but today we'll get things all turned off head on back over to the farm and uh, then we'll see you tomorrow probably we will come down here and uh, get some of this spread and turned over teared out ready to be uh, windrowed up and then baled with the baler and then we'll have to come down and pick it all up as well so still a few more things we need to do with this I also have to remember we've got a couple of trucks to a truck a couple of trailers and a bit more equipment down here we should probably think about coming back and rescuing at some stage uh, don't need it down here really anymore the only reason we're coming down here is to work in that field and also to feed the cows so might be a case with those cows maybe we move them a bit closer to home because this really is the furthest yard away from any of us so uh, we'll just wait and see that could be something to do as well to maybe we could use that money to pay for the uh, pay for the feedlot we'll have to wait and see anyhow let's head on back down to the yard and uh, we'll check out for the evening well, we've got a whole a lot more hours of mowing to put on this before the end of the season uh, all the grass here behind us the clover and who knows hopefully we'll be able to get a second cut off some of these fields I'm not quite sure I haven't actually tried that yet with uh, seasonal cycles in FS22 to know exactly how many times you can mow your grass or mow your clover or whatever it is that you might be mowing to uh, make it into hay silage or whatever you are going to do with it so that'll be something we can test out as well the more we can get the better though because our cows truly are hungry now we're going to put this away and then we're just going to take a quick look at the animal screen before uh, we skip through the next day there we go tucked away nicely in the shed there next to the new holland now we're just going to before we skip through the night we're going to go and have a look at the animal screen and just see how much milk we've got at the moment so between our two pens of holsteins a hundred head of cows we've got 26,000 litres in that pen and just over 26,000 litres so 52,000 litres of milk already now bear in mind the last episode I think we had 32 at the start and finished with 34 we're still in the same calendar day so all up 52,000 litres of milk so there's $40,000 worth of milk there just from that now the reason I wanted to check it now is because we're going to skip through till early morning the next day and I wanted to see how much milk we're going to have overnight so let's go and check that out well good morning we probably should have checked the weather forecast before we went and mowed some alfalfa we've had some rain overnight and it is still going and you can hear the wind a little bit too it's still a bit breezy out there as well which has kind of put a curtail to getting any more work done out in the fields for the hay but we'll just go and have a look at that animal screen and see where we got to so 26,000 litres has gone to 37,000 here in these Holsteins these ones have gone up to 39 now they've actually run out of food which is something we need to go and address uh, but these ones all have a little bit of food left in them they do but uh, that's pretty impressive increase in milk so if we have a look at our time saving stock check 76 24,000 litres of milk just overnight in about a 14 hour window so that uh, makes all this effort of feeding these animals all worthwhile and there you go we can see 53 grand worth now if we sold it uh, up to $58,000 now I'm going to have to be mindful of this we're going to have to get a trailer very soon because otherwise we're going to run out of space here to store we must have 50,000 litres of storage and based on what we've just learned we're going to get to the top of that each reach the cap before the end of the calendar day we are currently in for something we have to go and have a look at not quite old enough here for uh, these brown swiss to be producing milk and of course these ones are just bred for profit uh, so I don't think we get any milk off the Anguses we'll just have to wait and see so I think with the weather the way it is this might be a perfect place for us to wrap up this episode not quite what I expected probably a little bit shorter but uh, we'll let the rain pass and we'll be back next time to get that alfalfa uh, tetted dried out and converted into some hay uh, we'll have to go and buy a tanker to, for the milk and we're going to have to do something about feeding the animals and for that we do need a whole lot more grass silage now if we actually just run over here and have a look at our grass field in fact while it says it's ready for harvesting uh, I don't think it really is it does say growth ready for harvest but I think that's because we have the uh, harvest at any stage growth uh, tool on we can mow grass at any stage but we absolutely want to get this bulked up and uh, as tall as possible to try and get as much as we can because you can see at the moment potential yield 6.97 tons to the acre uh, expected yield can get up to 17 so we want to give this a little bit more time to grow 
so we can uh, certainly make as much grass off it as well. we can, much silage. And we will have to uh, go and buy a few more silage bales because, like I said, we're all out. So we'll have to uh, head on down to the store. We do have that money we made from those couple of contracts that will top that off. Anyhow, I hope you have all enjoyed that episode. As always, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Hello everyone, Argsy here. Welcome back to the Canadian Cattle Farmer here on Chilliwack, British Columbia. Now if you caught the last episode, you would have seen things were cut a little bit shorter than we expected by some unexpected rain. Well, I'm sure if I'd checked the forecast it would have been raining, but we have uh, moved forward time. We actually only had to go forward about an hour, an hour and a half to get past that wet weather and uh, be into some finer drying day. So, which is good because it did mean we were going to have to wait for our alfalfa hay, which we mowed last time. To get down there and ted that and get it windrowed up and made into some hay so while we're waiting for that to warm up and the weather to improve just a little bit we've jumped here into the truck and we're heading down to give some of the animals some tmr uh, these ones down here were the ones we looked at right at the end of the episode and they were completely out of food now it's actually interesting to see how quickly they uh, start to lose their condition and health without having any food it really is pretty important to keep them fully fed and always having something in their uh, feed bowl. So we are coming down and going to give them some TMR. We've got 52,000 litres in here. Of course these pens actually only take 60,000, which is a good thing and a bad thing. Good thing that it only takes really a truckload to fill them up. Bad thing is you have to fill them up quite a lot. You can't just stockpile them with food and hope that it's going to last quite a while. We do have to go around and feed all the other animals as well, the other three uh, cow pastures. But we actually need to buy a little bit more silage and grass before that. Now I'm just actually, while I'm doing that, I'm looking at this grass area and thinking we could actually come down here and mow this because this looks pretty well grown and get this turned into some uh, into some silage. And we might actually do that. That might be something we do because we are going to be getting out very soon with the baler and everything like that. So why can we not feed, feed that here? Here we are. Went quite in the right spot for the trigger. There we go, getting some food into that pen. Um, but like I was saying, we could come down and actually mow this grass. If we could get a dozen silage bales off this area, that could actually be a big help for us. So we might try and give that a go. We're just going to get these ones here fed and then we'll head back to the yard, back to the farm and get things all set up for uh, what we're going to do today. The other thing we're also going to do, we're going to go and take out a little bit more of a loan to be able to buy a milk trailer, to be able to collect some of the milk and go and sell that, uh, which is something we might do before we get into tedding the grass and tedding the hay uh, because we can let it dry out for just a little bit longer and we know we've got enough milk to fill up one of those tankers but anyhow let's carry on we'll get the food here to the cows and we'll head on back down to the yard so when a lot of cows fed i'm been a little bit annoyed with myself that i didn't think we could have gone down and mowed that grass a little bit sooner that would have really saved us a lot of blushes and we've just got one of the animal feed mixes coming back from over the other side of the farm We'll just let them come in here. I can't remember where the auto drive course is, so we'll stay out of their way and not try and go out there at the same time. Uh, they were parked up over on the other side of the map and had a little bit of food in there, so we'll just let them finish off and get back here now. But we do need some more grass silage before we can do any more feeding, so we'll head on down here. We'll go and get this mowed. Like I said, if we can get half a dozen or a dozen bales off there, that would be enough for a few feed mixes. Now, I have re-evaluated my feed mixture ratios as well. I was putting two grass bales into each of the, uh, into each, just turn our flashes on there, give that guy some warning, uh, into each mixture, but we only need 10% grass or grass silage in each mix, so we can actually substitute the second bale with a uh, alfalfa hay bale or a hay bale that we've got in the other shed, which we weren't using up until now, so uh, the more I've delved into it, the more I've understood that where you've got a minimum, you make sure you put the minimum in, but if your maximum for anything else is very high, even if it's minimum of zero, you can still use that to pad out the mixture rather than using some of the more valuable assets that you might have. Uh, so, something to bear in mind if you're ever doing Maze Plus. Anyhow, let's go on down and uh, we'll go and get this grass mode. Alright, so we're down here, I've set this up to be just base game, it should come out as just some nice fresh green grass, and uh, these are actually nice straight swaths so I reckon we don't even need to bother windrowing this I don't think there's been much benefit running over the field twice just to make some nicer windrows I reckon we can mow this then come straight back down here with the baler and uh, get it all picked up and turned into some silage bales and we do have to wait 48 hours for the grass to ferment that is the only downside to this so I think we are gonna have to unfortunately go and buy 
a few more bales just to make sure we've got enough to feed the animals. But anyhow, let's just uh, race through this field, get it done, get back and grab the baler and uh, come down and get it baled up and by then hopefully the alfalfa would have dried back out we can get over and tip that and make a start on baling that as well. Alright, there we go, all done. Didn't take too long at all. Don't know what's going on, we always get cars that pause up there and watch us. Every time, without fail, they'll come along, stop just there and uh, see what's going on. Just see the train going past there a little bit, we must. I'm just going to make sure we get that, whether we pick it up with the baler or not, I don't know. But there we are, I'm turn that off, pick up the head and uh, just wait and see if this car's going to go past because we're going to struggle to get past there. They go. We got a couple more coming along there with the rain, railway crossing having just gone up, but we'll pull out here in front, turn our hazards on. There we go. This is the one actually, I thought there was one behind it, but no, no more. Right, let's head on back down to the yard. Honking at me. Arrogance of them all. Let's head on back down to the yard. We're going to pull out the baler. We'll grab hold of the Kubota, I think, actually. Double check that it's got the horsepower requirements. It's been a <laughs> wee while since we bailed. Uh, but if we can do that, we'll use the Kubota, bring that down here and get started on baling and wrapping those up. All hooked up to the baler. Now, of course, we could pull it. 168 horsepower tractor, 158 horsepower requirement there for the baler. So no dramas whatsoever. We do have a little bit, it looks like, of hay in the back of the baler. Now, I'm hoping that when we pick up grass, that might convert that to grass and that will make everything carry on as silage. Otherwise, our first bale out is going to be a hay bale. The other thing I'm going to be mindful of is how big we make these bales. I don't want to make them too big, and I can't remember if we can change the size on this baler or not. But what I want to try and aim for is any bales should be about 10% of the capacity of the mixers. Now the big mixers have a 26,000 litre capacity, so if we do 3,500 litre bales, which I think are the smallest, while well it means more handling in fields and things like that, it means we know that we've got 10% capacity in each of those bales. So we put one bale in, it's going to put 10% into the mixer. So. Uh, that is the plan anyhow. So let's carry on down here, well we're just about there, so we'll keep going and we'll get everything unfolded and see how we go with getting some bales done. Be intrigued exactly how many we're going to get, I reckon. I reckon a dozen isn't out of the question here. Maybe ten. Double figures at least, I'm hoping for double figures. So let's go, we'll pull this in, turn things on, unwrap, unfold, everything's moving as it should. And there you go, the symbol change to the uh, wet grass, which is good. It does mean the first bale is going to come out, which is 3,000 litres. So again, it sits nicely in that 10%. This is going to be a grass bale. So let's see how we go here with uh, getting these all done and wrapped. Going well so far. And uh, we should, hopefully, drop it off before we get the next one finished. Oh, it's going to be close. Just. Of course, it goes into the pre-chamber, doesn't it? So we can have a little bit more of an overlap there than you think. So uh, this is going to go pretty well I think, I think we're going to do pretty decently. Let's wait and see anyhow, won't jump the gun too much but uh, let's carry on, crack into it and just get through this and get it all done. I've ended up with more than I expected and uh, we're only a few hundred litres well 83 litres short of having a full bale here so I'm just going to race around and pick up a few little scraps I didn't bother doing before 
because we might just about be able to get an extra bale out of it. But we will check the tally and see how many bales we've made this session. I hadn't actually reset the bale counter, so that's not going to work. Uh, but there is a lot more than I expected. Probably didn't factor in the fact we were only making 3,000 litre bales though, so if you're making something a bit bigger like we'd normally make, uh, it would be obviously a few less. But even, even still, looking at the uh, total number of litres we're going to have got, it's not going to be a bad little effort. Alright, I'm hoping there's 10 litres sitting here on the ground. Let's wait and see. Oh, there's only... Only six, we still need four more. What about down on this little stack here? There we go, perfect. Alright, we'll turn that off, lift up the pickup, and that will wrap the last of the bales. Now what we're going to actually do is, we do have the auto load trailer, but uh, to avoid being seen as being all completely cheaty, we will... Uh, go around and stack all these up in one spot in the edge of the field so that when we come down with the auto load trailer we do just pick them up from one spot so we're just going to disconnect the wrapper there or the baler and we're going to race around get these all brought up to the front probably be the best spot and then we'll have them all in one spot to be picked up with the trailer last bale here 23 total so that gives us uh, 3,000 litres each about 69,000 litres so that's a good good amount of uh, silage once it's all fermented at least to tide us over for the next wee while until we can get that big grass field done but uh does make you wonder how much grass are we going to get off that big grass field which has actually been sown and fertilized and limed and given the best chance to get a decent yield it could be quite impressive but uh there we are we're going to head on back over to the yard now uh it's not quite warm enough or dry enough yet to go over to the alfalfa what we're actually going to do, we're going to go and jump into the semi, we're going to head on down and buy a tanker so that we can come and pick up some of this milk and get that delivered to a sell point and start to get some income off that. Uh, and then uh, we do need to go and buy some more silage bales, so we'll go and do that at the same time or around about the same time. And then we should be, uh, should be looking pretty good to go down and get that alfalfa hay done. So we've got the uh, baler back at the yard, we've come and grabbed the semi here and we're going to head on down to the shop and go and purchase our trailer. Now I think I showed you last or a couple of episodes ago now which trailer we were going to get. It is the uh, 82 Studios tanker, I think that was the best bang for buck versus volume versus cost and everything like that. So uh, we will go and get that and bring it down to, well I think it's this animal pen here, this cattle barn here and the one we were just down at which have the Holsteins in which are the two which are producing milk already it does look like that is the Holsteins there out in the, the field so uh, certainly come back down and go and get some of that milk picked up I'm looking forward to actually starting to profiteer off these uh, off these girls they've certainly chewed through a lot of food and a lot of our time so it'd be good to start to make some money off them so here it is, the TLX 48 foot tanker trailer. Now we've got this all set up with our configurations. We've left it as standard. We're not going for unrealistic, which takes it up to 250,000 litres. We're going to stick at the 67,240. Otherwise, you can see through there, nothing else really special. We've got the illumination there, and we've gone for the fresh milk sign on the side and back. We've even got the number plate there, Argzy Milk. Uh, added a liftable axle on the front. And fenders on the rear wheels as well and otherwise just customize it to match the color of the trucks here with the blue on the chassis and everything else done so that has a total price of twenty five thousand two hundred seventy we've got sixteen thousand dollars so we're going to go and borrow another ten grand come back and buy this and then we'll be uh, all good to go and sell some milk all right and there it is we'll get backed up here with the semi we'll get hooked up and head on down and try and get some milk loaded in i'm looking forward like i said before quite excited finally being able to earn some money off the cows and uh, get some milk sold. Now, I'm going to turn the lights on because look at all that illumination on there. That looks pretty sweet. Right, let's head on down. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a challenge manoeuvring around in some of those areas, I think. We'll see how we go, but we'll go see and uh, do what we can do. Here we are at the first of the barns. Now, I think the trigger at the front there is for the slurry, so I expect we're going to have to take the trailer around the back. I know we've obviously got the trigger for the animals, but I wonder if over there under the other sign and then the other door might be a trigger for the milk. So what are we going to do is we're going to try and back up to that. Hopefully this trailer and truck is going to work with getting some access in there and getting some milk loaded in. So let's go and see. Now I know we can open the hatches there. We'll keep backing up, backing up, backing up. 
and I'm hoping somewhere about there we're gonna get a milk trigger. There we go. Look at that. We're filling up with milk. This is uh, this is gonna be pretty pretty promising. Now let's go and have a look and see where we're gonna go and sell this. We got two options there for milk. We got Costco and Chilliwack Dairy, and at the moment Costco are paying eleven dollars per thousand litres more. So uh, we'll certainly be taking it there and earning that little bit extra. And we've got the Costco just over there, which isn't too far away for us to go. So we'll uh, go and get loaded up. Of course, we do have to come all the way down the bottom here to field 203 and get the rest of the milk. But uh, hey, I'm not going to complain. 39,000 litres pretty much. So we're not even going to be able to fill the, uh, get all the milk. We're going to have a full trailer before we, uh, before we get the milk emptied out of the other barn. So let's head on down there and uh, get the trailer here topped up. And here we are down here getting the milk from this other dairy and uh, we'll be full in no time ready to head off to Costco. Now what are we going to have? 67,000 litres. They're paying $7,000 or so per uh, thousand litres so I can't even do the maths for that but uh, it's going to be a pretty decent little income for our first load of milk. And if we are going to be starting to turn this over every single day then uh, I am going to be very very happy. Right let's head on down to Costco and go and get this sold. Well here we are down at Costco, now we'll go and find where the sell point is. One thing I've learnt very quickly with this truck having 67,000 litres of milk on behind it, break early. Uh, it doesn't like stopping, so there you go, lesson learnt for us, we'll make sure. We apply the anchors a little bit earlier in the future. Now I think the sell point's just around the back of the building, so if we head on down this little alleyway here, past the front entrance, down the side, there should be a trigger here we can back in over. You can just see it there. Yes, there it is. So I'm hoping if we get backed in there to the loading dock, we can pump the milk direct in. Now I'm not sure if they'd exactly be buying bulk milk like this, but uh, that is the way the things are set up here. So we're just going to make the most of it. Here we are. Maneuver that in there. Already getting the trigger. Let's get backed right in properly though, and uh, see how much money we're going to make. I am beyond excited for this. Let's go. Oh look at that, $51,461 worth of milk, that is uh, that is incredible, I am over the moon with that, that is going to really turn our fortunes around now, it's what we've been aiming for, getting this uh, dairy farm up to a point, or this uh, cattle farm up to the point where we can actually make some money off the animals, we've put the hard works in and now we're starting to see some of the uh, reward for it, which is awesome, so now that we've got that done, we've obviously still got some more milk we could sell, but we don't need to at the moment. We're going to head on back to the farm and uh, we're going to go pick up the bale trailer. We do still need to get the cows fed and we're going to do that. But what we might do as well, we might actually send a worker over, take the tedder over and put them on auto drive and head them on over to the other field to make a start on getting that field tedded as well. Or maybe not make a start, but at least be ready to do it now. Do we take that road? No, we don't. It's the next one down. So made it back to the yard, we've got the bale trailer here and we're going to head down to the shop and pick up a few more silage bales, enough to tide us over to the ones we've made today are ready. Uh, we've got a worker there in the Kubota, they are going to head down to the alfalfa field with the tedder and they are, they're not going to make a start, they're just repositioning the tractor for me, we'll head down there and then we'll get another worker to follow over with the windrower and uh, then we'll be able to make a start on getting that field all done and ready to hopefully get it all bailed up today so we'll see how we go timing is uh time's flying by actually but uh, this has been a very rewarding episode already so let's go and get some more silage bales so down here we've got 18 more bales and i've specifically limited myself to 18 because i think that is going to be the sweet spot for us to uh have enough to cover the next feed mix but uh before we need to or able to use our own bales so i didn't want to buy too many uh, it was $30,000 on its own, so uh, we've plumbed through another big chunk of that $52,000 we just earned. And I do still need to repay the $10,000 loan that we took for uh, the trailer, which will take us down to twelve. dollars So we'll need to get some more milk sold, uh, or some income somewhere else very, very soon. Now you can just see up ahead of us, we've got the Kubota heading on down to go and start doing the tedding. So that is good to see that they are doing their job. Of course I have just taken the uh, one tractor we have, which has a bale grab on it, a wave for uh, mixing any feed up for the animals but that's alright they should be okay until that tractor's back and uh, able to help out with that job so we'll uh, head on back down and we're going to head on over with the tedder make that start there and we're going to take the uh, John Deere over with the windrower as well 
Well, there we go. We've got the uh, bales unloaded there. They'll be out of the way for now. I've just left the truck parked there because we're going to need that to go over and pick up the other ones out of the field. We can head back down this way. We'll grab the John Deere here because that is what we're going to take over to do our wind rowing. We'll get this all started up, turned on, and get the, uh, get the feed mixer taken off the back of this. It's actually worked out really well having this running as a feed mixer as well. It takes longer to get around, but because we've got the auto drive all set up properly now, it's uh, it's really helpful to have this going off and it can top up after the truck's been through or we can send this down and it can do two trips to the same uh, pen while the truck goes and does the other. So it does sort of make the feed process a whole lot quicker because there still is quite a bit of manual involvement here with loading and everything like that. It's not completely automated. Uh, some people have suggested why don't I use a TMR mixer or something like that, which if we had a silo of TMR we could pull out of it. Uh, I'm trying to keep it a little bit more authentic. Uh, if we did that we could have gone for a big trailer or something like that and just run the TMR down without having to use a feed mixer at all. So we are trying to keep a little bit of authenticity there with the uh, feed mixing. And I'm enjoying it actually, it's been fun and rewarding to get that auto drive course all set up properly. Uh, now what would be equally rewarding would be backing up properly to get hooked up here to the Winra. There we are, that's done. So we're going to put this on auto drive. We're going to jump over to the Kubota and go and make a start on the tedding. So, moment of truth now here with the alfalfa. Uh, we mowed it into a semi-dry state. Uh, we're now going to see if we put this down and lower it, if we're going to get a change in colour. Look at that, it's changing to a nice vibrant light colour of alfalfa hay which is exactly what I was hoping it was going to. That's perfect, that's exactly what we wanted. Looking like we're going to get our alfalfa hay working here, no worries. So let's just carry on here with this, we'll uh, hopefully get most of this field done before the winra gets over there. Then we can do a bit of a switcheroo with the worker, send the uh, other worker back with this tractor over to pick up the baler and we can carry on with winra and then come back and do the baling. So this should all work out really really well with a little bit of help from Autodrive. So we'll just uh, crack into this and we'll uh, get the field all ready for that wind row.
So when rowing all done, tedding all done, and we've got this all set up here, ready now to be baled into some alfalfa hay. So I'm just going to check, have a look at our bale size that we have set at the moment. In fact, I can't even see it because of all the other information that is on there. And it doesn't matter because this baler only does one size, 125 centimetres. So there's no changing it anyhow, which I do seem to recall us going through that all once before. So let's get it turned on, pick up lower down, and let's make a start here on getting these alfalfa bales done. And I think we might finish off the episode the way we started it with the time lapse of some baling. So uh, this is all going perfect. Looks like we're getting some nice dry alfalfa, which will mean it is alfalfa hay coming out the other end once it's all picked up and wrapped up. Not going to have a guess on the number of bales, although the way it's going, I reckon we might get less uh, less bales off this per hectare or by weight than anything else. But these are four and a half thousand litres, so I'm guessing because they're hay, they do fit a little bit more in it than silage does at 125 centimetres, which makes sense. So let's jump into that little time lapse. We'll get this uh, all baled up, and uh, we'll get to the end to see what we're left with. And there we go, this is the last pass on the alfalfa, and I think I did do a quick tally up, uh, but we will look because I've got the uh, bale counter reset, I did manage to do that this time, and we've done 25 bales plus the almost bale that's in the baler here, so that's not bad, that'll go a decent way, 4,500 litres each, so uh, somewhere between 80 and 100,000 litres or so of uh, alfalfa hay, which is good, be good to have. Now we're going to uh, go around and pick all these up, get them stacked up, ready to come down and pick them up with the truck, but uh, I'm going to save you watching me do that and we'll just get that done off camera and uh, have it all tidied up because when we get back for the next episode I want to be forward into the month of May, so uh, we will have skipped forward and I want to get these off the fields and brought down to the uh, down to the yard. So as always, hope you've enjoyed this episode, thank you all very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Hello everyone, Argsy here. Welcome back to Chilliwack, British Columbia for another episode of the Canadian Cattle Farmer. We have moved forward into May. We were in April last time you saw us and we have just been down and cleared the alfalfa hay off the field. Got all those picked up and loaded. 25 bales that we collected there, which is good. That is a good help for our feed situation. Now, a couple of uh, couple of honest little moments I'm just going to make with you. I'd made an error when we bought the silage bales last time, and I actually bought whole uh, whole crop silage, which cost a significant amount more than grass silage. So we've actually had a little bit of a boost to our money. I thought when I bought it they cost more than I expected uh, grass silage would cost. So there we are. We did make a little bit of a faux pas there, and we've rectified that. Uh, now the other thing I've also 
I've done, I've made a small tweak to Maze Plus and the Maze Plus Animal add-on that I'm running and have slightly reduced uh, by 50% all of the feed requirements for our animals. Uh, not that I didn't want to, but it's just the uh, the demand for it and everything like that. The fact we can only put 100,000 litres into the, or 60,000 litres, sorry, 60,000 litres at a time into the cattle pastures um, has just meant that we've been spending a lot of time off camera making food and getting that delivered even though the auto drive course is working quite well uh, it has been quite a laborious task in between episodes so uh, for that I have made a bit of a reduction and changed things down so i uh, just let you know that now while we come along here our field here on the left we do have a little bit of an issue with the clover and I don't know whether that is something to do with the way the growth cycles are set up for the clover on the map but I have skipped forward time without saving to pretty much a year from now and the clover is only just starting to germinate. So there must be something not quite right with the growth cycles around when we plant it and when it's harvestable. So uh, we are going to have to wait another 12 months for that clover to be ready. I did have a look and see if there was another crop we could have planted in there in, uh, in advance of it and replace that and get the clover planted again at another stage. But it just wasn't worth it. So uh, we are going to have to go without any clover for some time. Now fortunately it is grass silage is our critical uh, critical requirement for our feed mix along with the maize silage and we are going to have plenty of grass once that field in behind the yard is all ready to harvest so uh, not too much of a worry I mean it's a little bit frustrating to not have the clover but it is what it is and uh, we'll just have to make do and get past it. But we're going to get these unloaded here at the yard we need to go and pick up the grass silage bales which are fermenting over by the other cattle pen and uh, we will go and bring those over and get them put away and then our main task today as we drive up to this field is actually to spray the weeds in here in the corn on our right uh, we need to get down there with the sprayer and get some herbicide spread over those so uh, that is what we are going to be doing very soon so I'll carry on get all this unloaded delivered here into our feed area and we'll be back over into the John Deere and doing some spraying very very soon so our alfalfa bales delivered and we've come over and picked up our silage bales. Uh, they are, I think, about 20% fermented, so they're still a wee way away from being able to be used. Uh, not too far though, hopefully we'll be able to get in and get them used very, very soon because we have used up all the silage bales we did buy as well, which is uh, really our big need is to try and get these in. Now, just while we're standing here, I was just going to have a quick look at the animals and give you a quick update on their progress. So you can see all the animals are in a good production, all 100%, all 100% health and uh, in various stages of reproduction actually we've got these Holsteins here which are 40% of the way through reproduction so counting down the months until we will start getting some more uh, animals which will be good. All the pens do have full slurry though which uh, I did have someone comment to say that we weren't going to get any milk off them but we do still seem to be producing milk and as you can see there we've already got 55,000 litres out of the two lots of Holsteins so uh, we're still getting milk produced there which is good uh, and like I said our food requirements have gone down just a little bit with that adjustment that I made to the XML so everything is all trucking along very very well there and I think I'm feeling a little bit more confident about keeping on top of those feed demands with that little tweak. Now if anyone's interested in finding out more about how I've done that uh, let me know down in the comments I'd be happy to do a little instructional video or uh, there might even be some out there I know Disturb Simulations has done some fantastic work with the uh, Maze Plus system and all of those so he may even have a video which shows you what needs to be done. But there we are, we are all loaded up, that tr car I can guarantee will pause right there like every other one has. Indeed it did and then it decided to move again but we're going to head on over to the farm, we'll get these ones unloaded and then we'll be into the spraying. So there we are all unloaded, 34% uh, fermented are these grass bales, so 3000 litres of silage in each of those which is good. And we've had to put the alfalfa hay over here, these are a little bit bigger but uh, they won't go into the shed unfortunately because it is configured for uh, grass hay. I could have reconfigured this one here to not be straw but I am aware that we do have the oats over the road which we're going to go and put some straw in, uh, get baled into some straw as well so we'll need somewhere to put those back in. So. They'll make do, that's not a bad little spot actually along the side of the barn there to have those uh, bales all stored. Anyhow we're going to head on over here, you can already see there in front of you we've got the uh, sprayer out and ready to go. We need to go and put a little bit of herbicide in it, we've only got a very small amount in there. So we'll go get it topped up and we'll be over into the fields getting uh, the corn and all the barley or oats. Was it barley or oats? I can't remember now exactly. Uh, but we'll get the crop over there done as well. I had to check, it's oats, 133 and 134, both have oats. So while we're in here, let's just take a very quick look at where we do have weeds to deal with. 
as it sinks there, 133, 134 and 135 all have weeds, except for the areas we ploughed, which was the uh, additions to the field along the strip there and uh, down the edge. Then I think also down here on 195 we'll get over and get the weeds sprayed over in that one as well. So uh, a few areas we need to deal with, but nothing too major at this stage. So we've got 235 litres of herbicide now. I'm wondering actually, I think we might have some fertiliser in the tank already, so we may not be able to buy any herbicide through that we'll have to go and have a look uh, and if we can't we might have to head on down to the co-op and go and pick up some uh, herbicide that way let's just go and have a quick look I do think from previous memory we've got it in there from the planter and we do there's 131 litres of liquid fertiliser in there uh, it's almost worth seeing if there's a way we could pump that out and put it into a tote or something like that rather than having to run all the way down to the, uh, to the shop let's go and have a look well, as it turns out, it looks like we might be able to buy some herbicide, which we can buy that. And we've now got 2,000 litres of herbicide and the liquid fertiliser in there. So that's actually not a bad little uh, tank. Obviously not very realistic having two different types of liquid in there, but the ability to have both stored in it is, uh, is quite nice. I do like that. So let's just have a look here if we can see about getting this filled up. And uh, then we can go off and start doing some spraying. And there we are, getting herbicide into the back of the, pla uh, back of the sprayer. So we'll fill this up, in fact we'll take all 2,000 litres out and uh, we'll see how far that goes in getting these crops all uh, all sprayed and getting all the weeds taken care of. So we'll go straight over the road and into the cornfield. Alright, we're getting everything all unfolded here. Now this is one of the sections that doesn't actually have any weeds in it but of course with the sea and spray technology we do have here on the sprayer it won't matter if we run over it anyhow. I am just mindful of how much further that boom is going to wind out there on the left hand side so we're just going to move ourselves away from the edge of the field just a little bit more and there we go now which one is the uh, up and down on the back there we go get that lowered down so it's a little bit closer to the ground we don't get any unnecessary spray drift and we should be able to turn that on power it up get the pump running and as we run along here should start to see some spray coming out there we go as we hit the weeds so that's looking perfect. I am going to set myself up on a GPS course along here and start running around this field and get this all done. So we'll turn that on, have ourselves a little A point there. Make sure I'm running it pretty straight along the row. That looks pretty good to me. Set up the second point and we'll turn that on. Get our width set. We'll turn our lines up. That hasn't quite set and I know exactly why that is. It's a keybind conflict with another piece of software I have on my PC. So there we are, we'll do it the manual way through guidance steering and set our auto width at 117 foot. So there we are, we will uh, carry on, get into this field, race around here and then we'll be just jumping straight over into the oats over the other side. Alright, and there we are, we are all up and going, not chewing through too much herbicide or anything like that either. So, I think it's time for a montage, nothing beats a spraying montage here with this uh, good looking piece of machinery. So, we'll jump into that, we will uh, get through this field and then into the oats and we'll catch up with you when we're all done.
Running down the last little sliver here in the oat field, you can see the uh, little band of weeds there in front of us that we're going to get. This is where the sea and spray technology really comes into its own, where you've got an overlap either side of areas you've already sprayed and you're only applying spray exactly where you need to. So you can see we've used only just over a thousand litres of herbicide to cover this whole field, which uh, well, always runs all the way down to the trees down there where the uh, other side of the corn is. So not a bad not a bad effort there definitely makes it worthwhile rather than applying blanket herbicide over everything so there we go we'll uh, get that turned off we'll start folding up the booms and we're going to head on down to the other field and uh, go and get that one done very quickly that won't take very long we'll be a little bit of a challenge because it has a couple of narrow little spots in it but uh won't take us very very long at all and uh, that will just about be us done for the tasks we have on hand at the moment i have one other thing we're going to do once we've finished doing the uh doing the spraying and it's to do with the alfalfa field so uh we'll go over and do the spraying and then we'll have a little bit of a chat about what we're going to go and do there so we made it down here to the other field we'll get things unfolded now i'm hoping if we run hard against the fence for the cattle pasture with the boom raised we can get through that gap otherwise it's going to be just a little bit of a tight fit but we'll uh, do this big patch of weeds here on the right get rid of those and then we will head on down through and on the way down that way. Now I hadn't actually recalled what the crop was up in this one, but we've got corn up here. I wasn't sure if it was corn or oats, we'd planted up this way. So a little bit more uh, feed for the animals coming up out of this field. Let's just get that turned on. We'll head on over this way, do this little patch in the corner. Then we'll uh, spin around, make sure we just get all of this area done in one go. Hopefully I'm not going to hit that tree. Not quite, it was close. We will just quickly whip over here. All right, and there we go. Now, fingers crossed, lift that all back up to its full height, and uh, we should be able to, I think, in fact, I think we can lift the boom up like that if we need to, but uh, we should be able to run through here without any dramas. And in fact, we can even spray the few little weeds that we've got in there while we're doing it. So that's worked out perfectly. There we go, get that load back down, drop the overall boom all the way down, and we're just gonna race around and get this field done very, very quickly. So uh, we'll see when we're finished. Like I said, it wasn't going to take very long to get that one done at all. There we are, all finished. So uh, we've, what, used 200 litres of herbicide or so in there? Not much. So we'll get this all folded up and uh, we will head on back to the yard. Now I think this has deserved a little bit of a clean off. It's done a power of work and we do want to make sure we get all that herbicide off the booms around the nozzles and everything like that. Don't want any residue left on. I don't know when we'll have this out again doing spraying. We certainly don't need it in any of our crops at this stage so it could be a wee while before we need it again so we'll make sure we give it a good clean off around both sides we will go around the other side and give it a wash as well uh, but we're going to get it parked up in the shed and uh, then we're going to jump in to the new holland the t8 we're going to cruise on down to the alfalfa field and we're going to stop in at the uh, dealer on the way past we've got a piece of equipment we are going to borrow we've leased that off them and uh, going to use that for just a little while down in that field and uh, well all will become a little bit more obvious once we get down there we're just pulling in down here to the alfalfa field and we have got ourselves a mulcher we have gone and leased from the dealer just to do this field twelve hundred dollars or so i think it might have been a little bit more uh thirteen hundred possibly but we've gone for this one the reason we're running it on the t8 is the only tractor that has the horsepower to run it it does require 200 horsepower to get in there uh it does unfold and we'll put that down and turn it on but the reason we are mulching now if you have a look in here as that unfolds our field state at the moment is showing up as harvested, so we're not regrowing it. We know that, we've mown it, it was uh, turned into hay and we've got alfalfa hay off the field. But it is still showing up as harvested. Now, I'm going to turn on the mulcher, get that lowered down, just zoom out a little bit more. You can see, as we run over it, we're getting rid of the uh, cut texture and going back to just the plain green. Now we'll just run along the edge of the field here just a little bit further. Just stop there. Now if we hop into the map here again, you can see where we've just mulched has turned green and that green relates to growing turn it off there you go it's gone 
So anyone who has interested, and I know this is a comment I've had on a couple of videos, and uh, is using alfalfa, and I think this is, applies across the board, whether it's on this map, UMRV, or anywhere else, uh, you do need to mulch your alfalfa to get another growth stage off. It's a little bit different to grass, but uh, by doing this, we are going to get the alfalfa growing again. We are going to be able to get it mown and cut into another round of hay silage, or whatever we choose to do with it. So uh, there you go, hopefully that might have helped some of you uh, with some of the questions I've had around the alfalfa and whether we were going to see it grow again. So we're just going to carry on, uh, we do have plenty of horsepower but it's still a pretty slow task at 7 miles per hour. We'll get around the field and get through this as quick as we can. So we'll uh, jump into a little bit of a time lapse doing it and we'll catch you in just a little while. Well there we go, that is a job well done. Got a couple of little spots we need to go around and tidy up, which we missed. Uh, it doesn't have a very good turning circle on this New Holland. I don't know whether it's the tracks or just the size of the tractor. Uh, but it does take up a little bit of space when I was trying to turn on a narrow row. It wasn't working out too well. So we'll just shoot around very quickly and get these last couple of little pieces all tidied up. Uh, I'm not sure, I think there might have been one or two down the other end of the field. We'll go and check out those two. But uh, before we do that, we'll just jump into the map and just take a quick look. And there you go, you can now see that pretty much our whole field, apart from those couple of stripes we need to do, is growing and we will have some more alfalfa sometime soon. And just looking here at the growth calendar, it is harvestable up till the end of July. We're currently in the beginning of May, so whether we get enough growth in the crop to be able to have a second round of harvesting, I'm not quite sure. We'll just have to wait and see what happens with that, but we'll certainly be keeping an eye on it around the end of July to see whether we can go and get another cut off it, because that would be good to get some more hay taken off that and uh, use that to bulk up our feed which is really what we're using the hay for uh, the silage, grass silage and maize silage are the two fundamentals that we need at the moment so anyhow I'm just going to tidy these back up and we'll be back over to the yard we'll drop this uh, back off at the dealer like I said it was just leased and uh, we may have to look at buying something like this in the future but for now we will uh, just make do with demoing this we might even have a look and see if there is some other options out there that we could add into the game and uh, use as well. I do need know when you look under the mulches there is a couple of rollers as well which I haven't tested out but uh, it'll be interesting to know whether they do all exactly the same thing as the mulch does but uh, look one little spot down here we'll, we'll, we've come all this way we'll get it tidied up. So there we are all done we'll get things picked up turned off and head back over to the yard. 
So back here at the yard we're just going to go and get the tractor put away over here in the shed and I think that will pretty much do us for this episode. I don't think we've got much else we can do. We do probably have enough milk we could go and sell uh, but I'm kind of mindful of the fact that we are actually going to have to skip forward time a little bit over the next uh, or between now and the next episode to get towards something uh, productive that we can do. I'm not sure whether we are going to have our grass over the back here ready to go. We'll just go and take a look at that very quickly. Whether this grass field is going to be ready to harvest, I know it says it's ready at the moment, but uh, again, I have checked and it does have a few more growth stages on it to go yet. And in fact, I think the fully grown grass is probably just about as tall as these weeds here once it is done. So we're going to leave that to get to its most optimum yield, but I'm not sure whether that will happen before the corn is ready to be made into silage or before the oats are ready to harvest. So we'll just have to play that a little bit by ear. But like I said, I'm mindful of the fact that we're going to have to do a little bit of stock food and uh, milk selling as we go through. And we might do that, might record it, and just have that at the intro to the very next episode so you can see a little bit of our progression in our income. Because I imagine if we can sell a couple more tanker loads of milk over the coming next month or two, then uh, we're going to be looking at pretty good in terms of how much money we have in our bank account. Particularly when you have a look here in the map, the corn is uh, at a very early stage of growth. Oats are a little bit more advanced, and like I said, the grass is showing as harvestable, but uh, it certainly does have some more growing and some more profit to be made into there. The other thing, as I was looking in our time-saving stock check, is come July, we're going to have to make sure we can sell all of those soybeans and realise that income. And like I said, we've got another good amount of milk sitting there, ready to be sold. So as for the calendar, oats aren't ready until July. And our corn certainly isn't mature until October, but of course we can chop that a little bit earlier here in the August-September windows. So we've got a few months to jump through before we will be into anything more meaningful here on the farm. So stay tuned for what the next episode might bring, because it uh, could see some quite interesting and exciting developments here for the Canadian cattle farmer. But that is enough from me for this episode. Hope you have enjoyed it. Hope the uh, little demo there of the alfalfa and having to mulch that will help some of you out in your own playthroughs in your own series and understanding what the best way to uh, get your alfalfa regrowing like it is grass is to do is to get down there and mulch it which is a little bit of a learning for me but pleased that I've figured that out and uh, hopefully I can help you along the way. As always thank you all very much for watching hope you have enjoyed that and I'll catch you in the next one.
Hello everyone, Argzy here. Welcome back to Chilliwack, British Columbia for another episode of the Canadian Cattle Farmer. We have skipped forward about a month. We started out uh, earlier in May, went out into June, and you would have seen from that intro that we have made quite a substantial amount of money off milk, $149,317 to be precise from those four different milk deliveries that we made. We've kept the animals fed and uh, just really maintained the farm for a couple of months while there wasn't much going on except for our crops growing. And the first crop to get to full height and full maturity here is the grass. And uh, I'm just going to walk out in here because I reckon it's not far off waist high. That is some tall, tall grass. And we've got a lot of it in there. Potential harvest quantity, 384,000 litres in the one field and 259 in the other. So we've got, uh, what's that, close to well, over 700,000? About 650,000 litres? About that. Of, uh, of grass to get out of here so it is going to keep us very busy now the plan is to get this mowed and windrowed and uh, ready to get picked up I don't know if we'll go any further than that uh, but we'll see we need to go and pick up the grass pick up header from over at the far farm that is where that is so we'll need to take the uh, take the class forage harvester over there and get that picked up and brought back here we've also got the other truck the other uh, max semi which is over there and also both our silage trailers if i remember correctly are over there as well so we're gonna have to take the other semi over and pick those up we're not going to use the uh the smaller forage wagons we're going to go for the big trucks and put some silage into these bunkers we've also got the uh, wheel loader over here as well which we're going to try and use for some leveling and compaction and uh, end up with some decent amount of silage in there. I was considering bagging it and uh, buying a bagger, but we're not going to worry about that just now. We might save that for possibly, uh, well, it won't be the maize silage, but possibly for something else. We'll see how we go. But uh, for now, we've got these bunkers. We might as well make some use of them. So that is pretty much our plan. Just on another note, our uh, silage bales have fully fermented, so we do have our own silage here. So we've got a little bit in, sto in stock. Uh, and the other thing as well, I am going to retweak the Maze Plus for the animals. I think I've made it a little bit too easy. Uh, the feed requirements over the last month or two hasn't been as high as it had been. Uh, and it's probably been a little bit less than I probably think is fair for the amount of milk we're producing. So I do want to bump that up just a little bit more. I don't mind doing a truckload a day down into each animal pen, but uh, it was a little bit more than that previously. So we'll tweak that and... Uh, get back to uh, supplying some more feed to those animals but anyhow first things first let's go and grab the swather it's going to take a while this field is quite large so we're going to go get that set up and we will jump into some mowing uh, and I might while we're doing that I might set up a course play course with the windrower once we've got going for a little bit got through some of the field and actually start windrowing behind us because we can use that course play course for windrowing for our forage harvest if we choose to use course play uh, it might be an option we might jump in, in between course play for the forage harvester and maybe running auto drive for the two trucks and just see how we can get on with that anyhow let's jump into the swather here we will get this all fired up and go and head off into the field and start getting some grass mine all right well, we've got the swather over here we'll get this turned on i did bring the john deere with the winra over as well uh, the idea behind that is we could get some of this field opened up get some of the grass mowed and then once we've done that we can set course play going because I've actually already pre-created a course play course for that so when it's ready once we've got through enough of this we can uh, just jump straight in and get that up and going but I'm going to turn my GPS on here uh, in fact I'm not going to because uh, I have my keybind issue again all right there we go so that's a little bit frustrating uh, this app that I have which is the voice AI I used for my recent UMRV episode has a um, shortcut in it which you can't actually delete you can delete it and it disappears but then you uh, reboot your computer and it comes back anyhow that is uh, another story so we are set up now that is our GPS up and moving great to be able to mow through this quite fast because uh, I think that will offset the time it's going to take to do the field because it is like I said it's quite a large field it's going to take a wee while but at least we mow at a decent speed so we've got this all set up and going I don't think we need to do anything else at this stage we're just going to crack into this get a few passes done get uh, around the field a few times get some up and down rows started and then we can uh, get the windrow up and going as well now the windrow course that I've pre-created is set up to run in the middle of the field first and come back and do the headlands a little bit later uh, which won't be a problem because uh, we'll just have to make sure we get enough of the field done and uh, then we'll be all good to go so let's crack into it we'll jump into a little bit of a time lapse here it could be quite a bit of a time lapse actually when I look back across that field it is uh, quite significant so we'll see how we go but we're gonna just carry on and get this mowing done so uh, we'll catch up with you for an update very soon
reckon we're about halfway across the field. It's taken a quite a while to get to where we are, uh, but it's going pretty well. It's nice and fast, a little bit hard and uh, to align on the ends, just uh, quite nimble and quite uh, a responsive little piece of kit, which is good. It's nice. It's nice being able to turn around right on the ends like we do, uh, but we did miss a bit of few little bits and pieces here and there but we'll go around and pick those up in fact what we're going to do we're going to go over and uh, start the wind rower up now so we'll just uh, head across the end here and cut these uh, cut a little, couple of little bits but hopefully we've got enough mowing that as the wind rower goes through we'll be able to carry on mowing and not get too far uh, or not get caught up to that's the biggest concern is the wind rower is going to catch up to us but I think we should be good there now when I set the course up it is going to start down the other end um, but it is starting on the up and down rows just to remind you that uh, we'll do the headlands last. So we'll get this uh, just parked here for a second. In fact, we'll go behind the uh, behind the windrow just to make sure we don't get in the way. Let me get things cranked up. Get our course plate turned on, and we want to go to our first waypoint. We'll press play and uh, see that it's going to get down there. Unfortunately, it does show up that it's working as a leveller. Um, I'm assuming that's because it's got the bucket on the front, but it did do a 9 meter wide course with course play for uh, what we're doing. So we'll go down and make sure that it goes, goes and starts where it's meant to and does what it's meant to. All right, moment of truth. It looks promising. The wind row is unfolding again and uh, we're getting turned around. Remember, I had three headlands set up on this. So there we go. We are getting it back up and wind rowing and should head down in pretty much parallel line with the uh, mower. And there we go. All right, that's going to work out pretty well. Some uh, some of these rows merged into one. I'm not sure how good a job it's going to do, whether we're going to end up with uh, that many less rows, but it's all doing exactly what it's meant to do. So we're going to leave them going. They're actually going at about the same pace as us, which actually worries me that they're going to cover the ground a lot quicker than I thought. So we'll jump back into the swather when we get down the end here and uh, go and carry on mowing. All right, back up and running. Now I was thinking about it. If we're four, four and a half metres wide, uh, then we should be okay to be ahead because we're covering half the width but we're doing it at the same speed and we've already done half the field so it should work out that we'll be finished at roughly the same time bearing in mind they don't, haven't done headlands yet so uh, it won't be far off being pretty close to finish at the same time so we're just going to carry on here we'll let everything do its thing and we'll get this field finished so we've finally made it to the end of the field that has taken uh, over an hour actual in real time so it's been a bit of an effort uh, the wind row you can see down there they've just made it past the corner of the bins so just heading in to this part of the field and getting this done so we've managed to keep a decent distance in front of them which is good I was worried as they were working across that we were going to get a little bit close but uh, that hasn't happened just cut this little bit of grass here however there has been another development I was while I've been doing this, I've been thinking, right, we'll go over, grab the trucks, get the uh, forage header and everything like that for the uh, forage harvest, the grass pickup, and get into that. But I was just looking, and we'll just pause here. I was looking at time-saving stock check. Now, I've been basing our soybeans here, $1,422 max price in July. I've just gone higher, $1,423. So we've actually, we're actually at our peak, according to uh, time-saving stock check. So I think what we're going to do, we are going to go and get the truck set up with the uh, with the trailers on and we're going to stay, take all of our soybeans down to the train station. The best sell point is still Alberta so we're going to have to put them on the train and send them down there and uh, get that done. But first we'll give this a wash off before we put it away in the shed. Alright we've got our truck over here, we're just uh, getting it underneath the bins, getting it loaded up but we're also... Uh, creating an order drive course here we didn't have one to get in underneath the or over the uh, dump point or underneath the uh, refill auger there so we'll do this and we'll be able to hopefully get the truck full and then run it on down to the train station and get the uh, soybeans dumped out and then we can just set this up on a rotation to get everything all moved from here down to the trains so there we are, we've got our course started now. There is already one for the trains, so we're just going to go to here. We want yard silo as our fill point. We're going to go dump this at the trains. If we can just find that railroad silo north, and we want to go in, and we have soybeans. So if we do all of that, click on the right one there. There it is. We're just going to turn that off and press play. Hopefully, we'll be able to ride with this down to the trains. 
and uh, see how it goes. There is the Winrart still doing its thing, which is good. And what I'm not quite sure of is whether we have a course that will turn left on the way out of our drive, uh, or whether it's going to do a big loop. We're also getting very close to that bin fan. In fact, might have just clipped it, so we might have to just tweak that auto drive course just a touch. There we are, we'll just follow the truck on its way out, make sure it can get out onto the road and head on down to the uh, dump point. Well, we're turning left, which is a good thing. Uh, we just had a little bit of an accident with a car going past. It uh, clipped us as we were about to pull out. There we are, that does mean, I hope, that we're going to head on down this way and head to the uh, railway yards. It's not too far actually over there, you can see the top of the building just on the other side. And uh, look at that windrow, that is a race through the fields. Should tidy things up as it goes around the headlands and then we'll be able to get back and start picking that up with the forage harvester. Alright, well we've made it down here and the truck is heading in to the unload point, which is perfect. Now, we just have to make sure that it's going to uh, start dumping. It's getting a little bit caught and struggling just on coming up in here. Is that something to do with the geometry of the area? That is not looking too good. It's not the trailer caught on here, I think. The truck is still pulling. There we go. It got up and over. It was not ideal. But there we go, and we are unloading soybeans. So that has worked, but uh, not quite the way I thought it would. That's okay. As long as it gets in there and gets everything unloaded, I'm not going to complain. And then we are all four hoppers empty and moving back, heading back towards the yard. So hopefully they're going to go and start another lap and they'll be back here soon. There you go, you can see the uh, wheels really lifting off the ground quite a bit there as it was uh, dealing with the transition in and out of the unload point. So we'll leave them here to do this. Uh, we're going to head back over to the yard. We're going to go and sort out this forage harvester, get the grass pickup header on it, and go and bring the silage trailers back over. Just checking in on the wind rower, started on the headland passes, so that's good. It is tidying up most of them. Must have the width just a little bit off. There's some rows there where it hasn't quite got exactly the right amount. But that's fine, we'll be able to come through and tidy that up a little bit later with the uh, with the forage harvester. Once we're all done, we'll be able to drive in and sort that all out. But by and large, it's working, it's doing a reasonable job here for us. And we'll be able to get in and start loading up grass and getting some silage made, which would be great. This is going to be a big, big improvement on the uh, situation we've had for our silage. So we've grabbed the gooseneck trailer, put it onto the back of the pickup and we are going to head on over to the other farm and go and grab that pickup header and we'll get the other truck while it's over there, use a worker to bring that back on auto drive. But we're just waiting here right now because the uh, truck is coming in, ready to come and get some more soybeans and run those down to the train depot. I'll be intrigued to see if that price will go any higher, 14 to 3 I think it was at the moment, uh, but that has not worked very well. That course has not negotiated in there at all and it uh, looks like we're stuck on the fence. I wonder if it got a shunt from the vehicle behind or whether that's just the way it is. Looks like it might just be the way it is. Not to worry, we will fix that and get them going again. Alright, there we go. Things are back underway with the truck. So it looks like they've opened the covers and going to head on in there and get things uh, loaded up again, which is great. I'm looking forward to the income from this. I think we've got about $450,000 worth of uh, with the soybeans that will be sold soon, so that is going to be a huge boost to paying off some of our debt and uh, being able to further develop the farm. Well, we've made it over here to the other yard and just sent the truck off there. It's got one of the silage trailers on. Of course, we've still got the uh, silage boss trailer here that we need to come down and pick up. But, of course, the other truck is currently really busy hauling soybeans, so we'll have to come back and get that a little bit later. But we've also got the trailer over here and we've got the grass pickup header for the forage harvester. That's all loaded up strap down and uh, we're going to head back on over to the farm and can get this offloaded everything else is just moving i think the wind row is just about finished in fact it wouldn't surprise me if it's finished by the time we get back and otherwise the other trucks just uh, hauling soybeans still so we have got things moving but i'm looking forward to getting into that grass field with the forage harvester and making a start on that and getting things set up and going all right well we're back here with the pickup header it looks like and actually i know because we got the notification as we were driving along the wind row has finished so, uh, sitting over there in the corner uh, silage truck is back here as well so that is a good timing it means we can get started here pretty much straight away in the silage and uh figure out how we're going to do that now i've got a few ideas and we're just going to have a little bit of a chat about how i'm planning to tackle this we're not going to get it all done in this episode and in fact i think we're probably just going to get set up with the 
forage harvester and uh, trying to set some of the other things up in the, in the next one but I do want to make sure things are going to work out for us so we're just going to park that there get it turned off we will come and unstrap this I'm hoping we can get up with high enough with the uh, forage harvester to unload that otherwise we might have to get in here with the forks on one of the tractors so we'll get the uh, get the windrow out of the way now we're going to put the grass into this first bunker here uh, we've got the trailers in the other one there so we'll just use this one here for now what I'm planning on doing is using the course play course we had for the windrow set the forage harvester up on that and then set the trucks up on auto drive and use the course play for the uh, wheel loader to compact the silage so hopefully everything will run pretty much automatically but I'm not going to set all that up quite today uh, we're just going to set up the forage harvester we'll drive the truck for a load and just make sure everything is working and then we'll concentrate on getting all of that automation and everything set up next time so we'll just get this moved out of the way and go and park it now just while we're doing this talking about the storage sheds there by GTX uh, I'm playing this I recorded half this episode before patch 1.9 and the other half afterwards I do have the updated version of the storage shed so if uh, if you're using those make sure you grab the patch from GTX the update and get that installed before you open your game and resave it otherwise you'll lose the contents of the shed uh, so that was nice it was pretty impressive how quickly that update was pushed through both by GTX and by the Giants QA team so pretty impressive to see. Now the other quick thing I was going to point out earlier which I completely overlooked when we were talking about other things with bales and whatnot. I can't use our alfalfa hay so we'll just come around here and have a quick look. I'm going to stand next to one of these bales. It's coming up as our alfalfa hay windrow. Now I'm just going to go down here to our forage mixer. If I come and stand next to this and press Y. No, it's not hooked up to anything. Uh, when it's hooked up to something you'll see that when we're trying to make a mix it will only use alfalfa hay not alfalfa hay windrow. So the way that that alfalfa is being identified by the forage mixer isn't compatible. So what I'm going to do and I've had a quick look at the maths and we'll just take a quick look. These bales are four and a half thousand litres each. Now down the bottom here you can see our alfalfa hay windrow $49 per thousand litres so four and a half times that works out about $225. Now in the shop we can come in and buy a bale, $216. So pretty much exactly the same price. This is our alfalfa hay and I have bought one to test it uh, and there it shows you 4,500 litres. So we're pretty much replacing like for like. So we're going to go through, sell those and we'll come in and buy the equivalent amount here out of the shop and we'll be no better or worse off. Uh, but that's just a little thing to be mindful of. It seems to be, when you're looking in here, we've got our alfalfa hay Winrow, alfalfa winrow, uh, but if we scroll up a little bit further, we've got alfalfa hay and alfalfa silage up here. So there seems to be a little bit of a disconnect uh, with what's happened there. It may be I needed to tet it more uh, to get it made into hay. I might have to have a look a, bit, a little bit more of a look into the dealings of Maze Plus, but uh, that was just something else I was going to point out while we were at it here. So let's go and grab the uh, forage harvester and we're going to get things set up and moving in here. So there we are, we've got the pickup on the front here of the forage harvester now, so that is all good to go. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to set it up here on one of the outside rows. We'll uh, just set it to go from nearest waypoint, try and get these headlands all knocked off. In fact, if we come in here, if we start over here at one of these uh, inside, inside ones, it should be about where we started, and you can see where the uh, wind rider there has changed direction. So I think if we turn around right about here and tell it to get started, at this point on nearest windrow we should be pretty good to go so we get this all unfolded turned on now I've already set up the course so we're just going to go for nearest waypoint I'll just turn that on you can see our course there so we are hopefully we're going to try and go off that one hopefully from about here now I'm just looking at that hopefully it looks like we might almost have a little bit of an offset with that windrow so hopefully we're going to get this picked up we might have to play around with the tool offset just a little bit for this to get it to align properly because the wind row I think is a little bit uneven uh, so we'll just have to figure out if that's going to be a problem but we'll turn that off I'm going to press start on nearest wind uh, nearest waypoint because it won't go too far without having a truck to throw the forage into but that's looking pretty good I'm just trying to figure out if we offset it which way we would do that we'll try that one I think a positive offset uh, but let's go and grab the truck and we'll see what happens when we pull up next to it. So, moment of truth, let's see what happens when we get up here beside the forage harvester. Well, it's detected the trailer, which is positive, and it is off and running. Now, I'm not quite sure 
how that offset's looking. A little bit off, I think we might jump over and see about changing it back the other way, see if that will fix it. Uh, I can already see the improvement, so we've gone half a metre the other way and that is looking much more aligned. Uh, so that is looking impressive, I'm happy with that. We're just going to run here along beside. Oh, we got too close, it's lost its connection to the trailer. That. We'll sit in behind it a little bit, seems to be happier when we're positioned right about there. So let's just cruise along here. We will set our cruise control up to match that. And uh, then we we'll, should be able to just get around this field and see how much uh, see how much forage we can get up out of this field in just a short amount of time. Well, here we are. That is a full load, 65,000 litres, and we haven't even made it the whole way around the field. So that bodes well for getting a decent chunk of silage here off this field. What are you? I think we estimated six or seven hundred thousand when we were starting out when we looked at what the capacity of the field was i must admit i was looking at the size of the windrows and thinking gosh i don't know if we're going to make it to that uh, but this certainly does fill me with confidence that we might be able to uh, achieve that now i haven't put any uh additive into the silage harvester the forage harvester but we do have some so maybe i should consider doing that and uh, even boosting our yield by another few percent using that which could come in handy but uh, that's going to go really well particularly when we go and get the other trailer once the uh, other trucks finish running around doing the soybeans but uh, for now one trailer and 65,000 litres at a time is looking pretty impressive so we're just going to pull in here through the uh, through the bunker now I'm going to have to think about whether when we set up an auto drive course for this whether we drive through or whether we back in I'm thinking backing in might be a little bit better because driving across it might get stuck on these piles because I think you can already see it there that's going to be a pretty big stack of silage that we're going to end up in here going to fill up pretty quick too just looking at that so we might be better off backing in and letting the wheel loader do its thing with getting it pushed in and compacted and everything like that otherwise the trucks are going to get stuck very very quickly but there we go 65,000 litres put in there that's a, that's a pretty impressive amount of silage already. Look at that. Pretty happy with that. That's going to go and give us a good amount of uh, animal feed. Well, I think that is a pretty decent start on our first foray into grass silage here on Chilliwack for the Canadian cattle farmer. I'm looking forward to seeing exactly how much silage we make off this field. It's, uh, it's looking like it could be quite a decent size and decent chunk that we're going to end up with which gives us potential to increase our uh, cattle herd uh, of course we do have breeding coming up soon we have got some animals that are very close to reproducing and obviously in the long run well hopefully the not too much longer run we do want to get the uh, feedlot all set up and built here on the back of this field so uh, lots and lots still to do here but i'm going to wrap things up for this episode at the start of the silage harvest which uh, bodes well for having a great harvest to look forward to for the next episode so Hope you've enjoyed that episode. As always, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Hello everyone, Arxie here. Welcome back to Chilliwack, British Columbia for another episode of the Canadian Cattle Farmer. We have just departed the Gorville Demo Day where uh, we managed to score ourselves quite a good swag of extra bales. Who's going to go first here? Oh, that worked out alright. Uh, yes, out of our demo there we supplied the contract that we had on the field and we've got 34 bales here on the back extra plus there's still another four bales down there which we'll have to go back and remember to, remember to collect at some stage. So not bad deal to get that plus the 21 grand that we got it and to try out some nice new equipment so if you didn't see that in the live stream go back and check it out it was a lot of fun experimenting and just seeing how all the different bits of equipment worked but we've moved on from that and our main focus today is to get back into getting all the grass picked up off the field and put into the bunker and convert it into silage so we're going to head back uh, this truck needs to go over and pick up the other silage trailer and then we need to go through and set up all the auto drive and everything like that we need for the two trucks to pick up uh, from the forage harvester, dump into the pit and then we're going to use the wheel loader to get the uh, pit compacted. Well at least that is the plan, we're going to try that out and see if it will work. So we're just going to motor on back down here, we're not too far away from the farm now, head on, get these uh, bales unloaded somewhere convenient and then we will uh, be jumping in to the forage harvester and uh, all the bits and pieces that go with that, so we'll catch you when we're over there.
So we made it back here to the yard, didn't really have anywhere in amongst this mess of bales to put those ones so we've just backed the trailer there into the shed and we'll leave that there for now. I do need to still sort out those alfalfa bales as I explained in the last episode, we had a little bit of an issue with those with uh, not working with Maze Plus so we'll go and get that sorted out but we're just going to send a worker over on auto drive to go and pick up the other trailer and I'll go and do that and be back and we'll go and get everything else set up and running at this end to uh, hopefully make this forage harvest go as well as possible. So first things first we're going to set up the truck course here so I'm just going to hit record what I'm going to do is add this onto the existing auto drive course and try and make it as least uh, extra work as we can and try and add not too many extra points so this one is going to be how the trucks will get into the field so we'll have to set up a little bit of a uh, field point here so I think right about there should just about do us we'll just put a tag on that and I think this is, uh, is it 148 I think 148 call this uh, weight point and then if we carry on we'll go and connect this back up over here to the course again so it can carry on driving out and then we need to go and create a reverse course into the bunker now I'm going to reverse it from the other side because I think that is going to give us the best amount of space to be able to back into we can nose up into the part between the two sheds and uh, make that work hopefully for getting this backed in so we'll just uh, pull around here of course the truck would normally follow this course and then when we get to right just before it starts really turning off to the left We'll try and get this going up as straight as we can. So we'll hit record again, connect those two points up. Let's go and head on up this way. Nosed up in here next to the shed and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get to a point where we can get a decent reverse into the bunker. Give ourselves lots and lots of space to straighten the trucks up. I think one more point. We get one more point for the end. There we go, it's probably a little bit too far, we can adjust that afterwards. Now, we just want to gently back this back into the right position to get into the uh, bunker. And once we've done that, then we can nose out forward and reconnect with this course again, because that will take us all the way around to the course at the uh, main entry, and we can head back off and run everything that way. So, get into about here, go into the pit a little bit. Now I'm going to have to come back and do the label a little bit later. We'll do that so it's right on the end there. Let's drive forward. Swing this one out and we'll get hooked up here to one of these points. In fact, going straight, straight ahead from here. Just bring that up there to there. Should be pretty good. Now, just go down and double check that we've got a left turn up here on the end because I don't think we do connect the course up at that point. So we do need to make sure we can turn left at the end here. Just get the notification to say that the worker has made it over to the other yard, so we'll have to go and hook the trailer up for them. But uh, I think if we just start this little point here, one and two, and turn this onto this course, and that should connect everything back up to get into the field. Alright, so there we go. So the last thing, stop the record, is we need to go and add that weight point over in the bunker. So we'll go over and do that, and we should be able to just get this set up and start running. So we've got our tip point in there, bunker 01 tip. Now if I just uh, spin around here, we did adjust the end of the reverse course. I find if you take the two points close as possible, one for the last forward point and the first reverse point, as close as possible to the change in direction, it is much more efficient. So we've set this up here on the combine unload, which is uh, basically the same as what you do normally for a forage wagon. Uh, F148 weight is our weight point up here over in the field. And then we've got our bunker 01 tip point here in the bunker. So I'm just going to press play on that. Of course it's going to tell me there's no harvester found because we haven't set that up in the forage harvester. But uh, we can go over and do that while this gets around into position. So over here in the forager we've got that set up to F148 weight on auto drive now. So what we should see hopefully is that truck will get into the field. And it will eventually come over here now. I probably need to press play. It is moving already actually. If we press play on this, we're still stuck on nearest waypoint, which is where we finished off last time. We'll get this set up and going. Now, I had to have a tool offset, and I believe it was a negative tool offset of about a meter, so we'll get that back in there as well. And there we go, everything's up and running. Perfect. That's a good start. I'm pleased to uh, get that working successfully first time. So the big challenge now is going to be waiting here, riding along with the truck, and seeing if it will go and get dumped into the silo. 
or at least into the bunker. If that all works perfectly, uh, I'm going to be pretty happy. We've got the other truck is on its way back and it's already set up on the auto drive course. So all going to plan, if this all works, then uh, we will be all good to set up the uh, wheel loader to start doing some of the compacting. So we'll just ride along here and see what happens with the truck. moment of truth we've got a full truck load here we're just going to wait and see what happens when it tries to back here into the bump bunker a good start it's turning what looks to be in the right direction to get into the right spot and uh, we're just going to wait and see if it can get all the way back now i know the other truck is stuck at the gate probably stuck on the sign again at the main entry so we'll have to go and fix that which is a bit annoying it would have been great to see that in the background motoring into the field and going and starting on uh, getting the chopper up and going again but let's just get this all sorted out first because we don't want to get too much chaff in here and then find that the wheel loader spends a lot of time working into the pit and struggling to get it compacted so let's just keep on watching I feel like we're uh, lining up pretty well here which is a very very good sign very uh, good and patient and steady driver I feel like we probably could have made the backing course just a little bit shorter but we have given them the best chance of success uh, they are getting a little bit over to the side though it's a little bit of a worry last minute adjustments are they going to get into the into the bunker they are going to get into there last minute adjustments to get in on the side and there we go they are dumping now i'm not sure actually if they're going to be able to dump it all out they're not because they're not far enough back now i think we might have to put the uh dump point right at the very back of the bunker to get them to push that in all the way they can Otherwise we're going to be doing a lot of work with the wheel loader to push that all up into the pit properly as we see it dumping out there. So time for an adjustment, time to get the other truck up and running. Alright course adjusted, truck is on its way back out, we've pushed the tip point further back into the bunker. We do have this little bit of chaff here we need to deal with but uh, it's actually going to fill up pretty quick looking at this so hopefully it will work out just fine. I did mention last time I did contemplate doing a drive through course but I was just worried it was going to get stuck so let's leave that up and running we'll go and get the other truck unhooked and up and going as well and then we'll be able to come and grab the wheel loader and we'll see about getting the compaction course set up in the bunker. All right well we've set up a park position which is just over to the right hand side of the uh, pit which should be out of the way now it's a bit hard on the map to pick up exactly where we're looking for the silo now I think I think I've got the line in the right place. You can see the double line. In fact, you can see a blue line there for the other silo. So I'm pretty sure we've got this in the right spot. So if we just go back, I'm going to press play. We'll see what happens here. I've set the width of five meters, which is how wide the uh, front of the wheel loader is. I'm just waiting to see what's going to happen here. Can't rotate my camera. Well, I'm just looking. We've completely lost all of our HUD and everything like that and down the bottom. Uh, if I hop out, I can't move, can't use my controller, can't use my keyboard and mouse, uh, it doesn't bode very well for what's going on in here, in fact that was all stuck on a big slope as well, everything's just going haywire. Well unfortunately it looks like we might have suffered some catastrophic system failures with the uh, horse plate trying to do the bunker silo with the uh, wheel loader here so we are resigning ourselves to potentially having to do it ourselves uh, which is not quite what I had in mind but if we can get it compacted here we will do it anyhow so I'm just going to have a bit of a play around the uh, trucks are running all right in the background I'm not quite sure what's happened here as they're trying to change direction but hopefully that will work uh, of course using a fork doesn't push quite as well as a blade does so maybe we should look at getting something with a uh, pusher on it maybe something we could hook up onto the gosh even the uh, the big versatile wouldn't go too bad in here or the the T8 with the blade on would actually be quite a good option probably for doing some compacting. But let's see if we can spend a little bit of time here with the wheel loader and uh, try and achieve what it is we are trying to do. Could even get a pusher for the uh, for this rather than trying to use this fork. Uh, it might be a little bit better option as well. Looks like the uh, truck and forage harvest have 
kind of figured out their differences there. Unfortunately it's on the wrong side. Uh, the truck's on the inside, it would be better if it's on the outside, but they seem to get to a point like that, the truck will back up, forage harvester will carry on, and then everything will be back to playing nice together, so uh, hopefully that will sort itself out, and it does look like it has. So I'm just going to play around here for a little bit more. I do want to get some uh, silage additive into the forager. Uh, we haven't done that yet, and I do have some around somewhere. I can't remember whether it's on the back of the pickup still or uh, where it is was floating around we did have a pallet I think I might have put it in the uh, might have put it in the shed so anyhow that is what's happening that is the plan that is the issues and uh, we're just going to carry on and try and get this done executive decision made we've just gone and ordered ourselves a pusher so we can put that on the front of the wheel loader so we're going to shoot up to the shop very quickly get that picked up on the back of the trailer here and bring that back because I think that is going to work much better than the forks are uh, could even be the reason that the course plate wasn't going to work very well is because we had the forks rather than a blade or something which would push it up so let's give that a go we'll go down to the shop gonna get that picked up and uh, hopefully in the meantime nothing goes wrong we've got both trucks up and running so we could end up with quite a full pit depending how long this takes so there we are a blade all loaded up it is a four meter wide blade there is a five meter option but it is only a three point linkage it wouldn't go on the front of a wheel loader so we've got the four meter option which will uh, connect to the front of a wheel loader at the shop help us get that put onto the back of the trailer and we'll race back down to the farm it hasn't taken us too long so hopefully we're not going to run into too many issues with trucks i did actually think after we'd left i might have left the wheel loader in the way for a truck to escape out of the uh pit anyhow so we might have put our own blockage in the system but uh, let's head on back down and uh, see about getting that pit a little bit more tidied up because i think we're going to end up with a lot of grass in there that we need to keep on top of so we'll go and uh, see what we can do about that well, it looks like the truck managed to get into the pit and dumped out all right. And we're back here, we'll get this fork taken off the front of the wheel loader here. Get ourselves turned around, we've got the trailer park just over here. We'll get this uh, pusher hooked up on the front and go and see if that makes a difference to how we are able to tackle the... Uh, tackle getting this pit leveled out, hopefully. We can get that hooked on. There we are. Perfect. Get that unfolded. We'll go and take a little bit of a look at how this works just as we've got the next of the trucks coming in but that's all right we will get in here and just give it a little bit of a push just to see if this is going to be a better solution caught on the lip but it certainly is there we go look we can uh, push with a little bit more confidence previously we would have got stuck and had to stop and offload so that is I think going to be a much better solution for our silage than uh, what we were going to do Now we're going to have to uh, readjust the forager in a minute because of where the uh, end point is. It's doing the headlands first, which is actually the last thing the wind rod did. So we're going to have to go and adjust that and put it on the up and down rows. So we'll just get this out of the way. We'll let that truck get backed in. And while it's doing that, we're going to go and find where our uh, silage additive is and get that all ready to go and put into the forager. Well, that was uh, pretty clever. And she came and put it on the shelf. So we'll get that uh, put down, we'll get that carried out to the forager, we'll go and get it put in so uh, we can boost our yield as much as we can. Watch the truck there, it seems to be figuring its way back. I think this is the first time this truck has actually emptied out into the bunker, so uh, it looks like it's going just as well as the other one. Hopefully it backs in far enough and can get up some of the pit and uh, get that dumped as far back as possible. But it does look like my plan of uh, riding along lots with the trucks and the forage harvester might go out the window a little bit as we have to keep on top of the compaction. But I guess if we can do that and uh, do a decent amount of compaction, get on top of it to some extent, it won't be too bad and we'll be able to find some time to come out here and sit in the equipment and watch the work get done. But you can see the forager coming around the corner. Looks to be doing a pretty good job right now at the moment. And I can hear the truck is emptying out. Let's just go and have a look in the pit and see how it's going. Not too bad. This is going to be all towards the front, but we'll get that fixed and leveled out. So we should get a notification in just a second that the forager is finished. This is the end point, and I'll probably uh, fold everything up and stop. There we go, AI worker has completed their task, which is absolutely fine. It is what I expected. So we're just going to hop up into here. We'll go back over next to our additive, get that put into the forager. And then we'll be able to tell it to start going from first waypoint. I think park about there. There we are. It's going in. See how much of it we use. Probably half of it, maybe. I think it was about a 40 or 50 litre container. 
we go, 24 litres put in there. So now, if we set this to go at first waypoint, I think it runs all the way down the other end of the field. I believe the wind rise started all the way down the other end. So put that into there, still all loaded first waypoint. And uh, we'll press go. Let them run off and carry on working. They should take that truck along with them as well. So, we've got most of it up and running. As I'd hoped, just not the uh, compaction here, which is a little bit of a shame. It would have been nice to have that working, but it is what it is. We will get in and get started. And in fact, what are we at the moment? 10% compacted, 254,000 litres already in here, which is pretty impressive. I'm not sure what the truck is trying to do, whether they're trying to move over in the bunker so they can dump off on the other side. That'd be pretty clever if that is what they're trying to achieve. Let's just hop in, see how much they've got in there still. No, they're all empty, so they should be trying to get back on our course to uh, head back to the start of the field. I'm not quite sure what they're doing there. But anyhow, we'll leave them to it and we will go and start on the compaction once they're out of the way. Alright, time to get busy, time to get in here and get levelling, get this all pushed as far through the pit as we can and uh, get it all levelled out and compacted. Already got a decent amount of silage in there, we've only taken the uh, three headland passes off so I'm going to be pretty impressed with how much silage we end up with on this field. It's going to be uh, good to see. So we're just going to crack into a little bit of a time lapse, watch us do some of this, bouncing around in here, it's a bit rough but we are getting some silage pushed towards the back and uh, we'll work our way through. Get this is done and tidied up and hopefully ready before the next truck gets here. So sit back, relax, and we'll catch you in a few minutes. Well, 58% compacted, going down slightly as they add more grass in, and over 400,000 litres and be close to 450,000 by the time this truck has dumped that whole load in here. So we're getting quite close to a, well, it's getting pretty full, isn't it? And I was just thinking, I don't actually know the capacity on these uh, silos, and I can't remember if it told me in the build menu. We might just go and take a quick look. So we've got these 8 metre by 39 metre, but it doesn't actually tell us what the potential capacity or anything is in it so I guess we're just going to have to go until it's full we may have to think about moving the uh, <laughs> moving the forage wagons out of the side there and as you can see the truck has decided it's just going to dump it all on the ground so it's going to make our hard, our job just a little bit harder but that's all right we'll make do with this we'll get it pushed up and uh, we might have to be a little bit more mindful of the next load perhaps we might unload it manually just so we don't end up with this same little uh, conundrum well, we've just come for a ride along here in with the truck. We've got the other truck over there unloading. You can see the top of the uh, pit there. We've managed to get it stacked up quite a lot higher. We used the uh, silage fork to get that last load that was dumped there in front of us all loaded up and out of the way. So uh, this is all going pretty well. Now someone mentioned in the comments of the last video we've got a few rows of shame here, which we will go and tidy those up. At the end, uh, I'll jump into the forager and we will use the ourselves to drive along and the trucks to follow along next to us and hopefully get the rest of that all picked up but uh we're making some progress there's still a good chunk of grass left in this field 
Uh, I don't think... Oh, we would be probably halfway. In fact, I'd suggest, yeah. I'd say we're halfway, but we've got over half a million litres in the silo already, so uh, it's really, really filling up really quick. And uh, I probably do actually need to go and grab the tractors and move those wagons out of the way, because I'm pretty confident we're going to need to use the other bunker as well, unless we were to go and bail this or and wrap it, but uh, I think we'd like to keep it all as loose solid, so we will do that. We could probably actually put some in the um, in the harvest store as well, but mindful of the fact that we do want to use that for our maize silage come next uh, next harvest, which is the maize silage all over the road, so there are plenty of things to ponder still. But anyhow, let's let these guys carry on. Uh, I think the truck is emptying out over there, so we will let them get things out of the way and uh, we'll carry on going. A little bit nervous there as you see the uh, forest and the silage in the pit just disappeared as we got out of uh, render distance which is a little bit disconcerting but I'm pretty sure it'll all still be there. Well like I said I knew that the uh, chaff was still in here but there we go there is evidence and I reckon this bunker is pretty much full. I could probably squeeze a little bit extra in the ends but we're not going to get everything that's left out there in the field into this one bunker so we might as well start getting the trucks to dump into the second pit and uh, we'll make some more silage in there I think instead of changing the auto drive course and getting the trucks to go in there and dump automatically I'll just uh, turn off auto drive when they get here jump in and get them unloaded will be a lot quicker than mucking around with that and we don't have too many more loads it's probably only about maybe half a dozen loads out there if that so uh, I think that'll be a much better, much quicker solution than uh, mucking around with that. But we've just got to carry on and get this compacted. We're at 81%. We're just short of 700,000 litres in here. So not a bad uh, not a bad haul of silage. And uh, with all those grass bales that we got earlier on and the other grass we already have and the corn silage in the harvest store, plus the field of corn over the road, we are going to have a decent amount of silage on hand very, very soon. So uh, things are looking very, very promising when we get this finally and I've said it a long time we're into episode 22 I think this one is we've been talking about the feedlot we will finally finally be able to get that up and running very very soon now before the end of the episode we also need to remember to race over and sell the soybeans because I think last time I checked the price was just starting to go down from that peak we experienced earlier on so definitely need to go and make sure that we get that done and see how much money we can make off the soybeans but we're just going to jump out get this truck dumped out and we're just going to carry on and get things finished off here
So we've got the big stack on the left is all finished, that is 100% compacted and just about ready to get covered and we've just been playing around in here getting this one compacted, it's 36%, 160,000 litres but the uh, forager and the auto drive truck have made it back around here where they were going to start on the headlands again which means they've finished all the up and down rows and I think we're going to have a look how much is in the truck but what we're going to do, we're just going to park here in just a second, we'll pull out and get out of the way but uh, we are going to go and jump into the forager and race around and get all those uh, little rows of the wind where I missed, pick all those up from around the field. But uh, there we are, this is going pretty well. Looking at how much we have in each silo, so just pop in here, 158, 160,000, and we ended up with 696,000 in here total, as you can see, 100% compacted. So we'll get that covered very soon, we'll do them both at the same time. But for now, we are just going to jump up in here, should be an auto driver still sitting in the truck so we just hop here into the forager get that turned on again everything lowered down we should be able to go and get some of these rows all done now oops we're a little bit stuck on the tra trailer there right, let's back up uh, i'm not going to worry about going around and picking up all the scraggly little pieces but certainly i think it's going to be worthwhile doing these rows so we'll get the header put down and turn back on and hopefully the truck will come and catch up to us there we go we found that I'll just let it get into position and then we're just going to very quickly go and do these Half dozen or so rows, you can see them quite clearly across the field that the wind rod didn't quite pick up. So once the truck's in position, we'll get this done, race around on a little bit of a time lapse and uh, we'll get it all finished off. Well the auto drives work pretty well with me driving, the only downside when I want to turn left the truck doesn't know to get out of the way, it's not quite as smart as it was when it was doing it for the worker for course play but uh, we've just got this last little piece here to do and we'll be done, I reckon it was worthwhile, we're about two thirds of a truck there which is about 40,000 litres of silage so that'll certainly help, every little bit helps with making sure we've got enough to get the cows fed. So we'll get this a little bit done, we'll finish things off, turn it all off, go and get the truck dumped into the pit and then we'll finish getting the bunkers all compacted, all the silage compacted and we'll be able to get a cover put on the second one. This one's ready to go and uh, once we've done that we'll be over to the train yard and train station picking up the train and getting our soybeans sold. So I think there we go, we'll get this, uh, well it's going to want to drive all the way around with us but we'll get that turned off, get the header lifted up and we will just head on down this way park up on the edge of the field and then we'll grab the truck. Well that wasn't a bad guess at uh, two thirds, 43,967 litres, 67% full, so pretty much bang on two thirds, which is not bad. Right, we're just going to go around the other side back in and get this dumped in and then we'll just go, jump straight into the wheel loader and finish getting it compacted. Shouldn't take anywhere near as long as the other one because it's so much less. So we'll uh, back in here and get it finished off and be good to get this all done that's uh, that's an impressive looking bunker though the one on the left that's going to look great once it's got a blanket on it and all covered up 
Anyhow, let's get this in here back in as far as we can. It's nice and level. Open that up and drive out a little bit as it starts unloading. Keep as much of it in the middle as we can. Keep going a little bit longer, a little bit longer. Here we go, all done. Right, I'm just going to park the truck up. We're just going to nose it up here so it's out of the way. We'll sort out the trailers and park all those properly a little bit later. But let's just leave that there. Go and jump in the wheel loader and we'll finish compacting this uh, pit. Well, we are 100% compacted on both of our stacks here. We ended up with, I think, 202,000 litres in this one. Should we bring it back up? I think if I stand over here close enough, not quite. 202,000 litres here. And pop over to the other one. 696. So pretty much bang on 900,000 litres of silage, which is fantastic. That is awesome. Hopefully it's all going to get covered. So we'll just kind of stand over here and get into a position where we can cover it. Let's put a blanket on it. A little bit there that got missed, we might just grab the forks and pick that up and put it in the other one. And tidy up down this end as well. Get those bits tidied up and dumped in the other pit and then we'll be able to put a cover on that. We did drop a little bit down there, uh, which we can't really get out. So it's just going to have to stay there for now. But there we are, that is starting to ferment, which is perfect. And uh, I'm pretty happy with how this one's turned out. But anyhow, we'll go and grab these few little bits and pieces and get this other one covered. Then go and sell some soybeans. All right, and blanket here on the left one, and that is all done as well. I think we managed to get the little all of it, including the little piece that was just sitting there on its own. A little bit lumpier on this, we didn't bother getting it quite as smooth, but there we go. Perfect, 900,000 litres. Couldn't quite pick up those couple of little bits there, but I think the way they're covered, it might actually ferment those, and uh, we'll be good to go. So there we are, that is our silage all done, all 900,000 litres of it. Fantastic, fantastic work. Actually, if we count the... Uh, grass bales on the trailer we've probably got a million litres of silage come into the farm today which is perfect right well with that all done we can turn this off and we're going to head on over to the train yard rent the train and sell our soybeans perfect way to finish the evening 9 7 45 at night perfect way to finish engine 5844 is here so well, let's hop up inside now i'm mindful of the fact we've got 350,000 litres of soybeans here to load in so we're going to have to probably use most of the capacity on the train I'm not actually sure how much we've got total but uh, we don't want to go too far past the brakes there and stop and we should be able to pop in here find some soybeans there they are start loading so there we go that's the first one filling up we can see that filling up in there just pan back a little bit we do have one more there and I think we can open the top on this one we can so hopefully hopefully we're going to have enough space to take them all in one trip we'll soon find out we're going to be so close to being able to take it all, but not quite, I don't think. We've only got the three carts that we can put soybeans into. 300,000 litres, so I think, not that I'm going to be able to see. Well, actually, I can. Let's see, I think there's about 20,000 litres left. There you go, 21,794 litres left sitting in the silos. So, 31 grand though, it's uh, probably worth taking a couple of trips here on the train to get it sold. But we'll get that one closed, we've got to close the one up the front. Then, just get ourselves up a little bit further. We'll take the train off down to the edge of the map, get the prompt to sell it, and we'll see exactly how much money we're going to get out of these soybeans. This is uh, this is really a big milestone for the farm because it's going to knock out a lot of our debt and also leave us some cash that we can invest into the feedlot. So I'm looking forward to this. I'm very excited. Well, moment of truth. We're just about here at the edge of the map. The train is going to disappear and we'll get the prompt. Do we want to sell our crops? Of course we do. 100%. There we go, 428,000. I had forgotten we'd get an environmental score. 46,000 off that as well as a bonus. So that gives us a grand total. Uh, what's that? 47,400 off those. That's uh, 474,000. Do my maths, probably 474,000. So we're going to uh, clear half a million by the time we've finished with the, the ones that are left down at the train. Well, 20,000 litres. Let's go and get it sold. Here we go with the last of the soybeans, 21,000 litres, and we're going to hit sold there and pick up $34,500. So, very quick maths, that was about $550,000 I believe we just made there, which is uh, not too shabby. I'm certainly not going to complain about that at all. Right, let's head on back over to the yard. Well, what a productive day that was. A million litres of silage and... 500,000 plus from selling our soybeans that has uh, really set us up really really well going forward I can see us getting the feed pad built 
in the not too distant future. Uh, we've got a few other things we need to probably get done first. We've got the oats to harvest and the rest of the maize silage to do as well and keep our animals alive. We've got some feeding to get done and as well as getting the milk sold we do have that all trucking through as well. The other thing we do have 400,000 litres of slurry sitting in the four cattle pastures so uh, we may even look now that we've had this grass harvested we may even look at getting some slurry applied to these fields and make some use of it because it's not really worth it any other way. So lots going on here for the Canadian cattle farmer. I'm looking forward to progressing things a little bit further in this series and seeing where we might end up. But I hope you've enjoyed that episode. As always, thank you all very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Hello everyone, Argzy here. Welcome back to another episode of the Canadian Cattle Farmer on Chilliwack, British Columbia. We've jumped forward from where we were last, we are now into July and we need to get some of our animals fed. We've kept on top of it up until now but uh, they're starting to get a little bit low and we're going to have to get some food mix up for them. So we are just, uh, well we're working here on getting a bit of a feed mix done. Now I've figured out a better ratio, well, I think it's a better ratio, we're going to find out how this works. But it's basically uh, three silage bales, two hay bales and the balance is in the silage here. It should be about 4,000 litres so we've gone a little bit over there. But that's all right we'll get that done and mixed up and a very similar mix that will go into the trucks now one thing i'm thinking about doing or i am planning to do we're going to go and get a new bale fork from the front of this get a bale spike four on the wheel loader so we can pick up more bales just to speed up the process this grab has been fantastic and i've really enjoyed using it but it is a little bit clunky and a little bit cumbersome to use just be great to be able to drive in pick up two maybe even three silage bales all at once and put them into the uh, put them into the mixes as and when we need them so that is the plan that is not the main plan for today we're just going to get this done but our main plan is we do have a manure spreader turning up very very soon or a slurry spreader turning up very soon it is a tow behind one it's not a drag line or anything like that uh, but we're going to give that a bit of a demo the dealer is uh, trying to sell us some equipment they know about our plans for this feedlot and they're thinking we're going to need some big manure pits and things like that slurry pits and they have some gear and equipment that might be suitable for us so they're on a little bit of a butter us up course they're coming out to try and sweeten the deal by giving us a demo and say this is what it's like what do you think so uh, that is what we will be doing today but i'm just going to get these animals fed run a couple of loads around to each of the uh, cow barns and then we'll go and get into that we'll probably while we're doing it as well we might try and get some uh Get some milk sold because I'm pretty sure we've got a full truckload of milk sitting between a couple of the cow pastures. So we'll do that while we're uh, busy doing this as well. So we'll uh, catch up with you in just a little while once we've got some animals fed. All right, there's a uh, first load of TMR on its way out. It's going down to one of the cow pastures and we should see not far behind it. Let's keep a look out this way. The truck should be coming as well. That is all fill up and heading to one of the other pastures. Can't see it. There it is coming around the corner now so while they're going and doing that we are going to head over i'm going to go grab the semi over there it's hooked up to the tanker already and we're going to go and run that down to another pasture and we'll go and get some milk loaded up we'll figure out which one's the best one to go to and uh, we'll go and get some milk sold so field 125 has 54,000 litres in it so i think we'll go and empty that one out first it's closest to full uh, 203 has got 35,000 litres in it so we might even think about doing two trips there you can see the food I think I've just sent one uh, vehicle I think the tractor was heading down to 195 to top them up and the truck was going to head down to 125 and top them up the other two about half full so they're not quite so bad off with their uh, milk we are getting closer with these ones to being reproducing in fact our closest ones here are these Holsteins at 60% and hopefully these ones at 23 months aren't too far away from getting some milk only a couple more months and we'll be getting some milk off them which is great now speaking of milk the best place to go and sell at the moment is at Costco so we will uh, head there and go and get this sold so we're just pulling in here at the same time as one of our trucks is so we're gonna have to let them get in and turned around now one thing we do have to do down here is get our track all uh, formed up and then access in here get some of this all graveled and things like that and uh, then we can make this much better update on the clover still no germination so we are just going to let it run its course some people did suggest using easy dev to get this all filled up and done um, or to growing sorry but this field here wouldn't have been able to because it's not actually a predefined field well, no way to have got that one 
working on easy dev so we kind of just decided let's just let it go run its course and we'll worry about it next time would have actually been good though because uh we don't actually have much hay hay is a filler in our food but at least it stops us from overusing all of the maize corn maize and grass maize and i am mindful of how much of that we're going to need but let's get backed in there and we'll get filled up with some milk 55,000 liters or so so we'll go pretty close to filling the truck but it's not too far to head down the road and get to costco hopefully by the time we're done that that this uh, mixer is probably going to be all unloaded and back over at the farm and we'll be able to uh make up another mix and probably go and get some of the more of the animals fed or at least get it ready to go and feed them but uh the cows are looking pretty excited to be coming in there still haven't figured out what the issue with the animation on them is because it's certainly not a frame rate issue or anything with the game but there's something affecting these animals when they move just uh it's not how it's meant to be and i don't know what's causing the issue but there we go 81 percent full let's go and get this sold so another delivery to the now infamous costco uh bulk milk supplies i've certainly been buying a lot of milk up here now is it true canadians have their milk in bags there's an ongoing gag if anyone listened ever listened to the millennial farmers podcast off the husk there's an ongoing gag about how canadians all have their milk in bags i think there's a lot of uh, a lot of opinionated pieces and opinionated comments coming from viewers around that one so go and have a look it's well worth a listen to a bit of a joke but uh, look at that money going up, and it's just carrying on going up. This milk has really become a bit of the lifeblood of this farm, which is fantastic. How much are we going to get off this load? $41,000. Well, I think we will carry on. We'll go and get the other milk from the other uh, dairy, and we'll come and get this sold as well, because I think $30,000, we'll probably get another uh, $25,000 or so from that. Well, we're down here getting the rest of the milk out of this barn and I was just looking at the grass here this is actually starting to grow quite well we're probably not far away from almost being able to mow it again which would be good we could actually come down here and make some hay off this field and it also means there's probably an opportunity just as that gets to 35 percent full uh 35,000 litres full 52 percent uh could be the opportunity to get a second cut of grass off the big field back at the farm and we could look at splitting that, make some silage bales because I think silage is going to be much more useful but also some hay at the same time and don't forget we will get quite a bit of straw off the oats field over the road and that will also come in handy, we can use that as a filler in our feed mixes too so uh, lots of different options there and I think we're going to be pretty flush with feed for the animals very very soon. So we're going to get this offloaded and sold back at Costco as well. 35,000 litres, yeah I reckon there'll be a, maybe $27,000 on this one, we will find out. Well let's see how close I was to guessing $27,000 worth, it's just counting down now, it's about half of it through and we're getting down to our last 10,000 litres, 5,000 and we'll get our tally popping up there at the moment, 26,742, look at that, $258 off 27 grand so i'll take that as a pretty good guess of value there so that's all our milk sold uh the animals are pretty much well fed so now it's just a case of waiting for the slurry spreader to turn up i'm not sure what time it was going to be here i think it's on the back of a truck and on its way from uh, right from the dealer actually right straight from the uh, manufacturer sorry straight from the factory never been used so uh we're looking forward to giving it a go so let's head back on over to our farm and we'll uh, catch you over there. Well here it is, we've just had the call and the driver is here with our uh, big, that I think is huge, look at the size of that slurry spreader. Brand new, fresh off the factory floor from GEA, it is a stainless steel tank, 7900 Canadian edition, we have even got the flag up there for us. So we will go, and we actually will get the driver to uh, pull over into the front of the yard get this unloaded it's like the same truck that brought us the combine last time uh, but this is going to be fantastic i'm looking forward to having a play in this and uh, getting some slurry spread we've got 400,000 liters across our four dairies so i don't think we're going to be able to use it all certainly not on uh, the ground we've got but uh, we'll definitely give it a good go so we'll go and get this unloaded so I think we're going to use the new Holland to pull this around. The versatile is probably a little bit big. Remember we have to do a bit of time on the roads getting back and forth between our uh, dairy barns and getting the slurry. So hopefully we can get backed up to the drawbar there. Hopefully we're wide and all narrow enough. Hopefully the ramps aren't too wide and we can get up there and uh, get this pulled off. Alright, 
right there we are might do something funny I think with the axles as it's lifting up so just ignore that because that obviously would not happen I wouldn't have thought but there we are I'll get this unloaded and uh, there we go it's a nice bit of kit and I think if we come around the back here it's got three spreaders on the back you can unfold those and that gives us a 10 meter spread width on it so it's going to cover a decent amount of area it is a big tank, I think the 7900 is 7900 gallons which works out at about 36,000 litres or so so we should be able to get uh, just on or just under three loads out of each of the uh, cattle barns with the 100,000 litres that is in storage down there so looking forward to giving that a go but so we're just going to leave that parked there for now let the driver of the truck get back on his way because uh, we don't have to give it back in any hurry uh, and we're just going to go finish making uh, another feed mix, get that sent off, and then we'll go and get doing get some slurry spread. So we've got ourselves another load of TMR made up here. Now we are actually going to try out a new feature that uh, I've only just been shown in AutoDrive. Uh, so thank you to Karen for pointing this out to me and Disturb Simulations who has done a little tutorial video on how to use uh, the cycle pickup and delivery options. So we're just going to bring up our menu and you can now see we've actually got this icon here. This is cycle pick up and deliver. So we have it set so that our truck will deliver to multiple points. There's a few ways this works. Basically you have to have your delivery points in a folder. So I've got three of our car, cow barns, field 195, 203 and 125 all in the same folder. I've deliberately left 170 which is the furthest one away out because I know the truck doesn't like entering that cow barn very well. Uh, so we're just going to try it, delivering to those three. now. The way it's set up to work is you could have multiple sell points or production points and you deliver crops to it. So let's say we had a silo full of wheat and we wanted to deliver to a flour mill and to a sell point. You can alternate between those or uh, something like that. Now I'm going to try this, I don't know what will happen here. I'm hoping that when our cow barn gets to 100% full and the truck doesn't need to unload there anymore, it will carry on and drive off to the next one. So we've got those set up in the folders. Based on this, it should cycle through. We've got 195 selected first. Once that's full, hopefully it'll go down to 203 and then back to 125. So there's really only one way to try this out. The reason I can try it out right now is if we just have a look at our cow barns. You can see there 195 is three quarters full, probably only takes 18,000 litres. So that's not a full truckload. 125 is pretty much bang on full, so it's not going to take much. And 203 there has only a little bit of capacity. So what I'm hoping is doing this means we can just cycle the truck, fill it up, and it'll go make all the cow pastures 100% full and keep on going to wherever it needs to be. So there's only one way to find out if this is going to work, and that is to turn on our mixers, have them all going so they're ready to deliver the product when they get there, and uh, we'll press go and see what happens. So we'll ride along. In fact, we're not going to ride along. We will uh, let it get up to field uh, to pasture 195, and uh, we'll see when we get up there. So, moment of truth here, as the truck is pulling into the pasture at field 195. Now, this one needs about 17,000 liters. So, with the 52 in the truck, we should get down to about 35 left, and then we will see whether it is going to carry on driving. I'm hoping this could be an awesome solution. Uh, like I said though, I don't know what's going to happen because there will still be some product in it. So it's as guess is as good as mine whether it's going to work. So we'll just sit here, we'll wait. It is going down. I'll move over so we can see the level there, 46,000 litres. It's getting down towards the 37 or so, which is uh, where this pasture should be at, at about full capacity. Alright, and here we are, 38,000. Still going down. When is it going to stop? When's the pasture going to be full? 36. It's taking a little bit more than I thought taking a lot more than I thought. Perhaps my maths was off a little bit, but there we go. It's stopped, it's empty, the truck is still running, and we're off and moving. Look at this. Got the door open too, even better. But I wonder if it's now going to get to the trigger, because remember our trigger point for field, or well these this cow pasture is right at the end here. It's on the outside of the uh, cow pen. So I'm just waiting to see whether it is now, when it gets up here, gets to that point, whether it is going to tick over and go to the next one. And there we go, look at that, it's just changed to cows F203. So that is an awesome solution, that is going to be so good. Just ignore it driving over the crops because I didn't organise this end very well. We didn't have anything when we did that. But uh, there we look at that, that is fantastic. So. No more sitting around waiting, which had been happening a little bit. Ignore the grass bale in the back too. I dropped it in there and it didn't need it all. Uh, but 
that is uh, that's a fantastic solution. So I reckon uh, go and check out Disturb Simulations tutorial on that. He's done a great job on it. Uh, it's very very simple to set up. You just need to make sure you use the folders and have whatever you want in the same folder as your delivery points. So. Uh, Give it a go, I think it is a fantastic little option. So we are just going to leave this truck doing its things. It should head down to 203, then up to 125. I'll be intrigued to see what it does when it gets to the end, uh, whether it just keeps on cycling till the truck is empty, or whether it will um, whether it will come back to base. So we will uh, just let it do its thing, and we're going to go and get some slurry spread. So we've jumped into the tea out, we've grabbed the manure spreader and we're heading down to the nearest of the cow pastures to start getting loaded up with some slurry. So we should be able to take, I said earlier, get three loads out of each of the uh, manure sheds or each of the yeah, manure tanks at the cow barns. There's 100,000 litres in storage and this takes I think 36,000 litres, so a little bit under three full loads. We're just going to back in underneath the unload spout there and hopefully... I don't know if there's an animation or not, but we'll just get back in there. It looks about the right spot. No, but we are filling up with slurry. You can see that going up. I'm not sure how much we're going to need. We could look at the field calculator we have installed, but I think precision farming will overrule that. So uh, we'll just have to go through and see how far we can get with what we've got. We've got 400,000 litres, so I'm hoping that that is going to be enough. We do have the John Deere manure sensing, which is an option here. 35,900 litres total in the tank, but uh, the yellow box up there on the front, that is the manure sensing uh, device which will help with our precision farming and making sure we're applying the optimal rate of manure for the field. So, all loaded up, let's head on back down and make a start with uh, getting some manure spread. So we've made it here to the field, let's get this all unfolded to get those arms out. And we've got a 10 metre spread width on there, so we might be a little bit close to the edge of the field, but I'd rather start out a little bit close than uh, too far away. Get that turned on, and there we go, we are getting our manure or slurry, I keep on saying manure but it is slurry, out of the pipes and onto the field. Now we're going to set up a GPS course for this and I'm just going to bring up our minimap there to make sure we can see we are getting nitrogen applied and if we look up in the top we're applying slurry amount depending on the soil yield potential which is for silty clay. So let's uh, set up our little course, make our A and B point along here then we'll check our lines and make sure that everything is set to the right width. But uh, this is all going pretty well. Already used 10% up, so it'll be interesting to see if we can get the whole way around the field without having to unload. There we are, that's on GPS, and we do just have a little bit of an overlap. But at least that means when we come around the next time, we will be in exactly the right spot. But uh, that is, that's doing a good job. quite like that. Great little animation and everything down there. Doesn't doing what it says it does. Spreading slurry. I have been keeping an eye as well on our truck. I'm just going to very quickly pop here into the menu, and it does look like I wonder if it's stuck. It might be stuck on a uh, on the road or on a piece of traffic. That is the downside to trying to do an auto drive course like that, having traffic moving. So we might have to go after this uh, lap, getting the headlands opened up, go and check that just to make sure that everything is okay. Because I'm quite excited about the potential for that uh, course setting and having delivery to multiple points. So we'll get around the headland, we'll get that uh, sorted out, and then we'll uh, get into this proper. Well you might just be able to see in the distance the truck has made it back here to the yard, and unfortunately it did not unload at field 203, even though it went all the way down there. So I think we might have to spend a little bit more time babysitting that truck, just to see what happens when it gets to each of the points, whether it carries on driving, or whether it resets, or what exactly could be causing it to not unload. It's a little bit frustrating. I really was quite hopeful that that could have been a bit of a, uh, a fix or a solution or a much more efficient way to do things than we had been. So we'll worry about that a little bit later. Uh, we'll probably have to go and sort that truck out. It might be struggling to get in the entrance as well. In fact, it does look like that because I can see that car's stationary there. But anyhow, trials and tribulations are trying to automate things that uh, just don't quite want to work the way you want them to. That's fine, it's all part of the learning process for me as well as it is me trying to teach you. So uh, hopefully you guys can take something away from this as well. Anyhow, we'll carry on, we'll uh, go and get this emptied out, ready to go and pick up some more slurry and uh, we'll get that truck sorted out at the same time. Well, we've made it down one edge and almost the whole way across the top here of the field. So one lap and this little bit extra, so that's not too bad. Get this all folded up and already start to see it getting dirty there on the back. Uh, that's actually quite some nice effects there with the way you can sort of see the slurry is if it's dribbled down the side and a little bit of spillage and things like that as it's been filling and the front is still relatively clean so that's, uh, that's pretty impressive with the texturing there. 
on the spreader. So we're going to head on down. We're just going to get into a little bit of routine, jump to a little bit of a time lapse, a montage, and get this uh, spreading done once we've got the truck here out of the way and uh, figured out. I'm going to th think I'm going to spend some time after uh, after this. We might have a look at this and try and figure out exactly what happened here because uh, I just really want this to work. It just seemed like such a good idea. But anyhow, let's get this in here out of the way of the vehicles and uh, we'll carry on with our slurry spreading.
I reckon we've actually used less than the field calculator told me. I thought it was going to be about 160,000. I thought, no, no, we'll use much more than that. But this is only our fifth load, and we didn't even use up half of it. So uh, definitely much less than 150,000 litres across the field. But there we go. I think that is all pretty much done. You can see we do have some different patches. Uh, the way it's applied it, it's a little bit different. To be honest, this is probably about the first time I've really applied Sadolari, maybe the second, uh, so we might have to do a little bit more investigation. It might be we have to go in and apply it all again in the future just to get that boosted right up because you can see here we've definitely got a good dose of uh, nitrogen here on the right-hand side. And in fact, if we just pop in and have a look, do we have our field info turned on? We don't. Let's just have a quick look at that. Well, it is telling us that nitrogen is perfect. Uh, we are on the green part. Let's just run over this way and see what it tells us. Again, still telling us nitrogen's perfect on this side. 105 of 65. So perhaps we've over nitrogened the field. Who knows? We might have more than we actually need. But as for the spreader, uh, I'm super impressed with it actually. The detail with the uh, textures and the, the way it got dirty and muddy and yuck. You know, on the back here, we'll come around in the sunlight. But the spills and everything, the overflow that you'd get sloshing out of the back there pretty impressive and uh, I don't know if you noticed I definitely did but the tire splatters look at that <laughs> this tire is uh, splattering the manure and that or dirt or whatever up off here very very authentic I do like that that's fantastic even up in here under the mud uh, the mud guards so very cool so impressed with that that is uh, certainly going to be going on the wish list for something that we will need here on the farm very soon so we're just going to park up and uh, we'll give it a quick wash off clean all of this crap off it and uh, then we'll be wrapping things up for today I don't think we'll get it back to showroom condition but uh, we'll certainly make sure it is as close to clean as it was when it arrived on the farm we're going to keep it for a little bit longer we might try and uh, get another application applied we'll see we'll uh, figure out exactly what we need to do of course we're going to have some crops to harvest soon and we're going to have plenty of fields we could put some nitrogen on for winter or before winter so that come spring when we plant crops again we will be giving them the best chance of uh, giving us a good yield as for the auto drive course i think there is some real merit and i'm going to spend a little bit more time investigating how to use that multiple deliver or cycle delivery option uh, that if that can work if i can get that figured out and understand what was going on and why it might not have done or delivered when I thought it was going to. Uh, I think that is just going to be awesome. Huge, huge benefits there for the farm if we can get that all set up and running. So thank you to Kerim for uh, sharing that with me and uh, Disturbed to go and check out his tutorial on it. He shows it how to do it as well and uh, like I said, first time I've tried it out and we're still learning so we can learn together. Anyhow, that is enough from me. I hope you've all enjoyed that episode. As always, thank you all very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Hello everyone, Arxy here. Welcome back to Chilliwack, British Columbia for another episode of the Canadian Cattle Farmer. Now you've just been along for a ride while we have had AutoDrive doing a delivery to multiple cow pastures, cow, cow barns at the same time. We went to field 125, the first time emptied out about 10,000 litres of TMR. 
and then headed on down to the cows at field 203 and well they took the rest so we could only do those two points but I can I can confirm that we have already tested it out once and managed to get to all three cow pastures and have TMR delivered so that was awesome I'm pleased to have got that working I don't know what happened in the last episode for it to uh, not deliver down to field 203 but it's worked this time with me it's worked twice so I'm feeling a little bit more confident so that is fantastic fantastic to have that all up and running the uh, John Deere is over delivering some TMR over to field 170 as well which is the one right over where our alfalfa field is now we are as I said last time we're getting pretty low on hay not much alfalfa hay left there uh, we're starting to get through our silage bales we'll just come around and have a look in here still a few sitting in the barn but uh, they're not going to last too much longer but fortunately head down here and have a look at our silage bring up our menu that's showing up as 80% fermented so probably by the end of today before we move into August this will be fully fermented so we've certainly got enough silage bales sitting over there to cover this off and uh, keep that lasting we are getting low on maize silage as well though so we're going to be hoping to get over into the cornfields and get some of that harvested and chopped up for silage sometime very very soon now the other task we are going to have to do today we are going to jump into the Mac and run down to the cow pastures we've got quite a bit of milk to sell again so we'll just take a look there so another 92,000 litres of milk already produced uh, value of $62,000 selling it today at Chilliwack Dairy so again it's just ticking us over really this milk is really becoming the lifeblood of the farm taking a look at the animals as well everyone's good and healthy I think uh, there we go they're full they're almost full of food no, definitely full of food and the Anguses are almost full so we're pretty much all under control we are getting closer to getting some uh, some offspring there 60% on our reproduction on that herd of Holsteins uh, so everything's just ticking over very very nicely now in terms of other things here our oats are still growing they're only one cycle away from being ready to harvest so I think if we uh, skip forward into August they will be good to go the cornfield here 135 and then over here at 195 as well they're still growing of course being used for maize for silage we can actually cut that when it's still green so maybe one more growth stage and that will just about be ready to do so lots of work coming up here very very soon but for today we actually don't have a huge amount of things to do everything's just uh just ticking along but i'm starting to wonder we've got a good amount of money in the account i know we have to repay some of that uh, and i do want to repay some of that debt but i'm starting to wonder whether we are almost at the stage to build the uh build the feedlot and get that all started and set up out the back here so we'll have a think about that uh, we're going to jump into the Mac for now. We're going to head on off, get some milk sold. And once we've done that, maybe we'll make a decision. So just as we hop into here and we're going to go for a drive down to the two cow pastures to get the milk loaded up, uh, it is possible to use something like this, uh, something like the auto drive setup we had with the multiple delivery points, to actually go through multiple fill points and deliver. So we could conceivably set up an auto drive route which runs around the three, four, cattle pastures and loads up with milk and delivers that off to the cell points now added complication with this is obviously we have a reverse requirement to get in with the trailer to load up with the milk it's not as user friendly as some of the other cow barns or just the position of the fill trigger is and with the capacity to take 60,000 litres or more in the truck I don't think we're going to worry about it too much uh, but if we had a smaller truck or trailer and we're having to regularly haul milk from uh, the cow farm down to the cell points then that would certainly be something we would give some consideration to but uh, for now we're just going to do this manually and go and get it all sold so we'll get pulled in here we will get loaded up and head on down to the dairy then we'll go down to the other uh, Holstein Frisian uh, mob of animals which is down at field 203 and we'll go and get that one all loaded up and get the milk out of there as well well this is interesting we've come down to the Chilliwack dairy to sell our milk we've sold 40,000 litres but for whatever reason it just suddenly stopped letting me sell anymore I can't unload it I'm not sure what exactly is going on with that with that open pops up with the trigger but won't allow us to sell anymore perhaps we've reached capacity or something not that I was aware there was a capacity maybe because it is a uh, it is a production point as well maybe that is why we've filled it up with potential milk that the production point can take so we'll go down and try the uh, try the sell point at the Costco I'm not sure if there's much difference in the prices at the moment we're only just down the road so we're going to give that a try if we can make sure we can get the rest of the milk sold but I'm assuming it's because the, the dairy is a production point 
and it's reached its maximum capacity in there, which would be a little bit of a shame, a little bit unfortunate if that is the case. Uh, if anyone's got a suggestion on what we could do to solve that, other than buying the dairy, which we could do, maybe we uh, diversify in our cattle farm. But uh, for now, we're just going to go and make use of the Costco. There we are, able to get the remainder of it sold down here. So four and a half thousand dollars, and I think we got twenty six thousand off the first load. As for price difference, it was about forty dollars per litre difference. So not a huge variation, but uh, it's a variation all the same. And you can see there we've still got forty six thousand litres down at the other uh, dairy that we will go and pick up now and go and get sold. And thirty two thousand dollars for the rest of the milk. So another sixty or so thousand dollars there into the bank account. Seven hundred and eighty nine thousand dollars overall so that is going to be a big help on the farm like i said it's the lifeblood right let's get on back over to the yard and uh, we'll have a little bit of a chat about the feedlot because i think that is what we're going to tackle next so we're looking at the site of our future feedlot and i've got a few decisions to make now my intention had been to use schultz modding feedlot it's a thousand head per uh per feedlot that you can put down it's a buildable one so you place the feedlot and then you can build your fences and everything around it now that to me seems like the most appropriate one to use uh, but whether a thousand head per pen is accurate or not i think it's probably a little bit excessive for what we're trying to do and certainly i don't want to have to be trying to feed a thousand head of cattle or even more because of the size of it uh, the other option we have is lazy e modding's feedlot which is a little bit bigger uh, but we're just going to take a look at the two of them and make a bit of a decision. So taking a look here, this is Schultz Modding's feedlot, and you can just zoom in there. You can see we've got our uh, info tag there on the right. We've got the dump point for feed, and we've got the buy point for the animals down the other end. We place this down as it is. It's got the feedlot and the triggers for the feed troughs and everything like that in it, and then you can build your fences to look however you want. Now my intention had been to basically build, let's say one there, mirror it around and put one on the other side and have an aisle down the middle where you can drive down and feed the animals on both sides so we would have been able to do maybe from here one two three along here so I had six of these all set up and then down the end and around here we were going to put one of the big slurry pits so something like one of these liquid manure tanks from 46 mods which works with the slurry mixer which we've been using already as well so that was the intention Put that down there with six of the feedlots. Now we'll just spin it back around and have a look again. So the alternative option is to use Lazy E Modding's Midwest style feedlot pack. If we just have a look here you can see we've got a right pen which has the gate up there in the top. We can use the left pen which has the gate in the sort of other side and then it also comes with a connector pen so we could build for example we could put that one up the top, we could put the connector in the middle and we could put this one over here. So we've got a few different options how to do that that would give us uh, 275 times three if i was going to do it this way i'd only put three of these along because they are quite a lot bigger and that would at even at three would give us close to 900 head of cattle 825 if my maths does me right uh, and that would be 150,000 dollars we go back and have a look at the little feedlot they're only 25,000 dollars each so if we were to put six of these in that would be $150,000 as well. So much the same price. We're going to obviously at six potentially have 6,000 head of cattle here, which is uh, completely untenable with the feed requirements we'd have. But for the size of these, I think I might only put maybe 100, 100 head in one of these and uh, that would still give us 600 head. So I'm on the fence. I'm still leaning towards this because this was my initial intention and what I was going to do. So I'm going to give it some quick little thought, come up with a solution, an idea, and uh, we're just going to get in there and get it built. Alright, I've given it some thought, and I'm going to go with the uh, Schultz modding one, the buildable feedlot here, and stick to about 100 head, maybe 150 head, it does give us the option to push things up. But we're going to put six of these in, we're going to build them along here, so we've got a centre aisle to run the feed trucks down, or whatever we're going to use for the feeding. I'm actually going to widen the aisle against the... Uh, barns and that just a little bit we're going to go a little bit less uh, a little bit less demanding and less a little bit less space but before we do that you can see that the ground does want to level it's not quite level through here so we're going to go through we're going to level the ground get it nice and flat might mean we need to do a little bit of sloping and contouring to get in and out of places but I think that will be better than trying to build these all at different levels so 
I'm going to crack into a little time lapse here of us getting this built and uh, we'll see what it looks like when we're all finished. And there we go, I think I am pretty happy with that feedlot. I think we've spent about 350k on it with all the different landscaping and having to redo fences and things like that. Uh, but all in all, I'm pretty pretty stoked with how that's turned out. We gave ourselves plenty of space down here through the middle to be able to get a uh, unit down here, truck and trailer or whatever we're going to be feeding with. And it also means we can go both ways. We could have one going down here, unloading on the left, and one going back the other way, unloading on the left. Or it might be that they go down one side, turn around, and come back the other. So I'm pretty stoked with that, actually. Obviously, you can set up the gates. This one on the back was left a lot more open. The one at the front, because it was close to the yard and that, we gave a little bit more protection around the fences. Now, I think if we just come up here, bring up our trigger, we have our left click, and that will hide the grid. So we'll go through and do that on all three, or all six of them in fact come down here and hide the grid and then we'll uh, grab the drone jump up and have a look at it all from above and there we go a 6,000 head feedlot like I said we might push it to 150 per pen so up around the uh, 750 or so but other than that in fact 900 won't it be 150 head over six pens will be six times 15 900 oh, 50. But regardless, I think that is really going to be about the limit of what we want to do here, both with the potential for being able to produce food, because obviously we need to keep these hungry mouths fed, and just for the ongoing management of the farm. But I think that is going to work out pretty, pretty well. I'm looking forward to getting some animals down in here and uh, get it populated. But I think we're going to run out of uh, run them out of food first. And my other thought with this, obviously... We can't collect milk out of this and milk has been our lifeblood so what we might do we might keep obviously the two frisian herds that we already have we might keep those because they are the ones that are producing the milk and getting us a lot of income 
Uh, then the other animals, uh, one herd of Angus, which I'm not sure which farm they are in, but we might sell the farm over in that distance, over in that way, uh, the one with the alfalfa field, because obviously there's no value to having the alfalfa for us. Uh, so what we might do, bring the animals from that, bring them over here, and set this up more as a, as a feedlot, and get some Angus in here, and uh, fatten those up, and get them sold at some stage. So lots and lots to do. I'm looking forward to it though. Very excited. Uh, we might look and see if we can find some more decoration to put in here, whether there's some bale feeders, or uh, just some things we can put in there that just make it look a little bit more populated. But other than that, I am pretty happy with how that's all turned out. Well, I think with that all built, that is a fantastic spot to wrap up this episode. I'm looking forward to getting some animals in there and getting this all up and going. Uh, I'm excited to have got that auto drive course working as well, because that gives me a lot more confidence to keep the dairy cows where they are and worry about more bringing in the cattle to this side and uh, working on those here. So lots and lots to look forward to. Next time, I'm hoping I'll be able to get some animals in here and get it populated a little bit and start to work at this end. Uh, but I'm also expecting we might be moving forward another month and we will be cracking into oat harvest and that field is pretty large. Of course, uh, we don't have another combine at the moment. We do still only have the New Holland. That is something else we might have to give some consideration to. And we're also going to bale all of that because we want to get some more straw in here as filler for the food so we can make our silage, may silage, and hey, go that little bit further. So I hope you have all enjoyed that episode. As always, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Hello everyone, Argsy here. Welcome back to the Canadian Cattle Farmer here in Chilliwack, British Columbia. We've got another exciting day planned today, another day of what I'm going to call big change because following the construction of the feedlot we had done in the last episode, we are doing a little bit more work with the animals, sorting a few more things out with them and making just a few more changes uh, to better run our operation, make it a whole lot more efficient. So we're down here, this is field 195 and down near the bottom of the map we've got our corn planted around the outside of the fields. In here we've got 50 head of Angus and they're getting near to maturity, I think they're worth about $3,000 per animal at the moment. We're actually going to go and get these sold. I was contemplating moving them into the feedlot and uh, having them over there because the reason for that is this is a dairy shed and we can produce milk out of it but we don't have any dairy cattle in there so we're going to go and actually bring the brown swiss which are over on the far side of the map at the other yard and bring them over here they're going to go into this shed so i thought let's get these ones sold we've already ordered uh, another 150 or just short of 150, 144 head of cattle uh, that's limited by the truck numbers. We can carry 48 in the truck as can the carriers we are using to deliver them but we've ordered another 144 cattle and they are on their way to the farm to go into the feedlot. So I thought let's just start off with animals all of the same age and we'll get the proceeds from these ones to go and pay for them. So we're going to run these down to the animal dealer, get them sold. Then we're going to head on over to the other side of the map, go and pick up the brown swiss, bring them back over here and get them set up in here so we can get some milk off it. So that is the plan. There's also some other changes at the yard. We had a little bit more work done on the feedlot and around the yard that we will go and talk on. And I've also got some plans for some more equipment upgrades in the future and uh, probably sooner rather than later, but I am mindful We've still got some debt, we've got some uh, money in the bank but not a huge amount so we're going to have to look at what the best way to do that is. Part of it does work with uh, or does include this feed mixer which we haven't actually used yet but we'll cover that off in just a little while. So I'm going to jump in the truck, get loaded up and head on over to the animal yard. Alright so there you go, you can see we've got 48 in the trailer now and $3,000 per head so just short of $150,000 off these. Uh, there's two more that are going to be sitting here, little stragglers and you can see them over there in the yard now that we've got things loaded up. Uh, but of course that is the downside to the way we set things up, we set up with 50 and can only carry 48 in the trailer so I'm not sure whether we'll sell those or leave them over here. Probably not the best idea to leave uh, beef cattle in with your dairy herd so we'll probably have to come and sort them out and get them taken out and uh, get them sold as well. But we're going to jump in the road here, going to head on and make our way down to the animal dealer and uh, get these sold, get some money off them. So we've made it down here to the animal dealer, we're just going to get ourselves backed up into the loading dock there and uh, get these cattle offloaded. 48 head, $3,000 a head, so we will be just short of $150,000 off these. So they've really uh, matured over the time and uh, definitely going to bring us in a decent amount of income. We'll just back up in here. 
we will get right up against the loading dock just for a little bit of realism there probably not quite as centered as we should but if we pop in there you can see we've got our angus on this side we're going to transfer all 48 and sell them for a grand profit of $144,000 so pretty much back to where we started before we bought the extra head so uh, that's not bad using those to pay for that so we're going to carry on we're going to head on down to the other side of the farm and go and pick up those, pick up those brown swiss cows and bring them on over into that pasture and get them set up down there they should have some food yeah, there's still some in there uh, we are going to have to leave a little bit of food behind when we pick them up from the yard they are in from the uh, barn they're in at the moment but uh, we'll just have to write that off as a little bit of a loss it was a bit of poor planning on my part but We'll live with it uh, we've got plenty of other commodities back at the main yard to make plenty more food so let's get down there and get them picked up so we've made it down here to the barn with the brown swiss cows you can see them they look very comfy out there and they're going to go for a little bit of a truck ride so we'll pop over here see if we can find ourselves the dialogue should be right about there and we will grab the maximum we can 48 again of course get those moved and put into the trailer and we'll take those over to the other barn now you're probably wondering what is going to happen with this farm we did talk about it last time we are actually going to sell this i know we've got the alfalfa here but as we've shown alfalfa is not actually of any use to us in our maize plus mixtures the hay is not recognized and it's not really of any value we can buy hay just as cheap so we're probably better off having more grass we do have to come over here we do have the uh the whole crop disco here or direct disc header here for the forage harvester so we probably have to come over and pick that up because at the moment i don't have any intention as much as i wanted to of actually doing any uh any whole crop silage so we'll see we'll take it back over to the yard but that could be up for sale if anyone was interested in looking but we do have a few other things we're going to talk about in just a little bit and uh put out a few opportunities and ask if there is any that could come in return so we'll worry about that in just a little while let's jump in here Take another cruise, leave the two cows there on their own, and uh, we'll go and get these ones over into the barn. So we're back over here at the barn with the dairy cows, and we'll just jump into the menu. You can see here we've got our 48 in the trailer. We're going to select those and move them into there, and then we will grab our two Angus and uh, get them out of there because we don't want them to be doing any crossbreeding or anything like that so we'll get those down we'll get them sold and we'll get the other two over here so next time you see us we will have uh, done both of those tasks and we'll probably be back at the yard having a talk about what we are having planned down there well, we're just arriving back here at the yard we've got all of the animals where they're meant to be two more sold and two more over there uh, in the barn but as you'll see first thing you'll notice in our changes we've increased the width here of our entrance we'll just get out of that car's way just have a quick look around here we had a tree cut down there on the right and we've really splayed this entrance out so we can try and avoid all the issues we've had with turning in and out that's really made a big difference we've adjusted the auto drive course and everything like that to try and get that working much much more efficiently much more better for us so that is the first of our changes we'll come down here and you'll start to see the next of them as well so we've made a few more additions here into the feedlot we've got some uh, water troughs in there we've also got some movable fences in there for shelter and as well as that we've actually put some loading docks and loading ramps and uh, holding pens and everything here on the end so there is a way that we can get our cattle loaded in and delivered into each of them otherwise it was uh, going to be a little bit impossible of course this is just for uh, realism we can't use the triggers or well, the triggers for the feedlot aren't on the side here uh, they are or not on the end sorry they are down the sides so we can't quite do it properly but uh just to give the farm a little bit more of an authentic feel we've gone and done those i worked with the constraints i had i realized that the shape and layout of them probably isn't exactly what you'd do normally but uh it has worked for us one of the other comments i had in the last video here with the feedlot was the trigger for the manure so i have put down the manure extension triggers that came with the manure pits from 46 mods so we're just gonna have to wait and see whether that is all close enough that we can pick up all the manure out of the feedlots We'll just have to wait and find out i'm not actually sure whether that's going to work or not but that is sort of the main crux of the changes we've had here our silage has fermented so we are going to be able to lift those lids up off the bunkers take the covers off there and start to use that silage once we've run out of the grass bales down there or the silage bales down there and then if we just come over here one final little addition we've been talking about for a while is we have gone and added in a fuel fill point so that is here for us to be able to refuel from it doesn't have any in it yet we do need to get a delivery of diesel uh, but we'll organize that and get that filled up but we do have 
a little fuel point there now so we don't have to worry about running all the way over to the uh, fuel station every time we need to fill up so that is uh, where we're at so we've been talking about some other changes we've been thinking about making here or looking at making and being mindful of how much money we have how much debt we have and what we're going to be doing to maximize that so we're going to have a little bit of equipment come up for sale on auction one will be the uh, disc mower for the front of the forage harvester brand new never used so if anyone was interested in that please make me an offer in the comments that will be for sale and i'll make sure we have a lineup for that and uh, we might just put a little community post up and people can bid on it or do something like that just to have a little bit of fun the other one will be the other of the small feed wagons we've got there uh, we've used this one quite a lot but the other one that is over at field 195 pretty much brand new again we'll be putting that one up for auction and getting rid of that i am actually on the fence as to whether we keep both and the reason is the truck works really well and we'll be keeping that because I think that's going to be the most efficient way for feeding the cows at the three different uh, barns. But we're just going to have a look. We've got another feed mixer we're going to look at buying. So taking a look here under animals where all the feed mixers are, we've got a few modded ones in here. But the one we're looking for right down here is the Big Mega Mammut. Now this is $53,000, comes with a capacity of 64,000 litres. So that is more than the truck and trailer unit has which will be fantastic for using down here in the feedlot. We'll be able to get that loaded up and uh, get it running around on a little bit of a chain going back and forth between the feed troughs and our feeding loading points. So I think that would be a fantastic addition, $53,000. So that's not actually too bad for us. But the issue is the 250 horsepower requirement. Now we just take a look at our existing tractors. We've got the Kubota and the John Deere 168 and 146 horsepower respectively. And in our large tractors, the T8 and the Versatile, they're both over 400 horsepower. So we don't really have a tractor that sits in that middle range. So I'm really in the market to try and find something in around that 250 to 300 horsepower range. So I'm looking to see what is out there in the used market. If anyone has a tractor that they've had on their saves that they want to get rid of, that they would be willing to sell to me and send up to Chilliwack, please again let me know in the comments because I would be dead keen to have a look at it and potentially purchase it so long as it's been well looked after and cleaned that is my one proviso as i stand here looking at a very dirty truck so that is a couple of our big changes we're looking at making here upgrading our feeding wagon and also upgrading our or purchasing an additional tractor now that's not the end of the changes we are going to be making we've got the two Maya forage boxes here and if you recall when we last did the silage harvest with these we had a great deal of issues with these front axles so again these are both going to be cleaned up and put on the market to sell so if again if anyone is interested in buying a couple of well-loved well-used forage boxes you can see the issues you've seen the issues you know what issues they come with please again i'll put that in a post and you can make me an offer or drop something in the comments let me know what you'd be prepared to pay for them what we're going to be replacing these with well we still need a side discharge to work with the blow up correctly and appropriately and uh, the Moria forage boxes from again 46 mods here they have a uh, fixed axle one here without the tandem steer it's just a drawbar which will work much much better we won't have the issues and still can come with the side discharge quite pricey we're looking at 75,000 and uh, there's options in here as well which pushes it up even just the unload mechanism which we have to have adds an extra twelve to fifteen thousand dollars on it so uh we can put a higher side on it as well doesn't change the capacity so we probably wouldn't go and do that but these are what we're looking at buying so again a little bit of money needs to go into those so we will be looking to sell our old forage boxes here so any offers will be greatly accepted well now of course we've talked a lot about what our plans are and what we're wanting to achieve but the main focus is we're cattle farmers and here are our new cattle arriving in here for the feedlots so we've got three trucks coming in i've come from a little bit further afield than our local dealer uh, we had to order them from a little bit further and here they are it's a good test actually of our new yard entrance and uh turn in there seem to work okay so we'll get those all unloaded and put into the barns there should be if my maths is correct there should be 144 total uh, 48 in each truck so i'm looking forward to getting these in there and uh, seeing some more animals in our feedlot it's gonna be quite an exciting step in our next stage of our progress there we are third truck coming in as we speak nicely done that worked out pretty well so we'll go and get these all unloaded and uh, we will 
then have to have a look at our feed requirements. Uh, we might leave them just a little bit, let them settle down after their long trip. And uh, we've got some other work we need to go and get on to. The oats over the road are needing harvesting. So we might go and try and make a start on those. Not sure if we'll get through them, but uh, we do need to go and get into that. So let's head on down and go and get these unloaded. Well, look at that. That looks pretty cool. Just pan around here. We've got two truckloads of Angus. So that would be uh, 96 on this side and on the other side we went for the limousines and we've got one truckload of those so 48 limousines and we've split them across each of the feedlot pens that we built so that they are sort of evenly spaced across those which will work out pretty nicely it means we'll have to feed them all individually but that doesn't matter we'll be able to run along the side there and set up some auto drive hopefully to get that feed working out pretty well they look all pretty comfortable in there enjoying their surroundings wandering through the water trough and the fence and whatever else there might be in there as decoration but uh, we'll just look past that little fact all right well i guess we can let the truck drivers head off now they can go back to wherever they're going and go and get on to their next job and uh, we'll need to do exactly the same which is other than feeding this lot is to go and get the combine out and go and make a start on the oats it was like a long time since we last drove a combine here in chilliwack but it is time to jump into the new holland the twin rotor get it all cranked up and off over into the field all looks pretty good looking at the repair bar and the fuel I don't think we need to worry about topping any of that up so we're just going to get this taken over we're going to come over and shuffle a little bit of machinery around we need to get the grain cart as well as the header and get that over there and then we'll have to take a truck over as well to run the corn or the corn the oats back over here into the bins and get that all going as well so uh, a little bit of setup to do but we'll get that organized and we will be ready to make a start very very soon well i think everything is geared up and ready to go we've just brought the truck over it's going to run auto drive back to the silos for us we do have an auto drive course set up for the grain cart we need to get the field cut open before we can start that uh, so we also need to unfold the harvester so we'll get that unfolded get those tops there on the hopper all folded up to give us that extra bit of capacity and we should now be all ready to go. There we are, turned on. We'll head a lower down and we will get into these oats now. First things first, need to make sure we are dropping our straw swath, which we're not, so we'll change that over. Let's have a look. Has that done it? Go forward a little bit more and hopefully, there we are, we're getting a straw swath off because we do want to be able to collect our straw off this field and use it to make some straw bales so we can pad out our mixture make our maize and corn maize and uh, grass maize grass silage go just that little bit further when we're making our food mix so uh, this is all pretty good we're going to set up a GPS course as well while we're running along here uh, so we'll create an A point and also a B point and that'll give us a nice straight edge along this side of the field already 10% full so we're not going to get a huge yield well I mean it's going to be a good yield I'm not going to complain but uh, it's not going to mean we're going to have to be having too many issues with grain carts we are just going to have to manage that just a touch when we get time to uh, particularly like we've just experienced also on Hunter Indiana with FSG opening up headlands can be a little bit of a tricky proposition here when you are harvesting so what we might do I know we've made this into quite a big field and in fact we'd probably actually be better going uh, on long ways across the field that way up and down it that way rather than across here so I might yet even change our GPS heading and uh, turn it 90 degrees and do that in the other direction we will wait and see we're just going to carry on along here jump into a little bit of a time lapse and uh, we'll see you once we've made a bit more progress
Just a finishing off our third headland pass around this field uh, and I think we might just about call that quits for today in here or at least for this episode. This is uh, nice and open now but that is going to take us a long time to get through the remainder but it's going well. We're going to have a massive straw. The amount of straw we're going to bale up off this is going to be astounding. Now I've been thinking about it as we've been going around what we might do next time. We might actually set the combine up on course plate to do the remainder of the field. Uh, to do the up and down rows and that'll give us the opportunity then to use course play if we wish for uh, bailing a little bit later on and uh, we can just double up on loading or whatever it might be because we are I expect going to have a lot of straw bales to get up and take off this field but we'll just get around here make sure we finish off this third pass and that will also mean we can bale what we want to on these outside headland passes or not on the headlands we could completely ignore them and just set the combine on some up and down rows and then the baler will follow along with those. Then we won't have any issues with the headlands already being baled or anything like that. So I think we'll just go and park this up over here on the edge of the field. We've got our grain cart back. They are unloading. The truck's been off at least once I think. We'd have to actually have a look in our, uh, in our silo and see how much oats we've already got over there. And yes, must be one trip, 35,000 litres that has been taken over there. So at the moment, not worth a great deal, $500. But if we have a look in time saving stock check, uh, 740. So already we've got $25,000 worth of oats sitting in storage. So that's not bad. Uh, just while we're here, we've got a lot of milk again, 96,000 litres of milk that we need to get taken off and uh, deposited. So that will be something else to do next time. And I just see in the background, we've parked in the way of the auger wagons so we'll just back up and let them get back to where they want to be put the header down there and uh, turn things off and leave that for next time so as we said that has been a good start there in that field I'm very excited to get here into the oats and obviously get some straw off the field as well as get some money which we will get eventually when we get the chance to sell the oats we just turn around here you can see our corn if you probably noticed it that is pretty much ready to be chopped and uh, made into some silage so we'll be getting into that very very soon as well we do need to sort out all those items we talked about earlier uh, the first being the forage boxes to be able to get in and do those because I don't want to be running around using the ones we had so I will put a post up I will leave a pinned comment in the video to uh, invite offers of tender I suppose or uh, bids on what you might want to buy of my equipment we'll put a post and a photo up as well and uh, just list what there is for sale because I'd dearly love to get rid of it raise some money and uh, be able to buy some of that new equipment so next time we'll be back here finishing off the harvest we're going to have some animals to feed uh, what else we're going to have to do there's always something to do if we get done enough we'll be baling some straw uh, we could even get into chopping some silage but I don't think that will be in the next episode yet this is going to be our focus along with keeping the animals happy and selling some milk we do have a lot of milk like we said to sell so again that's a whole lot more income so it's always good it's always good I have actually been considering and just before we go I have considered buying the dairy uh, and that might be something we branch out into because uh, it is a little bit of a issue at the moment the dairy is blocking up any more uh, purchase so our only option is the Costco which seems to be at a reasonably similar price but uh, it's not ideal so maybe we'll look at branching out and adding a little bit of production into the side business we're making enough milk we might as well try and make some money off some of the side products we could be making rather than feeding the middleman so Lots and lots to consider, lots and lots to do, and I'm still really enjoying this series, as I hope you are as well. So as always, thank you all very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed that episode, and I'll catch you in the next one.
Hello everyone, Argsy here. Welcome back to the Canadian Cattle Farmer here in Chilliwack in British Columbia. Uh, exciting day today. As you would have seen, we have finished off the oat harvest that we had started last time in the live stream. Uh, we're just getting the last of the bales here loaded into the shed and we'll go and have a look in just a second at exactly how many bales. But we have got more developments, more improvements coming through for the farm um, and we'll go through those in just a little bit. But let's go and have a look here. 297 bales. I think I guess 300. And uh, we're not too far off, are we? Look at that. That looks pretty impressive, actually, seeing it pretty much half full. In fact, over half full, 560 capacity. So let's see. It'd be great to be able to do the same thing here with the hay uh, as well. But we'll have to wait and see whether we can achieve that or not. But like I said, lots of exciting developments. You can see our money has gone up. And we have received some payments for the uh, equipment we have for sale. And we'll just pop around in just a minute. Uh, we'll get this parked up and go and have a look. All right, we'll just squeeze through here between the truck and the shed. We can fit just, and we've got a lot of equipment all lined up out here that needs to be washed fresh out of the oat fields and needing a good clean because obviously we don't need the combine or the header or the baler. Well, we'll actually need the baler hopefully for some hay, but the combine and header are all done again for a season, so we'll be going and getting those put away. But what you'll see, we've got a truck here all loaded up with one of the feed mixes. TGM Farming has offered us $42,000 for the brand new or effectively brand new unused mixer so that is on the way off up to his farm I'm not sure exactly what part of the country or he's farming on or whether it's heading south across the border into the states but that is all on the way to TJ which is fantastic now you'll see as well in the back here both the forage boxes have gone and we had a couple of offers on those Steve came in with an offer of 25 cents for the both of them uh, he just wanted them for the scrape value and wanted to make sure no one had the displeasure of using those again a valent effort Steve valent offer but uh, we actually had an even better offer come through Hoonigan Farmer offered me $80,000 for both the forage boxes so that was too good a deal to turn down. I don't know how much of a Hoonigan he is and what he exactly has his intents there for using those. But uh, thank you very much for that Hoonigan farmer. Looking forward to seeing those on your farm and they are on their way down to you now. So hope you enjoy those. As for the other bits of equipment, we do still have the uh, slightly used feed mixer there. If it's of any interest, it's actually got 7,000 litres of uh, TMR in there too. So that could be a bit of a sweetener for the deal. Not sure how good it'll be once it's shipped so you better get in quick and we've also got the uh, header here for the forage harvester the dealer has said they'll take that off me at a heavily reduced price so we do have a buyer for it but uh, i'd prefer to see it go to someone who is going to use it and get a good deal from me rather than it going to the dealer and probably getting marked up again and paying more for it so if you do need one give us a yell it is still there and i'm dearly keen love to get rid of it so that is the equipment we have sold which Gives us a little bit extra money, 350 grand as you can see up there in the top corner. So we've had the payment come in for the forage boxes and the feed mixer. One other thing I haven't done yet and we do need to do, we're going to sell that piece of land over on the far side where we took the cattle out of last time. So we'll just jump into the map and we will go and get rid of that right now. So there we go, lot 153, $204,000 we're going to sell that. And that is going to go straight into our coffers. So there we go, $557,000, which is fantastic. Now with all this money, we've got some things to spend it on, including paying down our debt. Don't worry, I have not forgotten about that. But tractor and feed mixer were the two priorities. And I had quite a few offers of tractors come through, which is very nice to see. Farm some guy had a long wheelbase New Holland T7, 270 horsepower. That's down on uh, in the upper Mississippi River Valley. He's been using that for feeding cattle as well. 169,000 new with about 12 months on it. Uh, so he had that. I needed to make an offer to him. Um, who else do we have? Alex Mills came through with a couple of John Deere's. Both less than 15 hours, but they were only 220 horsepower. So I don't think they were quite going to cut it for this big feed mixer that we have coming through to us very soon. Uh, technically, F1 has an old 8R, about 300 horsepower, 2008 model running wide spaced row crop tyres on the market for $96,000 because she needs a good wash and a roof replacement well. I'm all right with the washing part of it. Not sure about the roof replacement. Uh, Miles Brush had a trade on a Case Pro 306 horsepower, 40 hours out of Michigan. Black in color. Can be fully repaired, repainted, and shipped for me. And Scott Freefall came through with a Challenger Yellow Voltra, about 300 horsepower, down in Middles, uh, Middleburg, Pennsylvania. He'd transport it to Canada, but I'd have to pay the customs and name a price if we're interested. And we'd talk some more. So all of those sounded really attractive, um, but the idea of having to ship something up here from the States just seemed a little bit off. But we had someone who's in Edgewater, not too far down the road in Saskatchewan from us, and uh, they had a John Deere ready to go. So John Bewley 
an 8410, 15 and a half hours, already in Canada and Edgewater, perfect mixer trailer. He's upgraded to a 7R and he was offering us that for $45,000. So at that price and uh, that power, it was too good an option not to turn down as a dedicated mixing tractor. So uh, that is already at that dealer. We're going to go and pick that up very, very soon uh, once we've sorted out all the equipment here. So lots going on. Now, before we go any further, I'm just going to race over here because we've got one more development. And if you caught the live stream, you would have seen it. We are putting in a new uh, cow pen, cow barn. We've got a free stall coming in here that will hold 1,000 head of cows. So we're going even further to consolidate our business here and bring everything here into one site and uh, just simplify it as much as we can. Save a lot of the running around that we've been doing. So looking forward to getting that built. We've obviously got the pad down, got some uh, metal in here and getting everything all leveled out. So hopefully that will be built in the not too distant future. So in terms of other developments, we are going to buy some more land. Field 141, or it's field 149, farmland 141 down the back here, $168,000. So that is going to be our first purchase to replace some of the farmland that we've lost. So we're going to get that bought. And we've already paid for the tractor and feed mixer, which are down at the dealer. So we'll go and pick those up. So that still leaves us $380,000. We're going to need a little bit of money here for the free stall to get that built. And uh, also, if we want to buy some more cattle, we don't have to just yet. Uh, so the rest of that money will probably go down on paying off some of our debt. We've got the oats in the bin. We've got some milk to sell. So everything's looking pretty rosy for us here on the cattle farmer. We're looking forward to a bit more progress. So deal now. We're going to go and wash some equipment. We're going to get this truck off and on the way to TJM, TJM Farming. And uh, then we're going to actually get these animals fed because I've been sitting here very patiently since they were delivered and haven't had too much to eat. I've settled in. They're looking nice and comfortable now there in the feedlot, so we need to get them working, get them fattening up and uh, making us some money. So we'll get this all sorted out and we'll get down to it. Once everything else has been put away, just the combine here to go and we're going to go tuck this here into the shed next to the swather there. Of course we are going to need that swather out in a little while when we have the grass all ready to mow, but there we go. And that's probably going to be, let's we'll see as far as we can get in. Forage harvest will be coming out very soon as well because we're going to have all the uh, silage over the road to do, all the maize silage, corn silage, there we go. And that's a pretty good deal, really should give that a wash, but uh, that'll get a good clean down once we're finished with it. Then it will look nice and shiny then like the new Holland does. Right, let's head on down. We're going to get one of our staff to take us down in the pickup. We'll head on down and go and get this new feed wagon picked up. Well, there they go. They're going a different way back to the yard by the looks of things. Going out that way, but that's fine. They'll find their way there. But there they go. And here we are with our uh, new-to-us tractor, John Deere 8410, and a uh, big, bigger Mega Mammut feed wagon, 64,000 litre capacity, 64 cubic metres of food able to be mixed up in this beast. So this is a pretty impressive looking piece of kit and this is going to be a fantastic asset to us to help us get all our animals fed. Now this has got more capacity in it than the truck and trailer combo we're running at the moment and of course is a whole lot easier to use because it's just one so we can just fill and make the mix up in one rather than having to switch between the two mixes that we're using at the moment on the back of the truck. So looking forward to getting this all up and running. So let's jump in, make our way back to the farm and we will get started on getting some food mixed up for the animals. You have to excuse the beeping, but I thought we'd just take a look here at the interior of the tractor. Very well looked after. John did a great job uh, detailing this before it came up to us. It has been up here and delivered. A, we've had the dealer go over it and given it the once over, changed all the oil filters, uh, hydraulic filters, redone all the fluids and everything like that. So we should be all good to go for quite some time. Like I said, it is just going to be a feed tractor. We're not going to be using it for any tillage or planting or anything, at least not at this stage. We shouldn't need to with the tractors we already have. But uh, yeah, nice tidy looking bit of kit and uh, that feed mixer on the back there. Massive. But anyhow, let us get back down to the yard and we will go and have a play with it. Looking forward to seeing what it can do. So, safely back here at the yard with the mixer. We're just going to come straight around here. Now, our first option or first... Input is going to have to be our maize silage there, so we are just going to have to get our truck out of the way because uh, we do want to mix it up here with the new mixer, see how that all works. I'm still interested to see whether we'll keep this or whether we're able to set things up and just run with the one mixer. By the time we've got all of the animals back down here, get the free stall built and we'll bring all the dairy cattle back down here as well as the beef cattle, there may not be a necessity to have this rig running around. Uh, if I recall correctly, I do have this on a lease to own purchase option at the moment, so we could always return it to the dealer and cut our losses with it. But uh, we'll get it out of the way and we will go and get things set up here in the other mixer. 
we just brought up our mixing uh, recipe there for what we're going to do. We've got the set to young stock. Of course, all of these animals in here are relatively young. I think we bought them at uh, 10 or 12 months old. So we're just going to try that at the moment. I was having a look at the beef cattle mix. Uh, that requires clover silage or uh, clover hay or alfalfa hay. Of course, our clover is still growing and our alfalfa field we've just sold. And we did have the issues with the alfalfa. Now, I am playing on the updated version of Chilliwack. This was updated about uh, the beginning of April. And I understand that Chumpy Farmer has made all the field types compatible with Maze Plus now. So the alfalfa hay will be alfalfa hay rather than alfalfa winrow, which is what it was when we were last using it. So it might be an option to consider that. Of course, it would mean we do have to plant some alfalfa somewhere, but uh, that's not an issue. We've got some land to do that on. We could even look at doing it down on the back of this grass field where we've just purchased that new one. So we'll have to have a look at that in a little bit. We need to get some precision farming data and everything like that put in there as well. Let's just head on over here because we do need to start getting some maize silage in here. We're just going to have another look at our mix and just make sure we're getting everything correct. So you can see down there 15% minimum of either grass or maize silage and 25% minimum of hay, 10% minimum of straw. So no shortage of straw at the moment. Uh, hay, a little bit of an issue. So 10% of course is going to be 6,500 or 6,400 litres. So 25% hay is going to actually require us about 15,000 litres, a little bit more than that. So it might pay to have a look and see if we do actually have enough hay. We do still have some of this here. This is uh, alfalfa hay, of course, 4,500 litre bales. There's two, four, six, seven of those there. We just come over and have a look here as well. We do have eight hay bales in there. So we do still do have some that we can make that. So I think we'll be right to make at least one mix and we can take that round and give each of the uh, feedlots just a little bit. Not even sure how much it's going to take. 64,000 litres might go some way. But anyhow, let's get some maize silage put up here into the uh, into the back. So there we go. All are running as it should. 15% required of silage, which is about 10,000 litres. So we'll let this get up to about that. Uh, then we might look at putting a grass bale in a little bit later. We've got some silage there. But let's get 10,000 litres get the 15% in here for that. We do have to decide what we're going to top it up with. Because of course those are just the minimums. The mixture quantities we've just called out, 25, 10 and 15, doesn't actually make us up to 100% mix. So we will have to put some extras in there, but we'll have to make sure we do keep the minimum. So there we go, that is the minimum of our silage. We'll just carry on there. I'm basically going to try and make a minimum mixture, and then we'll see what we have to adjust for everything else. So there we go, that is, uh, that is that there. So let's drive down here, and we will get a couple of bales spawned out, and put them into the mixer here with the wheel loader. So four hay bales, two straw bales, the hay bales are four and a half thousand litres, there's 18,000 there, and the straw bales are 5,000 litres, so we've got 10,000 litres there. So we'll get those put up into the mixer and see how our mixing ratio looks like once we've done that. First time we've been able to use the case here with uh, bales as well, other than in the field, so hopefully we'll be able to get this working pretty well. I'm going to try and get this bale off the top and uh, put that down on the one next to it, and then we should be able to pick up all four at once which make things a lot easier and a lot quicker than uh, what we were doing having to use the grab there on the uh, Kubota with the front loader. So let's just see we can go and get these all speared in exactly the right spot. Perfect. That is going to really speed up the rate at which we can make our feed mixture by being able to use and pick up that many bales all at once. Get these lifted up. A little bit of concern there, are we going to have height to get up and across? We do. I was a little bit nervous that it might not quite fit. Oh. There we go. Pull those back out and they should get chewed down into our mix. Let's change texture there. What are we showing? Silage and hay. So we are still looking good. So that should be a correct mixture. I'm just looking at the ratios there. 38% silage and 61% hay still sits in the correct ratios. And we'll throw some straw in there now as well. I'll get these straw bales up in here as well and see how our ratio looks once we've got that in there. Hopefully that was not going to tip over the edge. No, there we go. And that just turned a nice shade of brown. In fact, it did tip over the edge. It's come out the front. But let's have a look. 39,000 litres and we do have a TMR for young stock in there. Now, of course, it wasn't showing up correctly because we hadn't put the straw in. And uh, it has actually detected that, that straw bale. It's only 360 litres, so it's kind of fallen out, but it had used most of it. So we'll get that picked up 
and put in there as well or else that's going to cause us all sorts of problems but uh, that's working out pretty well we're just going to have to work on our mixture and uh, figure out exactly what we need to add in now probably pretty much doubling that a little bit more of everything one more straw bale will definitely probably be enough and then we'll just balance it out with a mix of silage and hay so that's two more hay get those two off let them drop in there and one more straw bale and we'll just have a look at our ratio once we've got that off hopefully we can get it off the fork and there we go everything's still good ratio wise we can just bump up our silage now to top it up which is another 11,000 litres or so so I think a couple of these grass bales and that'll get us close enough to being pretty much 100% full we don't have to get it perfect every time but we'll just uh, pick these two up here they look like a couple of prime candidates for getting thrown in here in fact they're only 3,000 litres each aren't they so we do probably actually need to take three of them so let's see if we can grab this one here as well there we go that'll be 9,000 litres of silage total i was thinking they were closer to 4,000. we've dropped one that's all right we'll get that picked up put that 9,000 litres of silage in there and we'll be pretty much good to go and there we go 62,000 litres there or thereabouts so we're not too far off being uh having a perfect mix and everything is about the right quantity we certainly can't put four straw bales in that would take us to 20,000 litres and i think uh 30% of 64,000 is less than 20,000 so it is limited to three straw bales so that can be our filler then we can mix up the rest between the hay and silage and in fact we probably should have gone the other way and used a little bit more silage because uh, when you look around we've still got some corn silage but we've got a million or so litres of silage sitting over there in bunkers so for now that might have been the better option but anyhow let's hop up in here and we will go and see if we can find some triggers here to get these animals fed Certainly no issue pulling this, this truck, tractor has more than enough grunt to pull this fully loaded. Now I am going to try and set up an auto drive course for this, but uh, this is just a little bit of exploration to see if we can go and find the triggers. I'm just going to check which tip side we have open. We are. We can get onto the right menu there. There you go, we are on right side flick between left and right so we'll run down this side here with the angus and we will go and see how we can do with getting these ones fed so hopefully here we go we found a trigger already there so we'll get that turned on in fact we've got triggers all the way along the back so we have a little bit put in there because i do want to try and do this with auto drive so there's one trigger if we drive along we should find another one about halfway along here it was there in fact we've driven through it already I've still been in the first trigger because there we are we're getting a trigger the whole way along here for those ones and then we should get into the third pin here and find a trigger for that as well there it is right that works pretty perfect now the question is going to be is can we get turned around in the end here without going into the field and get lined up again for the other side and it looks like the answer is going to be only just because we do need to be on the right hand side again so that's all right but we do get that trigger along there so it may be a case of actually feeding in from the other end first trying to figure out the best way to do that but we have managed to go fast enough and find all three triggers all at once as we've gone along not quite the last one there we go right let's have a go now that we've got that all sorted out let's see if we can set this up on some auto drive so we've got a auto drive course set up there we've got feedlot 1c 1b and 1a and feedlot 2a 2b and 2c so i've numbered the feedlots and i've actually named them as well using the uh, rename option for your placeables uh, so row one here in front of us where all the anguses are row two at the back of the limousines and then we've got the abc starting down at the loading ramp end for both rows so because we're going to head around from this direction feedlot 1c will be the first one that gets fed so if we just have a look on our left here it's a little bit out of order because uh this will set it by alphabetical order uh, but hopefully it does detect the first one that it gets to and uh, just fills that but i am a little bit worried by how much food that these feedlots might have it might be a whole lot more than what we're used to because if you look here we have delivered 1500 liters into these limousines there's only 16 of them in the pen and uh, the capacity has not gone up very far at all so we could be in for quite a bit of an effort trying to get these all fed or keeping them fed or keeping their uh, feed full as you can see there 
the one we've probably got the most in, the 7,000 litres, the capacity does not move much at all. So uh, that could be auto drive won't work on that regard because if we just left it to go to 1C, it would fill this one up before it even moves on to any of the others. So the uh, cycle delivery option might not be the most efficient one here. It might just be a case of sending a full feed wagon to each lot uh, one at a time. But that's all right. That's six trips. We can handle that one. Anyhow, let's press play and see exactly what happens here. Going to go to the harvest store load first, but we'll trick it into going to the feed lots and let's see what happens. So hopefully I've got the turning and everything done correctly. This end shouldn't be too much of a problem. You can see everything coming in and turning. The only thing I haven't done, which I think will be a bit of an issue, is we have not powered up the feed mixer. So it is probably just going to get here and not deliver it, but we will wait and see. If we need to, we'll just stop things and intervene. And there we go. No, it's not detected a trigger, so we'll turn that off. We will power up the mixer and press play again and see what happens. Now it's driving straight past these triggers because it hasn't detected them. It's not close enough yet. It is heading to Harvest Store 1A, which is a little bit unfortunate. We might have to go through and renumber the feedlot triggers so that A is the first one we get to rather than trying to keep it alphabetical. Unless there's an option to not have it alphabetical. And of course, it did skip straight past it because we restarted the course and it wants to go to the Harvest Stores. Which if we just have a look there I did branch off so it didn't have to go through the whole course if it was empty. So that's alright, we can just uh, tell this once it gets around here onto a straight little piece. Let's carry on and head off to the feedlot. Go and see if you can try to feed some of the animals. So we go ahead to move the uh, loader out of the way. Something else to consider is making sure we keep that track all clear. That path clear for the feed wagon. But let's have a look. I think it's currently heading to 1B if we have a look there. Yes it is. Which is the middle of the... Th three feed lots but depending on our trigger distance it may even detect the trigger here at 1c before it gets too far along let's have a look and there it has so it's detected that feed lot trigger and it's probably going to go and proceed to dump all of the food here into 1c i could probably have set it up with just the one pass along each side if we set our triggers to a long distance maybe 100 meters maybe even longer than that we probably could have put just the single trigger at the end and then it would have filled these up as we go but i think from what we're looking at here and how long it's going to take to fill this trough up and how high it's going to become we are actually having, going to have to individually assign the feed mixer to each of the uh each of the cattle pens and then we are looking at 1C which is getting filled up at the moment 35,000 litres and it is only just tickling the surface of it so it really is going to take us quite a while if we were to fully feed these animals. Of course the pens are designed for a thousand head of animal each so you can understand why it would have quite a decent amount of storage capacity. So uh, there we go that is just going to have to go and do its thing and uh, we'll get it filled up and feed, make some more. Well there we go, we've successfully made our first load of food and got it into the animals. Uh, I've been thinking I think the benefit of having the truck is going to outweigh getting rid of it because while this one is off uh, feeding the animals, once we've made a mix in this and it's off feeding we could have the truck here and be making a load in that as well and that means we have to make three in each to give each of the pens at least one load and uh, we'll be able to manage that and observe how quickly these cattle get through it and uh, whether we need to make a load a day or what it's going to be. Um, but our next issue, as I'm just looking here, is the allocation of hay because of how much we put in there. Two, four, six, seven bales here. It's not going to go very far. Two bales. So we've only got nine bales of hay left and I think we put six into that mix. So we've actually technically only got enough for a little bit more of a mix. So that is really going to be a bit of a concern. Uh, we might have to get into this field, get this grass mode and convert it into hay a little bit sooner than I thought. Uh, I was hoping to wait for another growth stage and get that really nice tall grass before we were mowing it. So uh, we'll see. We might just give that a little bit more consideration and try and decide what we're going to do. So I think for now we're going to make up one more wagon load and we're going to go and allocate that 64,000 litres between the five other pens equally should give them about 12,000 litres or so each and that hopefully gives them enough food to tide them over for the next couple of days. If uh, if it's looking like that and if we can manage that amount we'll uh, certainly be happy to be able to get that hay done in a little bit sooner or a little bit later once that grass has grown properly. I can't forget though we do have all our dairy cattle which also need food so uh, we could even look at buying some hay while we've got some money we could get a couple of loads of hay delivered. Could be another option because hay 
it is looking like it's going to be our issue at the moment. I never thought that would be the case, but it uh, certainly is. Silage, we're going to be flush with silage very soon once we get the maize in. We're already looking pretty with that, so we might maximise as much silage as we can into our mix. And uh, we will use the rest and minimise the amount of hay, but let's get that in there. Just mindful again that maize silage is a necessity for our cow mix, but not so much a necessity here for these animals. So it might be better off using grass silage for these ones. Well, change of plans, we are on our way down to the store to go and buy a load of hay. I hadn't read the recipe correctly. Alfalfa hay was not accepted for the uh, young animal mix. It is only grass hay. So we're kind of hamstrung there. We only had the two hay bales left. So uh, our mix was never going to work with what we have. So unfortunately, we're on our way down. We're going to go buy some more hay. Could have been worse. We could have had no option. We could have had no money and not been able to do this. So fortunately, we are in a position to be able to go down and get this hay. So we'll get down there, get to the store, get back and get that load made up and uh, get it into the cows or into the cattle. Fortunately, the alfalfa hay can still be used for our cow mix. So uh, we can still have something here to feed the girls with. We're all looking very happy out there in the grass, might I add. All right, so we're down here at the shop. I was just doing a little bit of maths. We've got these square bales, which we obviously don't have a square baler, but there's nothing stopping us using these. 8,000 litres for uh, $1,490 versus the round ones, which are 4,500 litres for 980. So I think my maths tells me I'm right. I think it's more affordable. We get more value out of our square bales than we will out of our round bales. So we're going to load these up. The other benefit, I was looking at the trailer, we can load 36 of these on the trailer versus only 34 of the round bales. So we are going to get a lot more hay. Of course it's going to cost us more, but we're going to get a lot more hay buying uh, 36 of these than we do getting 34 round bales. So we'll get that, get it loaded up and get back down to the farm. All right, happy days. 36 hay bales here. It cost us a fair bob. I'm not going to say how much. It's about $40,000, I think. Rewind the video and you'll be able to see how much money we had when we drove down there and how much we've got on our way out. But uh, worth it. It's going to be worth it to be able to get all our animals fed and keep them fed until we've got our own hay. And uh, square bales are going to be nice to handle. So let's get back to the yard and get all the cattle fed. Well, they fit in there quite nicely, even if I do say so myself. We've got one out here already somewhere behind us. There it is, 8,000 litre of bale. So we're going to be very judicious with our use of these, make the most of our silage and straw towards our feed mix. But if we just pop over here and have a look, uh, another 8,000 litres of hay in there is going to double that and hopefully will be enough to get us to the 25,000 litres minimum there for hay. So we'll keep an eye on it, but we'll get our food mix all finished off. There we are. I was pretty nervous actually putting the last three silage bales in just then, but the silage sitting at 49, maximum of 50, hay at 26, a minimum of 25. So we've got that pretty much spot on. So good to know those ratios, 31,000 litres of silage is about the most we can put in, 17,000 litres of hay and 15,000 litres of straw. So we'll keep that in our mind. But uh, next time, so we're going to go and just very quickly race around, go and put uh, 12,000 litres in each of the pens that haven't been fed properly yet, and uh, then we'll move on. I've got a little bit of milk to go and sell before the sun sets, and we do need to check on our dairy cows and see if they need any food as well. Again, I'm going to be careful with feeding them because uh, with the free store building coming in down here, we may not need to feed them as much down at their barns as they have been getting. But anyhow, let's just very quickly race through and get all of these cattle fed. The last lot of food here into the limousines and there we go, given that most of them actually got 13,000, the ones in the middle had 12, but that must have just about added up to our 64,000. I should have done the math properly, but uh, we're not too far off there with that. So we're just going to bring this back in here and park it up for now. And uh, we'll go and take a quick look at the animal screen and figure out what we need to do with any of the others. Whether we need to feed them anymore or uh, whether we're all good to go and get some milk salt. So they've all got at least 14,000 litres in, 14, 17, 16 there. 15 for those ones, 17, and then those in one C who got a decent amount, 41,000 litres. Already see we're getting some slurry there too, which is good. We'll have to go and see that is going to transfer through to our slurry tank or whether we need to go in and add the triggers and make sure we're getting that 
close enough. Now, just having a look at our other cows, the brown swiss up the top there, they are looking happy. They've got lots of food down there where they came or were moved into. Uh, the Holston's in 125, they've got a little bit of food there, 15,000 litres, so we might have to go and top them up just a little bit. Uh, but the most worry here, the Holsteins in 203 are actually completely out, and uh, their productivity and health is dropping. So, have to urgently go and grab the truck. We will take a load of food down to them, and uh, then we'll also go and probably load up and take a load to the Holsteins as well. So we're going to get some more food mixed up, then we'll be able to go and get just a little bit of milk sold. If we have a look here, 114,000 litres of milk. It's almost two truckloads, and uh, you look at the price, 80 grand. It's not too bad. Pays for the hay. Well, while the truck's out, we decided we'd mix up a load here in the big mixer and take this to the cows just down the road. They were the other ones requiring some food, so we will get this down there and uh, make the most of it while the truck's out, instead of just hanging around and waiting for it to turn back up. So we'll get down there, get them fed, and uh, that should just about do it for us. I was going to try and get that milk delivered. We'll see how we go for time. And there we go, it works just as well in this shed as it does down in the feedlot. Perfect, this mix is absolutely fantastic. Really pleased we found this one and uh, really pleased with all the machinery we've sold, the income we've made and everything else. All the other big changes we've made to the farm, we've been able to afford it along with, uh, along with everything else we've done. So very, very happy with where things are heading at the moment. But we'll get this all unloaded. I'm not sure, I don't think they'll actually take it all. Should have a little bit left, which we could uh, always give to some of the cattle back down in the feedlot. And there we go. About 7,000 litres that they didn't quite take. So that can go down into the feedlot. We'll find a home for that, no problem. We've got some hungry mouths everywhere at the moment. So we'll get back down to the yard and go and get that unloaded down there. And uh, we'll see if the truck's back. Shouldn't be too far away. Look at that, just following the truck in the drive. Completely unplanned. Did not realise it was actually that far or that close to coming in. Didn't even see it as we were driving along there. But there we are. It has obviously gone and done what it needed to do. Get the animals fed. We'll just let it get out of the way a little bit further. Sneak past here and go and drop the rest of this food off into one of the animal troughs here. Well, there we are. I think that is going to be a good place to wrap this episode up. I'm very happy with uh, where we've got to in the series, actually. Some new equipment, some new feedlots, and uh, even some more development over there with the free stall building coming in. Looking forward, actually, to getting everything brought down here into one spot. I think it's just going to simplify our lives a little bit. It was fun running around between the different parts of the map, but uh, I think having a bit more of a centralised operation as we're growing is going to be a much better option. Now, I do know we've got some more debt to pay down, which we will do. I am going to go and deliver some milk, because if we just have a look in the animal uh, tab, you can see there the Holsteins, they're almost full, and I think if we have a look at the other ones as well, they are full, uh, so we need to go and get that emptied out or we're going to have no more capacity for milk. But I'm going to do that after we've finished recording, do that off stream or off camera and uh, you'll catch up with that next time you're in. See how much money we've made off that milk and uh, we will get that done. But we will be moving into the next day of August in the next episode. Uh, so we will be back again, probably getting over into the maize over the road, over into the corn and getting some of that harvested, which does remind me we do still need to buy the new forage boxes to be able to get that all up and running. So that is another cost that is coming to us. But uh, again, that milk, which will be sold, will probably go some way towards financing all of those new purchases. Now, the other thing to think about as well is if we were to go and sell some of this land, field down here, 203, 195, uh, and possibly the one up the top here, where would we go to expand the farm a little bit further? Be open to suggestions. One of the logical purchases here would be field 132. It's an extension of what we own here over the road. Or coming down the other way here with uh, 137 or 136. 145 would just be a bit of a dream, I think, of ever affording that $967,000. So uh, I think we'd just park that one for now and not even give that any consideration. But certainly some options around us here. Uh, I'm leaning towards 132 up here i think that could be one of the better options for us but uh something to consider i am almost keen with the map update to actually keep hold of this bit of land and give the clover a chance we just have a look here at the growth schedules you'll see the clover growth schedule has actually changed considerably so we might find with the map update that we might actually be able to get some of that cut and harvested before november uh, before winter arrives so perhaps we'll hang on to that land for the foreseeable future not make any hasty decisions or anything like that and as we start talking the rain is starting to fall out of that cloudless sky which is very interesting but that's the breaks anyhow i'm going to wrap things up there thank you all very much for watching hope you've enjoyed that episode we'll catch you in the next one
Hello everyone, Argzy here. Welcome back to the Canadian Cattle Farmer here in Chilliwack, British Columbia. We have got some more upgrades, some more changes coming today, but the main focus, we are going to get into the field over the road, the corn, and get that all chopped up for our maize. But you can see here in front of us, where we did used to have a header and a forage wagon, uh, mixing wagon, we've now got two new forage boxes. So these are the ones we've always been eyeing up, the uh, tandem axle there, they don't have the front pivoting uh, wheels or anything like that they are just the drawbar there on the back of the tractor and these are going to work much much better we're not going to run into any of those pesky issues we had with the old boxes so uh, looking forward to getting out and giving these a go but as for the forage wagon the mixing wagon that's gone to Alex Mills he gave us $32,000 for that and that's headed off down to Edgewater and uh, the dealer did actually come and take the uh, header there we had no interest in that the direct disc header for the forage harvester uh, so they gave us a bit of a deal on that it still wasn't the best uh, we got 45 grand for the uh, header and four grand for the trailer so all in all we did come away with about an $80,000 profit and uh, we ended up spending $170,000 on these new wagons so they did go some way towards buying that. Uh, in other news we've also signed up a contract with a milk delivery firm so we're no longer having to go and ship our own milk down to the sell points every day at 6 p.m they will come and pick up our milk and get it delivered for us so uh, that's certainly going to be one at least exercise that we need to do but the pressing matter is getting out and getting started here on the corn so we're going to go and get things all set up on that so uh, we're going to try again a little bit of auto drive some course play and everything like that uh, we need to get the new holland get the t8 out and hooked up to one of the other forage boxes and then of course the class jaguar up the front there you need to get that pulled out and get the uh, head and everything put on that so we can get on over and do what we need to do now before we go further just run back over this way we have got the uh, blower all set up and in position as well yeah you can see the tractor engine everything running not quite aligned with the uh, with the tube we can probably do just a little bit better but we've got that set up there on the Kubota we used the John Deere last time but of course we we're using the Kubota to haul uh, the forage wagons so we're not going to have to do that this time so we're all set up and good to go I don't think there's much else we need to talk about animals are all fed uh, we are going to have to get in and feed them some more they're not the uh, not the fullest but uh, we are running out of food and uh, need to spend some time doing some prep and getting some uh, more product into the silo because we need to get it starting to ferment so let's go and make a start so we've got everything set up the Jaguar here we've got the header on we're gonna have to make sure we give this a clean it does not look very good when you leave your equipment that dirty for that long so we have to make sure we get that a clean but uh, that is filling up with diesel and then we've got the two tractors over here both warming up and getting it ready to go now we're going to run those on a little bit of auto drive uh, but to start off with just to make things a little bit easier we will drive the first load or two just to make sure we can get the headlands opened up on the field without any issues or anything like that but just let this keep on going it is still running it's taking a decent amount of diesel I think it's about 800 litres just about gone into it so we shouldn't have any issues with it running out on us in the field and there we go, full. I don't know how much it actually took. Close to 1,200 litres? I think we'd already filled a tractor up out of it. But uh, that is a pretty big fuel tank in there. I suppose when it's running for as long as it does and with the revs it works at, it does take quite some time and could probably chew through quite a bit of diesel. So let's head on over the road. Now hopefully everything is all set up. I haven't had to change or haven't tried to change any of our waypoints or anything like that that we have set up on this field. We've already got a uh, waypoint over here just on the other side. So the tractors should be able to just come straight across and jump over in here to get into the field and get started. But uh, we're just going to pull up in here. We will go and grab one of the tractors and uh, we will make a start, get things unfolded. There we go, that can go down, get the spout there all up and open while the header's doing its thing. And uh, we'll be able to set up some course play and get this set up and running. But we're going to grab a tractor so that we've got something to load into before we do that. So we've got our course set up here in course play I've gone for an option to actually use I think it's 10 headlands so the idea being we avoided any of that turning on the end of the field as soon as the uh, tractor gets in next to the forage harvester it'll be good to go so hopefully that'll avoid any of those issues with it turning around as well it did take it a little bit longer because uh, it had to find its course again and then the uh, auto drive tractor had to come around and find it so hopefully doing it this way might make it just a little bit faster so We'll jump in here, get things spun around. I'm going to have to press play here on the driver. I'm going to go from first waypoint. If we press play there, we should be able to let them get ready to start. Of course, they're not going to go because well, they have to throw the forage here into the back of the tractor. So if we jump up in here, 
put ourselves up a little bit closer get everything turned off let's see if we can get close enough here to be able to do this we can and there we go it's uh it's working it looks a little bit yankee the way it's throwing the corn into the back of the tractor but we are up and going and running so i'm going to be intrigued we're already 10 percent full so i'm intrigued how far around this field we are going to get now we do have a uh, full load of silage additive there in the forage harvester as well so we're going to get the bonus yield that we get from having that which is good i think we're going to need as much corn as we can get now do recall that we do have the other field uh, over by the cow barn over in the direction we're looking there beyond uh, so we have to remember we can go and get that one done later as well but here we are we're up and going then we'll get this one filled up and uh, we should then be able to get unloaded looks like we're only going to make it almost one pass we are going to get one pass with 50 percent but uh, we'll get around here and then we'll go and turn on some auto drive send this one off to unload and uh, then we'll be able to bring the other tractor over and do the same and look at that we're not actually going to make it the full way down the field there we go we are 100 percent full so tricky part is going to be seeing if we can turn around into this area i'm not sure if there's a ditch in the uh in the trees here behind us we've managed to back right up with it where the uh, trees are in fact there is a ditch there so we'll just turn a blind eye to that fortunately we do have quite a grunty tractor here to be able to pull it up and out but not actually that much space i think we might actually have to go forward here and uh, just back the whole way along get ourselves back out to the start of the uh, start of the field and we'll do it that way it'll just cost us a few few corn plants there but we'll back our way down and uh, then we'll head on over and get this unloaded so we've turned the tractor onto auto drive after backing our way out of the field we're just going to make sure that everything is going to work here with our course so that we can go down and this will get unloaded so long as it does so long as it gets down there and starts unloading into the blower we'll be fine to go and jump into the new holland uh, we do need to go and specify the course in the forage harvester as well we don't have that up and running just yet but let's just wait and see what happens here as it pulls up here next to the blower hopefully we'll see this fresh maize get unloaded and pushed up into the silo so we've got it working uh, i had to tweak things a little bit with the collisions here on the tractor the tractor's quite a bit wider in the forage boxes you can see there in fact if we go and have a look down the back you can see how much wider those wheels are than the uh, forage box so it's not quite perfect it's uh, a little bit off but we do need to probably just tweak it just a little bit more because i still think we might have a little bit of an issue there with the wheels and those collisions but uh that's going pretty good in the box unloaded down to uh, 30,000 litres so still not the fastest unloaders as we'd expect that's what we found out the first time around let's go and we'll jump into the new holland see if we can get this one up and going as well so let's see if we pull up here behind we should be able to start loading like we were before let's have a look here we go things are up and moving have to be pretty close and pretty precise here with this one but uh we're working we're getting that in there so hopefully i've just set the course uh, the auto drive up in the forage harvester so it's recognizing the field entry field 135 it's the point so hopefully once the uh, other tractor the john deere is all unloaded it will get back over here to the field and uh, will come and join us down the end we're obviously not going to make it the whole way around the field at all we're not going to very close at all but fortunately when we do get down the other side we have got the benefit of having uh, the field we harvested that had the oats in it and we've also got this rather nice generous grass strip along here which makes things just that little bit easier so it should only be that one part we were just on that was actually any difficult and uh, we're through that now so let us see how things go from here and then we are full here in this wagon as well so we'll use the benefit of being on the field here being able to run down the edge of that and over into the farm it does look if i'm just looking over the top of the corn there it does look like i can see the other tractor coming out which is perfect that's pretty good timing if uh, we can get loaded up in the time it takes for them to unload so we'll just uh, scoot here over this part of the field probably should turn traffic off off because uh undoubtedly it's going to cause us some hiccups but we'll just see if that other forage wagon is going to make its way over to the field entrance which it has uh, now it's a case of whether it will find its way to where it needs to go and it is it's heading off to the uh, forage wagon obviously not ideal that it is driving through the middle of the crop but uh we'll turn a blind eye for that as it is on the other side of the field so now that we're in here with this one let's get into auto drive and we've got that set there correctly so let's turn this on and see 
if this one's going to sneak past or if we have to make some further amendments to the course to avoid that little collision there with the blower. And indeed we are having a little bit of an issue there with the collision again. So I'm gonna, just going to tweak the position with the Kubota. I'm just going to move that around a little bit and see if we can get it in a slightly better spot. I can't recall exactly where we had it for the last time uh, where it was working so much better than this because we obviously had this New Holland tractor working on the course without any issues as well. So I'm not sure why we're striking it this time around. Maybe the way that I've got the blower positioned. Uh, perhaps if I try and square it up just a little bit more, maybe better off. All right, let's see how that goes. We're a little bit squarer and I've got the uh, pipe, the blower is just a little bit offline with the pipe, but that has gone past. So we should be in a good spot that it's going to find the trigger. Yes, it is. It does have enough of a trigger there that the forage box has found that. So I think it's looking pretty good. I'll just spin around here so you can't see the grass just missing the blower. But considering, I think I'm pretty happy with how that is all going. And uh, we're already 70,000 litres into the silo once we've got this one unloaded. So uh, we'll go and wait. We'll jump over. We'll go and see that the others are all going okay. And uh, then we should be able to leave things to just keep running and uh, oh, go put my feet up and just relax. Well I was just about to go over and see how they're going but they're already on their way back. Doesn't quite look like a full trailer. We might just have to have a look and see if we've got the auto drive set that it is unloading at a uh, slightly less than 100% but uh, we'll just hang here for just a minute and make sure this John Deere can get past the blower as well and get things unloaded. Let's go and have a look and see how full this trailer here is still 10,000 litres so we really are going to get bottleneck here at the yard just with these unload speeds uh, obviously we're closer to the yard than we were last time so we had a little bit more time spent on the road getting back and forth which uh, gave us that little bit of an advantage all right and there is the t8 empty so we'll let that move on and head back over to the field let's just see what happens here as the john deere pulls up see if we have any problems here with collisions doesn't look like we're going to in fact there is a quite a decent gap there now between those so it was more the fact I didn't have quite things quite as square as I could have and uh, we're gonna get that working perfect all right well like I said everything's really just uh, able to be left up and running I will check that that fill level on auto drive is closer to 100% uh, but otherwise isn't it nice when things just start working the way they're meant to love it all right let's uh, go and check that out so as I suspected it was set to 85% full level so we've just bumped that up to 99 doesn't need to be quite 100% often find and I think was the case here when the forage harvester gets to a corner and the tractor drives on a little bit it sort of says well I'm 89% full I'm over the threshold I'll just carry on and go and unload rather than maneuvering around the corner and we'll wait for the, uh, the next tractor to come in and do the same job. So once we're in the field are done and we're now able to have the tractors running along beside the forager which will make things much much easier. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how auto drive goes with getting things turned around in here. Hopefully one more uh, one more lap and everything will be much more open. Let's just wait and see while we're watching this and what is going to happen here as this one gets to 100% full which there we go that is done. How quickly the next tractor will get here to be able to come over and take the place. And there we go, the second the tractor left the field, this one has got up and started. So that's not bad, not too much of a downtime there while we wait. So, I reckon we are in a pretty good spot. we got the field opened up, we've got all the tractors running on auto drive successfully. We've got the uh, forage harvester up and running on course play and everything. As this guy just about doesn't go again but does get started. Everything seems to be running pretty well, so I think it's time to jump into a montage. We'll see how quickly we can get through this field and uh, then we might move down to the other one which will be an even, even more of a challenge having a much longer course or road course and also the shape of that field might make it a little bit harder and uh, could necessitate us having a bit of time in the forage harvest but sit back relax keep an eye on progress and we'll catch up with you soon
So we've made some pretty good progress here through the field, I think. If I just have a bit of a look, there might be, after this pass, maybe four passes across this field. So not too much more left to go. However, we're about to run into another little issue. Now I'll just bring up our productions list and have a look at our silo. And there you can see, as the other tractor's unloading into it and the volume is going up, we're getting very, very close to our capacity. And I think that this next trailer, this uh, forage wagon here, will probably actually take us past that. So I'm trying to come up with another solution. I don't want to increase the capacity of the silo again. We've already done that once. Uh, we obviously don't have any empty silage bunkers to be able to put the silage into. We could always... Dare I say it, we could look at the uh, Gorveal equipment and maybe get a stationary baler, make some uh, maize bales that way, some maize silage through that option. Uh, but the other option I'm actually thinking is a silage bagger. And we do have one of those available, and I think that is going to be, from a cost point of view, that is going to be the most economical option uh, for us to take. So we might go and have a look at that, but we'll wait and see how we get on with this load, see if this one takes us towards being full. And then we might just have to uh, let them carry on. In fact, we might go very close, even if it is full, to uh, getting these emptied out, uh, or at least the wagons full, sorry, getting them full and just about get this field finished. So we'll see how we go. If we need to, we can leave a little bit of uh, silage there. But of course, we've still got another whole field to do uh, after this one. So we certainly are going to have to come up with another solution. So uh, we'll go and take a look at that. So with another full wagon, we've taken over from Auto Drive here because I think. If we just pull up here beside, I'm not even going to bother trying to unload and see what happens. Just come around the other side of the Kubota here and go and take a look at our silo. I think we're going to find that we are at our 750,000 capacity. You can see down there in the bottom corner. The only reason it is sort of flicking around is as it's being processed, there is just a little bit there in the blower, which is uh, going up the chute, and that will slowly, slowly go down. In fact, how much is there in there? 417 litres. So we are full. We are at capacity here. So I think as we do still have some uh, some silage over in the field we're going to have to come up with another option and I think the silage bagger is going to be it so let's go and get that all set up we'll go have to go down and buy it it is only 12 and a half grand in fact if we just have a look here in the store so we've got the ag bagger here it is maize plus compatible this version uh, 12 and a half grand just for the bagging machine and then we've got to buy some bags now the bags only do have a capacity of 200,000 litres so I reckon we could be looking at having to make five of these bags, uh, another million litres, based on the 750,000 we have off the field to date, and we've still got the other field to do. So I think a million litres of silage would not be out of the question of what we have left. So uh, like I said, we might as well turn this tractor off. Leave that one parked there. Might as well turn this tractor... Uh, we actually will need to leave it running so it can just get the last little bit there out of the blower. And uh, we'll go grab the pickup and we will head on down and go and try and get some... Uh, some silage bagger and uh, a few of the bags. Might be a little bit wide for on the trailer, but uh, it fits, and if it fits, it ships. So we've got uh, ended up buying six of the bags. I thought while we're down here, we might as well go one extra. If we don't use it, we don't use it, but they were only $550 each, so we can save that for another time. I'm sure now that we have this, we'll look at doing more bagged silage in the future so let's jump back in the pickup and we'll head on back down to the farm get it set up figure out exactly where we're going to put it i'm not quite sure i've got some ideas probably somewhere over near the slurry pit i was thinking could be a good location but uh i don't actually know how long these bags grow so we'll have to make sure we've got enough space for that as well but anyhow let us go see what we can do the other thing and just looking at it i'll need to consider where uh where we are unloading because the Auger is on one side, so we need to make sure we're going from that side too. Anyhow, let's try and navigate the traffic, make sure we can get back down to the yard without uh, wiping off that auger. So having a look around, I think this grass spot here is going to be pretty good. Uh, if I remember correctly, the bag will grow and head back this way as it stretches and fills up with silage. Normally, you'd do it the other way around where the tractor would slowly inch forward as it gets filled up and the bag would obviously uh, be in one spot and then it gets used up and uh, the bagger goes forward but bumps and physics don't allow that sort of thing so we're just gonna have to pretend as we watch the bag slide but anyhow you can see we've got one of the bags down in there now if we just go and hop up here into the tractor if I'm not mistaken we do have the option there to attach it so I think if we just press X we've now got that bag attached 
and I think nothing else left than to try and get some silage put into it. So we'll go and grab one of the tractors. I'm pretty sure they're both back over here now. We'll go and have a quick look. Uh, I did come back past and see the uh, forage harvester was stationary. And yes, there is two forage boxes sitting in there. So let's go and have a look. Jump here into the New Holland. We'll take this down. Uh, the John Deere will try and unload, but it's not going to be able to because I don't think there'll be any capacity for it still. Although it does look like the uh, blower might be empty so it'll probably just throw a whole lot into there which isn't ideal but uh, we can leave that there to unload but let's go and have a look we get this pulled up beside the bagger whether we can uh, get some silage unloaded and get that bag filled so we'll pull along here very very slowly I'm hoping we're going to get a trigger oh we did where is it there it is so we'll start unloading and let's just see what happens to this bag as it starts getting in there there we go, now we've got a bag, and if we watch closely, you can see the bag is starting to stretch away from us, so it will head back and uh, fill up as it gets further down the back. And again, we've still got that slow, very, very slow unload speed here with this one as well. So uh, we'll go and grab the other tractor, and bring that over here, and uh, then we'll be able to press go again. We're going to have to do this manually. I can probably actually set up an auto drive course, course for this. That's a little bit harder though, just because of the space, so have to bring the tractor over there turn it 90 degrees and get it all lined up but uh we'll see how we go so first wagon empty and we've already got quite a bag stretching out the back there so i do hope we're going to have enough space between uh the edge of the grass there where i've parked it and back towards the hedge but i think with our auto drive set up the way it is we should be able to with that parked there press go on the auto drive and it's going to head off to f135 so Apart from the fact we've parked the pickup in the way, we could get that to work, so we'll just turn that off, move it around a little bit further, and then we'll be able to press go again. So, we'll leave them to run off, and go and get this other one emptied out. It is meaning that when we come to do this in the other field, it is going to be quite a manual process uh, for doing the unloading, unless I do try and set up that auto drive course, but uh, I do wonder as well. Because the field's further away, it's probably not going to be too bad because we are going to have quite a lot of driving, so we're not going to be limited in having vehicles here queued up waiting quite so long as we might have on the other one. But this is good. I've been wanting to use this for quite a while, so I'm pleased. We've come up with an opportunity to give it a go. So with the silage bagger all sorted out, we've come over here and we're now in the forage harvester, and the reason I'm driving it is because I want to try and tidy up some of these edge parts so you can see where it's turned on all the corners we've had a real issue getting all the maize getting all the corn harvested so uh, we're going to go through and chop all this down just to tidy it up there should be enough capacity i think in this one forage box to be able to get it all collected probably should have wasted waited and done this section last uh, as it's the one that runs out of the field but that doesn't matter this tractor will follow us just about anywhere i think that's the one joy and good thing about using auto drive for this We'll get to the end here, get turned around, we'll go and tidy up everywhere else, and uh, then we'll be finished. It'll be interesting to see how full that, that one bag does get, and uh, obviously you have to be mindful of how much space we have, how much silage we're going to get off the other field as well. But this is all gone pretty well. I'd love, love the uh, stubble destruction that comes here. It's just a shame that uh, obviously doesn't apply to workers, and for good reason, because obviously we don't want the workers driving over the crop like they do some stages and destroying it all. So. Uh, it works out quite well the most majority of the time, but uh, just don't want it working there. It does look good though. Anyhow, we'll let this guy catch up to us. We'll get this all cut down, tidied up, and we'll see where we end up at the end of this. There we go, that is the field all done. So we'll get that all folded up, the pipe put down, get the header folded up. We're just going to leave the uh, forager here in the field because from here it is going to head over to the other field and uh, just looking at our fuel levels and everything like that there's no need to take it back over to the yard so we'll just come up and park up over here and then we'll uh, look to go and grab that forage wagon it is still sitting there on auto drive but I think if we grab it and take it over to get it unloaded might be the more efficient way to do things so let's go and do that it's 29,000 litres all up here in this one 79% full so we did have more than enough space to be able to do it with just the one I'll just get out of here head on over we did uh, as you'll see we did get the other one unloaded and parked up there in front of the house ready to go if it had to come over obviously ready to uh ready to go down to the next fields now we're not going to go any further today i think the next episode will see us down in the other fields and we will be running back and forth here 
to get this bag full or we'll get these bags full and see how much more uh, maze silage we can make but let's just for now get this turned in here I'm just thinking if I was to record a auto drive course as long as I can get near enough to the edge there we should be able to get close enough that we can unload now I've found that you actually have to manually force it to unload once you've done that then it detects the trigger and you can turn it on and it will unload into the bag we we'll just pop down here, we should be able to watch the bag, zoom out a little bit, watch it slowly head over the purple flowers as it grows a little bit further longer, as it gets more uh, maize into it. Well it looks like it's going to make a liar of me, it hasn't got any longer at all, even though we've put close to 30,000 litres of silage in there. We'll have to pan up in a second just to make sure that it has all gone into there, but I don't know where else it'll be going. May have to get in and turn something on in the tractor, not quite sure about that. Just go and check, maybe the uh, John Deere has turned off and we need to get that turned back on and up and running. There we go, it's taken all of that, so let's just go and have a look here. Uh, the John Deere is not running, so maybe we hop in here and turn that on. Get that up and running, there we go. Now it's taking all of that, so it's feeding it from the bagger into the bag. You can see our bag is getting longer, so. Little faux pas on my behalf, we hadn't done it around the right way. Uh, Seems like a uh, interesting little snake that's just slowly enveloping the grassland. But there we are, that one's almost half full. And if I look at the length, if it's half length, then we're going to be in pretty much the perfect spot to be able to get these bags lined up from the edge of our field out here to where we are now. And uh, that'll be good. So we've half filled that one. Turn that back off. Take the uh, forage wagon over to park by the next one. And then we'll make some plans for next time. Well first field done and if we just take a look here in our menus to see how much silage we got off that one we do have uh, 750,000 litres processing through so we end up with about, with the 28 that's in there about 778,000 litres of silage in the silo of course we can keep topping that up although I'm not sure whether this is one for one so we might find that we run out of space there but it will keep processing over the years so we could have this full and this full and uh, effectively double our storage but add to that the 98,000 litres over in the bag area and we've got close to 900,000 litres of maize silage already and potentially uh, another six, seven, eight hundred thousand litres to come off the other field which is looking exciting. Now just taking a look here at the map, obviously we've been working here in 135, the next field is 195 right down here next to our cows so a bit of a road haul down the road here, along the road that way and back down here so it's going to take some time particularly for the travel back and forth uh, it's also an awkward field particularly for course play so I think next time we'll see us spending quite a bit of time in the forager waiting as the wagons go back and forth and uh, just getting done what we can do but we'll just do that the best we can uh, the other thing I was thinking we do have to now get in and plow this field as you can see there we'll need plowing uh, this one says it needs rolling but that was before the crop was planted or just after the crop was planted so uh, we could get in and do some, start doing some cultivating uh, and some tillage. We'll also need to do that down here on 195. Could even get these fields prepped for next time. And uh, I was even thinking about applying some slurry to them because our slurry from our feedlot is, is rapidly, rapidly filling, which is great to see as well. But anyhow, that is uh, pretty much us for this episode of the Canadian Cattle Farmer. Hope you've all enjoyed that. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing this, actually. It was nice to get out and use some forage boxes without any issues and uh, also get to use that... Uh, silage bagger so I'm looking forward to really testing that out in the next episode with some auto drive but as always thank you all very much for watching hope you've enjoyed that episode and we'll catch you in the next one hello everyone Argsy here welcome back to the Canadian cattle farmer here in Chilliwack British Columbia we are carrying on with the work we started last time which is the maize harvest, corn harvest to make our maize silage. We've moved down here, we're at field 195 down next to our cow barn and uh, we're going to carry on and move into this field and get this one all done. Of course this is all going to be going into the silage bagger which we got set up last time. So we've got the two workers down here, you can see uh, sitting up in there, they are both running on auto drive, got a little bit of a course and uh, we're going to jump into the forage harvester to start things off and uh, we're going to spend a little bit of time on that. Now the way I've got things set up at the moment the two tractors are just going to head back to the harvest store load point and once we've got them both full up we're going to uh, just head back on over to the yard 
and then we're going to get them set up hopefully on an auto drive course which will take them past the bagger and be able to unload into that which should mean we're able to carry on and get this all done in uh, in one go which would be fantastic now the other thing we're going to try and get done today is we do want to get in and start some of that tillage in the other fields uh, maybe get the cornfield ploughed but I also want to make the use of the manure spreader while we still have that the big slurry spreader and possibly try and get some slurry put onto those fields first so a few things we're going to do we'll see how far we get through that we don't get it all done this time we'll uh, certainly have plenty of time to do that next time we are here so let's jump up here into the forage harvester get things all unfolded uh, we'll probably uh, find the track that's going to react to us when we do this because it's going to be looking for a path but there we go get that out there we go it has reacted because it knows we're here hopefully that means it'll turn around and get into a good spot to follow us now I did have a look at a course play course on this and as you could imagine and expect it did not want to work very well because uh, this field has this awkward little throat here just on the end of the uh, end of the field so it didn't want to do anything very practically but there we go that is all done uh, be nice for a change though to be sitting here in the forager and follow along with uh, that instead of spending time with the uh, with the forage wagons but I'm sure it'll change over once we get far enough past there we go it's gone found the one we want it to be in so let's just go ahead get in and get some of this field opened up and then we'll be able to uh, get down and get that auto drive course set up all right there we go so we haven't quite made it halfway around I don't think and we've got two full trailers so we're just going to turn this off for now leave that sitting there and uh, we're going to jump out and head on back over to the yard you can see how things are looking over there let him go and do his thing through the middle of the crop so one downside to auto drive it does negate and ignore the uh, crop sometimes but anyhow let's head on back over and uh, see if we can get this auto drive set up for the bagger well, how's that for timing we've just uh, tabbed over here and found the new holland and they're only just getting pulled into the yard so we could probably have I don't know five wagons running a course around this field and uh, we'd be able to keep up with it with no issues particularly considering how long it takes for these wagons to unload so we're gonna have quite a bit of downtime in between deliveries and wagon loads to be able to get over here and get the uh, slurry spread and some of the other work done so I'm just going to turn this off and uh, stop the auto drive because we don't need to go any further we turn this on what I'm gonna do is we're gonna bring it up here and we obviously want a course which heads down to the left but I'm actually going to create a new one from here it goes more down the center of the aisle because at the moment it hugs quite a way to the left which is what we wanted originally before we had the feedlot and everything like that but we don't actually have one that works in a way that we can navigate and kind of drive down the middle we're here and leave equipment like the wheel loader like you can see there parked off to the edge so I'm going to head straight down get to a point down here we will link back up into this one because it's uh, already there so we'll stop about there and we do get one more waypoint which is good link that link those two together there we go now we'll stop recording and now it's the tricky part because I'm just thinking we do want to do quite a tight turn here so I think we might come around a little bit we'll start our recording again here and then this will be a good spot to be able to whip around to the right get hard over here against the trees because what I want to be able to do is have a straight course because we're actually going to have to change this three or four times through the course of the work because as we move the silage bag over it is going to head on across this grass area and uh, we'll have to go and adjust that so let's just bring this down in here as close as we can to that hopefully that is close enough to unload now from my past experience turn that on yes we do get a trigger Let's make sure that's going to work into there. Yes it is. Right, so with that working we can carry on our course and we actually want to spin this one around to the right and we're going to hook it back up here on the course to head back out through the yard. Like that. And there we go. We pinch that one to there. That's all done. Now, last chance, last thing to do. We need to come over here and tell the tractor where it needs to be going to. So we'll give it a target around about here we'll probably do that looks like it'll be far enough past we're going to call that uh, bagger call it silage bag 01 and go ok and then that becomes our change and we want to go to there for our unload so if that's all going to work we should now be able to bring this over here right about this point 
press play and see if it's going to go and unload for us. We are, we're going to push that forward so it goes to the bag. I was going to try and go to the field. So we'll get that turned off and we'll just watch and see what happens. Fingers crossed we're going to get unloaded into the bagger. Now I do need to remember to go and turn the John Deere on too so that the bagger is working and pumping that uh, silage into the bag. So let's just wait and see what happens as we get up here a little bit closer. Hopefully there's no collision on the bag. I'm not sure if there is or not. We'll find out in just a minute. Particularly looking at that turn. We've probably cut the corner a little bit too much. But we do need to be nice and straight. So the anticipation as we drive along here slowly and carefully. You can see the auto drive staff are cautious with our equipment. But no collision there or at least we're far enough away from the bagger that it's not going to get hit or anything like that. And we have managed to pick up that trigger. So we should see, we spin around here, we should see our silage, it's going into the bagger, use your imagination. So, jump up in here into the John Deere, get that powered up, there we go. And we should now see our bag growing as it fills up with silage, and there you go, you can see that slowly moving along as it gets more and more silage into it. So, I think everything's working. We'll now be able to go and find the other John Deere, set it on the same course and uh, wait until everything's all emptied and back over to the other yard. And here is that tractor just pulling in as well so we'll change uh, where it needs to be going which is the harvest store so we might just stop that for a second. Uh, leave it on the field 195 because that's where we wanted but it was this one we needed to change, silage bagger one. So we'll turn that on there and uh, that should be all good to carry on and going. We will just keep a little bit of an eye on it for just a minute, but I don't see why it won't go to where we want it to. So we did just have one little issue, and that was it wanted to turn down the harvestal lane where the uh, feed wagon there is parked, the truck, uh, instead of heading all the way down to the end. And uh, we've just fixed that by creating that as a side road. Uh, so you can see that the lines there heading to the harvestal are now yellow. And it's simply done by pressing, holding down left shift and clicking on a node, and that'll change it to a side road, which means uh, your vehicles won't go down it unless it's absolutely necessary. So with that done, we'll just turn everything off. We don't need to see that anymore. And it looks like this tractor is going to get into the right spot. I did see the New Holland in the background is heading out and back over to the other field. So that is good to see as well. But let's just make sure that this one can turn in and get into the right spot. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if this is going to work. Now, for anyone else who's trying to use these pieces of equipment with the combination, I've discovered that you actually have to tell it to manually unload the uh, wagon into the bagger. It didn't detect it the first time around. I turned it off, turned off auto drive, I told it to manually discharge and uh, then it detected the trigger and now we're in the position where it's dumping into the bag and uh, we're growing our silage bag even further. So I'm not sure what that is but it seems every time you do it it is something that you're going to have to do so bear that in mind if you're trying to use a similar setup to me. Anyhow here we go that's all up and running. So uh, we'll let that carry on unloading and we will head on over this way. What I'm just thinking about what we're going to do, let's just take a very quick look. We've got the manure spreader there, slurry spreader, and we do have big versatile. Now that's about our only tractor we've got which can haul that so we might actually have to look to hook that up to this. Now I'm just wondering, do we need a PTO because this does not have one? Does this run off a of PTO or hydraulics? It does run off a of PTO. So. That's going to stop that. We can't actually use the versatile. We're going to have to wait till the T8's finished. And uh, we can use that because, well, as you can see, there's no PTO on the back of this, only the hydraulics. So that puts a dampener on that. I guess we're going to be heading back over to the other farm, get into the forager, and just wait for these, uh, these wagons to both get back. So back over here, we've got the New Holland there racing in behind us, and we're going to get straight back into harvesting here. So there we go, that has all worked out pretty well, just missing a couple, we'll just move over a little bit. So things seem to be set up and running now, looking at the capacity before we left, I just had a quick look at the volume in the bagger and we are going to have to get over and change the bag very very soon, which uh, means re-recording the auto drive course and creating a second bagger uh, route because it does need to go down there, but we're just going to try and stop there. Seems that the uh, tractor wants to push along behind when we're in this position, which makes it a little bit difficult. but. Nothing we can't handle. There we go, get that into position, let the tractor figure out its way. It seems to always want to do sort of this weird 
sort of 360 circle and turn rather than just navigate its way into here so we'll see what happens probably get stuck in a tree or something like that but hopefully it can figure it out and we can carry on going well we finally made it past the pain of opening the field up here it was a little bit of a struggle had uh, some issues down in the back corner with the trees and things like that and getting the uh, wagons turned around but everything's worked out alright in the end so we're just going to, I don't know if that guy's full now we have to just wait and see I just thought we'd cut this little piece out here while we can keep the tractor down this end of the field but uh, looks like figure out where he's going to go didn't like me turning this way by the looks of things but otherwise, now I've got the field all opened up it should make things a whole lot easier to have them run in fact he does look like he's heading away from us so we'll get this turned off Let's just go and see if we can catch him before he leaves and just double check to see how full that tractor is. We should have the uh, simple inspector mod on that would make things very easy. But yes, 100% full. Okay. Alright, well let's let them head off. We are going to head down to the yard. Go and check on the other John Deere because uh, I think that the silage bag is probably just about full. So let's go and have a look. Well that was good timing. Not quite full. We've got enough for about 28,000 litres. So almost that whole wagon will fit in there. So which is good. Hopefully, see that will start unloading, and I'm uh, just going to have to keep an eye on exactly how far that bag's going to go down the other end, because uh, we might keep that in mind once it's full as to uh, where we need to position the bagger for the next one, but we're going to be pretty close to an exactly the right spot to be able to get that whole bag in there without any issues. So pretty much full, and the bag is just starting to touch the bushes down there, so another thousand litres, and it should just start to stop filling the bag. There we go, and the last few thousand litres in the uh, in the wagon will just go and actually there's a capacity in the silage bagger which is nice, it just transfers it through to the bag. So that should work out that we can get that out of the way because uh, we're going to have to use the next tractor which I think I might have just glanced over there by the house just coming towards the entry through the trees. So when that gets in here we'll uh, be able to use that one to record the new course. There it is just there come, coming through the gap into the the yard entry uh, we'll be able to use that tractor to record the course for bag number two and there we go wagon to empty so now that we've done that i think if we just press x or disconnect the bagger from the bag we can drive that forward and uh, we'll get into position now it does show the open end of the uh open end of the maze there and the idea is now i think we can uh, get in there with a silage fork or something like that on the front of a uh, wheel loader or whatever and actually go in and pick that up and you just scoop it out of there there we go it's already actually fermented too it is maize silage so that's not too bad is it can't complain about that it's speedy fermenting it's a good way to get our maize silage done quickly right let's just intercept this tractor and stop that because we need to record that extra course so bag number two is all hooked up and you can see that the silage we did have in the bagger has transferred so we're just going to get up here to just pass this waypoint and we will hit record again connect those two points together and we can get into a good angle make sure we can try and get in a position where we can run along beside the next bag hopefully without having crashed into it it should be okay there i think let's see if we can just come up here beside hopefully we're still going to have the trigger we do there we go so we just need to go past a little bit that should do create a label there for silage bag number two which will become our new waypoint for both tractors silage bag 02 there we go and uh, we'll just drive forward enough that we can send this back around on the course so there we go if we just connect that two points up turn that off pick our new target and we should be good to go Press start and we should see this get around and unload into the second bag. So just getting pulled up here on the auto drive course and it has detected the trigger there and should be able to start unloading. And it has and just make sure that our bag's growing, it is, so there we go, that's bag number two all set up. So we should, just looking across here, we should have space for at least five bags if not all six of them. So that's going to work out pretty well actually, be a nice little lineup of uh, silage all the way along there. Look at that, the 8410 has to go refuel, so uh, we're not going to be in too much of a rush to get back down to the forager because uh, we're going to have to wait for that to get there. Well, while we're waiting for everything to get sorted out, uh, we've obviously got nothing to do because that John Deere is on its way to go and get refueled. We're just going to jump here into the truck and uh, actually get another feed mix made up, so just something that needs to be done. Obviously, no point sitting around not doing it, so let's just have a look here, try and get some maize solid in. 
which is good to see we're getting some more fermenting in the silo there so we do have a good supply now just need to bring our graphics up hopefully to get our display back there it is uh, so we just need to make sure we're on the right mixture here for this I can't remember which one we want actually but let's just uh, bring the menu up and just tab through we're on currently on the beef cattle mixture I think we were wanting to use not the young stock because they can take maize silage but they mainly just took grass silage uh, so I think we might actually just tab through there set it back up on the realistic mixture which is the one we've been using the most of the time so if we just hop out here and have a look that is our 10% minimum maize, 10% minimum grass, and then we can top up with everything else. Now I did actually have some interesting comments actually, and one thing I hadn't thought of, we could use something like filtered water or molasses uh, to top up our feed. So when we get to that point where we might only be four or 500 litres away from being full, we could use some filtered water or some water to uh, top that up. So that was a great suggestion. I uh, haven't got my name in front of me of exactly who that was, but uh, I'll put it up there on the screen, and show that comment and uh, appreciate you Coming up with that suggestion, I thought that was quite a good one, so we'll, uh, we'll certainly look at doing that. But let's just get this mixture made up. Uh, I need to go back and refresh my memory on exactly what ratios we were doing, but we'll get this sorted out, and uh, hopefully by the time we've done that, we'll be able to head back down and start doing some more chopping of the silage. We've got a full feed mixture here in the truck, and we're going to send this on down to the cows at field 203, which are the ones uh, down over the train tracks. I think they are most in need of some food, so we're just going to let them get out of there. Just make sure we can get around here past the pickup. Perfect. All right. So there we go. We had a few issues with the feed mix, actually. Just a bit of misinterpretation, but I think I've got things figured out and working pretty well. It's full anyhow, which is the main thing. So let's head on back down. I think the uh, two forage boxes are probably waiting for us down at the field, so let's go and get some more corn chopped. As I suspected, both uh, tractors down here, which is fine. It means we can uh, race through and get them both filled up again. So. We'll get everything lined up and uh, get underway and I think we might just jump into a little bit of a time lapse here. We're just going to hang out and drive the forager. We'll just wait for them to come back each time and uh, we'll just carry on and get this field done.
I'll tell you what, I would be lying if I said I wasn't relieved to see the back of this field. It has uh, been a little bit painful trying to get it to all to work. I think I probably uh, made it a little bit harder by driving the forage harvest to myself and lots of downtime. I think it's about 10 minutes between each two trips. Then you get a little things like that where the uh, T8 there crashed into the fence, ran into the fence, tried to cut the corner and uh, decided it couldn't find its way down to the end and jumping back to the farm and having to redo bags and things like that. But uh, we are almost there, almost finished and uh, almost done with the silage and we've got quite a bit. Now it's been a while since we've been back there or at least I've shown you how many bags we've got so we'll get everything all finished off here. We'll get this uh, forage box back to the farm, we'll go and sort the T8 out and we will get the forage harvester all folded up and take it back for a clean down and wash up and everything like that before we put it away for the winter. Uh, but look at that, we've almost gone through a full tank of gas just doing all of this forage harvesting because I think when we started uh, we topped it up before we went into the first field and then before we came over here I said oh, I don't think we need any more so we left it as was but uh, we almost threw it as into the red. Anyhow that's us done, there's a couple of stalks here and there but we're not going to worry too much about that, we're not going to be too precious. So we get this folded up, we're going to sort these tractors out and we'll uh, get back over to the yard. Well we've followed the forage boxes back down here to the yard, we're going to break off here though and go and take care of getting this all cleaned wash down and everything like that. Uh, I'm just trying to decide whether we'll put any diesel in it now. We probably should, but I'm not going to. We'll uh, leave it sitting there rather empty over winter, just so we don't get a whole lot of diesel going stale or anything in it. And uh, when we come and bring it out in the spring again, for probably when we'll be doing our grass silage, then we'll look at getting it uh, filled up and everything like that maintained. But there we go. Look at that. Instantly clean. Instantly better looking, getting all that green shining through and getting rid of all that mud and dirt. It's done a power of work actually, I'd actually be interested when we hop back in and put it in the shed exactly how many hours we've managed to put on it. There we go, I think that's looking pretty good to me. Right, I'll get that turned off, let's jump up and have a look. Seven and a half hours total, so what have we done with it? Grass silage and uh, we've done it two different lots of corn with it as well, the R1 this season and of course the fields we did just about it right at the start of the series so anyhow let's just wheel it in here, put it back at its home and here is pretty good, of course we could have actually used the pressure washer that's here in the shed cut too, handy having one all around the place, right let's go and have a look at the uh, two forage boxes unloading and we'll go and take a look at exactly how much silage we've ended up with well there we go, that is all our silage in two bags and as you can see there we've got three full bags, 600,000 litres, 200,000 in each and we've got 146,000 litres here so we've ended up pretty much with 750,000 litres of silage here in the bags. Of course we can actually disconnect that and while we're talking we'll drive this over and uh, go and park it up in the shed and about 750,000 litres of silage up in the silo as well so about one and a half million litres of silage, may silage, to go with the, I think, roughly one and a half million litres of uh, grass silage we had as well. So about three million litres all up of uh, silage for our animals, which is good. So it's actually interesting looking across at the shed. Obviously we've got lots of straw. We don't have much hay. So hay is certainly going to be one of our next priorities. We just need to wait for that field behind the uh, feedlots to be full or fully grown and ready to get into and uh, get that harvested. Be good actually get some hay made out of that so that is probably going to be one of our next tasks i'm not sure whether we'll be into that next week uh or whether we will be putting some manure some slurry spread onto the fields over the road and uh working on the plowing and tillage and things like that and getting some fields ready for uh for spring planting of course we're in august but uh we are starting to think about what is going to be next for our jobs Lots of food needing to be made as well, animals are uh, getting pretty hungry and we're going to have to spend quite a bit of time here mixing up some feed in the uh, truck and the big feed wagon there and just going around and getting everything all fed so we'll probably spend a little bit of time doing that as well. So I think that is going to be a perfect spot with all our maize silage all finished off to wrap up today's episode. I'm just going to spend a few minutes now giving these a wash down, clean up and put them away and uh, get the tractors freed up so we can start doing some other work next time. So, as always, hope you've enjoyed that episode. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.
Hello everyone, Arxie here. Welcome back to the Canadian Cattle Farmer here in Chilliwack, British Columbia. And we are just getting through getting all our cattle fed. It's been a bit of a laborious process, uh, but it's actually gone pretty well. We've got the truck up and running as well as using the feed mixer here. Uh, so we've just got the couple of bales of hay and a couple of bales of straw, which we're just going to struggle, battle to get in here. Almost need just a little bit more reach on this wheel loader, but pretty close. Drop those in. There we go. That's perfect. So we'll let that all top up there and process. Now we're going to have to go take this off. We've had to obviously break into our grass silage there. But we're also having to use the maize silage straight out of the bags from our silage bagging we did last time. Uh, purely because there's no maize silage processed in the harvest store. So fortunately we can get straight into those and get them done. Now you'll see next to me just here we have gone and purchased the water and molasses silo and our little loading station there. So we can go in and fill that up by the water and molasses and uh, top up any mix that we want to with some extra product which is quite handy. Now we're just going to get pulled in here, we'll get some grass silage put in and that'll be pretty much the last of the cattle hair fed. Uh, we've done, well the truck's done the three pens on the far side uh, and we've done the three pens on this side with this loader or with this uh, feed mixer. Unfortunately when I recorded the course for uh, doing this all automated the truck only unloads on the left hand side and I recorded the course for a right hand unload so it works well with the wagon but not so much with the truck. That's right, when we are doubling around and moving around a lot like this it actually worked out alright so uh, it will do. Right we just need a little bit more, we'll pick up a little bit more maize silage, what do we need? Oh we've still got, still got quite a bit more we can put into this, 48,000 of 64 so we'll grab a whole lot. These bags are great, uh, I think I said last time, there you go, you just drive them with the wheel loader and you can see that we're starting to get it loaded up. You can see it filling up in the bottom right corner. So very, very good. I did bump this one and it did get a little bit of out alignment. But other than that, working perfectly. And a good way to uh, get the maize silage stored and increase our capacity without having to buy another harvester or something like that. Much more affordable. Right, so we'll get this done. We'll get the rest of the animals fed. We do have to take a load down to the uh, Swiss Browns over in, well, over that way, over where we were harvesting the maize. They're going to need some food so we'll get a load mixed up as well in the truck and send that over there on auto drive. And then we'll be able to get into some actual work. It's already getting a bit on in the afternoon, 4.20pm. Uh, but we are going to get in, spread some slurry, we're going to try and get some ploughing and some cultivating underway today. Because uh, come 1st of July, which will be the next in-game day, this grass is all going to be ready to harvest. And uh, we'll be in there getting some hay made because we are chewing through our hay stocks pretty quickly with all this uh, feeding and everything like that. So that is the plan of attack. So we'll get this, uh, get this load here, I'll just leave that parked up there for now. We'll get this taken over to the animals and uh, we'll get them fed. Right so there we are, you can see that is unloading and uh, going down there so we'll let that one running. We'll jump here into the truck, which is basically what I've been doing, jumping back and forth between the two to get these done. And we'll uh, go and get this truck topped up so we can take another load down to the other animals. Now, just while we're talking, we've had a few developments around our free stall. Uh, Legacy Agricultural Corporation and Schultz Modern Corporation have got together and we have come up with a solution to get our feedlot to work and produce milk so that we can keep our uh, dairy cows in there and still get some milk production out of them. So we will see the free stall is going to be built sometime soon. Uh, it'd be nice to actually get a little bit more money before we do that, so we'll just have to keep an eye on when it's best time to sell some crops. But uh, we are definitely going to be able to make the most of that free stall and get that all built and running over here like I had planned. So that's going to be exciting. Uh, so we'll keep an eye out for that probably in a couple of episodes. But anyhow, we'll get this loaded up and uh, then we'll get moved on to the next tasks. So there we are, last two bales going in there, so that should leave us, we'll just watch this come up with a mix, hopefully we've got the ratios right, sometimes do just need a little bit extra because the straw goes a little bit over, in fact it has, we've got 21% uh, straw, see how far we're going to balance it out, just, just perfect, so we have ended up with the ideal mix, in fact we've ended up with exactly the same amount in both mixes, 25,008 litres, uh, so that's perfect, right, we'll get this moving, I'm going to turn it on and Hopefully, get it turning. One thing this truck doesn't like with the weight. In fact, we'll see if we can back it up and go this way. Because uh, then we can set it up on auto drive and send it on over to the other dairy cows. Alright, there we go. Get that turned enough. And we'll send that off on its way. 
Right, and there we go, truck is off and moving and should go and get those other cows all fed. Uh, looks like the other one's finished as well, so we'll get the loader out of the way. We'll go and uh, get the other tractor out of the way and then we'll have a quick look at how our animal health is across the board. So just taking a look down the ladder here, so the brown swiss is where the truck's just off to, they need a little bit of food but other than that they are all good, healthy and getting towards some reproduction which is good. Holstein's there, they've got a decent amount of food, got some milk to sell as well. Then we're going through the feedlot, you can see there 91,000 litres, 69, 74. Back to the other Holsteins, 51,000 and again some more milk. And then we've got the limousines down there, 53, 57 and 63. So plenty of... Uh, plenty of food for all them so that should keep them going well and in fact uh, obviously getting closer to puberty and all that sort of thing which is good they'll start to make us some money as we had hoped off this feedlot get them fanned up and turn into something a little bit more valuable which is the ideal aim right moving on we are going to go and get the plow set up and we're also going to go and get the slurry spreader because we're going to go and get some slurry applied to some fields and uh, then in fact that's all ready to go that's on the back of the new holland so we'll go and grab the plough, if we can get a little bit of slurry spread first we'll be able to plough along behind while uh, that is being spread and then hopefully move on to the other field and it'll just stay ahead of the game. So we'll get everything set up and uh, then we'll get into it. So we've got the plough hooked up to the versatile that is over there in the field you can see. Uh, we've just got the spreader here, now I was going to go and uh, top it up first but when we've already got 20,000 litres in here we may as well go and make a start. Now we need to get a fair way around the field actually because I've decided to set the plough up on diagonal rows and also to start in the centre of the field as you normally would. Uh, obviously leave the headlands and edges of the field to do last so we'll just have to wait and see how we're going to go with that. Now I'm also going to change our application rate, take it off auto uh, and we will go and tweak that just to make it a bit of a custom rate and see how that works out for us. Alright so I've set that to a blanket application rate of 20 cubic meters per hectare so we're just going to see how that goes for us. I think that should be enough just to take the edge off just to apply a little bit to it and then we can come through and pick up the actual required uh, levels of nitrogen that are needed when we do our seeding so this will just be a nice little boost to things here on the field and hopefully it'll mean we can go a little bit further with the nitrogen as well with the uh, slurry so that we don't have to run back and forth filling up quite so much as we might have had to otherwise I'm just going to while we're going along here I thought I'd set my cruise control we hadn't we're also set at a low speed so we are so we're just going to turn our GPS on get a track set up here for this Along this edge of the field is probably as good a spot as any. That should be far enough to get our A and B point. We'll set our width and turn on our lines. There we go. That is all up and working, which is perfect. And you can see down there on the mini map that our nitrogen levels are going up slightly, getting into that yellow. Still not green, but uh, again, like I said, we don't know exactly what crop we're going to be putting on here. Uh, so yellow is good, and we can top that up and pick it up. The rest with. Uh, with the cedar when it comes time to it. So I think this all seems to be going pretty well. Good way to start. We might just uh, jump into a little bit of a time lapse here while we spread some slurry. Get this field started and uh, we'll turn the tractor on very soon to get some ploughing done at the same time. So we'll get that sorted and uh, see you in just a little bit.
So I wanted to go a bit further over the field than I probably had thought to start with because I recalled when I set up course play on this tractor we were doing skip rows so I wanted to make sure that everything was uh, open up enough and we'd done enough coverage that it wouldn't have an issue. So we're just going to jump up into here, turn things on and we're going to send it to start at first waypoint which is actually right over in the far corner. So hopefully by the time we've been down with the slurry spreader and there we are, set to first waypoint so we're just going to press that go it's going to fold itself up as they always do because of the setting we have but they're going to drive off hopefully down to the other end of the field there they go and go and make a start on the row so uh, hopefully by the time we've gone and topped this up I think there's only about 20,000 or 25,000 litres of slurry left down in that uh, barn that we've been pulling it from so by the time we've done that hopefully we'll get back here and they will have started and we'll make sure everything's up and working properly and in the meantime we'll have enough slurry to get that field finished and then we're actually going to move into this big one here uh, which is going to facilitate driving a bit further to get the slurry I'm not going to draw out of our big slurry tank or anything yet I want to try and get it all out of the uh, different cow barns that we've got around the place just uh, with the plan now to get that free stall back up and running then uh, we will be looking to offload some of this land very soon I expect so get down here we'll carry on and get the last of the slurry spread Right, so it looks like the plough's underway. You can see it's managed to do one pass. Now, I've got this set to a 10 degree angle to the edge of the field, obviously wanting to try and cut across the ridges that would have been created from the corn when it was planted and everything like that. So we're just trying to uh, level that field out a little bit more, make it a little bit more comfortable when it comes time to plant. So that should work out pretty well, and we're definitely, definitely going to be far enough ahead of them that they're not going to catch up too quickly, and uh, we're going to have enough enough uh, slurry here I think there's probably only about three passes left looking at the map and looking at how close we are to the headland so we should get this one done and covered off pretty easily but uh, there we go that's all set up and it looks to be working perfectly it'd be nice to get this field ploughed and uh, we'll be able to then move into the next one which is significantly larger I'll just have a look in the mini map I said mini map but I mean the main map uh, you can have a look there 133 and 134 combined are probably three times the size of this so we certainly uh, we've used about 100,000 litres of slurry on this one so we're certainly going to need all the slurry we can pull out of the uh, cows down here at field 203 and probably some out of here at 195. I'll see, we might even spread some slurry on this field. I've been thinking about it more and more, maybe we might sell this one to start with and keep these because I think with the map update our clover, you can see there and there, should start growing soon. So uh, we'll see, we'll, we'll, that's a dynamic situation, we'll see what's going to be best for us. Anyhow, let's carry on, get this field finished and uh, move into the next one. First field fully spread with slurry so we can turn that off there and we've still got 7,000 litres in the back of this so we might as well just scoot straight across into the field next door and make a start in there get a little bit done. See the plough there is making a good start uh, those rows that are skipping are good and uh, we've even actually got quite a good angle there on the multi-terrain angle with the texture that looks pretty impressive actually seeing those rows going off in the distance like that so that's pretty cool. Now we should be able to, not that I'll be able to do it the first time around, but uh, if we just start running along this edge, I might just go up and down it, we'll see how far we get, uh, but we should be able to, when we get into this field proper, uh, either use the same GPS course in the direction we're heading now, or we'll, have, we'll set a fresh one up and go across the field in the long direction, but either or, doesn't really matter too much, but there we go, straight from one into another, which makes it very nice and efficient for us. Now in terms of crops and thinking forward, uh, we're certainly going to have to plant some more corn, get some more maize into the ground and we're going to have to plant some more wheat, barley, oats or something along those lines because we obviously want to uh, make the most of having some straw and getting some straw to be able to pad out our TMR mix which is working out pretty well at the moment helping uh, expand or extend the distance that the uh, silage and hay and everything else will go by using that straw as a bit of a filler so very very good to have that and uh, certainly something we'll have to consider but uh, we're not actually going to get the full way along here which is fine we'll get this uh, emptied out and we'll go down to another one of the cow bins, cow pans, and pick up some more slurry there we go all done right I think we'll head to the one just down over the train tracks that is the next closest and uh, we'll just carry on getting things done here
getting down to our last 10,000 litres of slurry that we have out of our cow barns, we've managed to extract it all out, 100,000 litres out of both the barns down on the uh, bottom edge of the map, or over that way, one over the train tracks and the one that over there. Of course we used pretty much the full 100,000 litres of the barn just down the road in the first field, so uh, we're getting there. We're probably a bit over halfway across the field I'd say, just having a look back there and see we've got that much more to do uh, and we've been that far so it's gone pretty well we've got further than i thought we might have but i'd say we probably still need at least another hundred thousand liters and i'm trying to decide whether we go and try and extract some out of the feedlot over the road or whether we leave that for putting on the grass fields there around the yard uh, obviously we've got the big slurry pit um, but i haven't quite got that up and functioning properly yet it's a little bit too far away from all of the feedlots to be able to get all of the slurry in there so i just need to have a little bit more of a play around with getting that set up um so maybe we'll maybe go have a look go and see if we can extract some slurry out of there i think because it'll be good to get it all finished in here now the plow is all done uh, it does have a little bit of tidying up i need to go and do manually around corners and things like that just to uh, get rid of all that plowed requirement so we will go and do that and uh, then i think we will get into this field and uh, get this one all cultivated with one of the speed tools or the uh, big disc cultivator that we've got one or the other get that up in here and running so uh, that is the plan so we'll finish this off and we'll go over and see if we can get some more slurry so we're just going to leave the slurry spreader there uh, we've had a look around we can't actually get the slurry one out of the tank because we need the pump but we need to back up the track there and by the gate and be able to pump out of the slurry tank so we need to obtain that uh, and two I can't actually locate any triggers here for the feedlots. Now I think with the update to these which was recently made, there's a new system of how to extract the slurry out of these. Uh, if we just have a look in the animal screen, you can see there is 50,000 litres of slurry, 84, 37. So all of the animals do have slurry in the pits or in their uh, pens. So we just need to figure out how to get those out at some stage. But I think we might make use of that when we can spread it onto the grass. You have to remember we've got the field down the end there that we can work on at some stage. So I think we are just going to go get things set up and we might go and do a little bit of cultivating or at least get things set up. It is late, uh, it's getting later in the evening so that might be something we do next episode. Uh, while we're getting the grass mown we might be able to run the tractor here with the cultivator on it. So we'll just pull back in here, park up, leave that hooked up there to the speed tool. And then we might just head over, go and grab the versatile and finish off the ploughing in that field to tidy up the few loose ends around the corners. And there we are, just to get these corners all tidied up, we've done all the other ones and uh, just have this last little piece here. We'll get in there, pull out of the edge, and there it is, all done. So we'll get that folded up and uh, we'll be able to head on back over to the yard and we'll get things parked up. Now we do have that other field to take care of, of course, which uh, we'll take the tractor down to probably in the next... Uh, next episode and in, in the next day and uh, leave them down there running and doing that so today we've managed to get animals fed slurry spread and a field plowed and we're all set up to get in and get another field cultivated and uh, hopefully we're going to plan grass is going to be nice and long and ready to be mowing in uh, in the morning so that'll be good we'll be able to get in here and hopefully looking at the potential harvest yield there 433 thousand off field 147 and uh 148 is 292,000 so 700 700,000 liters of hay that'll be fantastic to have because we are chewing through it uh, the good thing is we don't use quite as much hay as we do silage so i think that'll give us probably half the amount of hay that we do to have to silage and uh may silage that should work out pretty well for our feed mixes but uh we're going to get in and do that the other thing i'm actually going to do is uh we're actually going to try and buy a heston baler or a square baler of some description and uh, bale these up as squares because I think that's going to work a little bit better for our storage um, and uh, slightly bigger bales too, we can get bigger bales so we can therefore uh, not have to put quite so many in when it comes time to mixing up our feed mix. Anyhow, that is the plan. Tune in next time and you'll hopefully see it all come to fruition. But for me, for now, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and we'll catch you in the next one. Mm -hmm.